Hello everyone. A very good evening to all of you. I guess I am live. I am visible. I am audible. Yes, I am. So I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here, and today I am going to crush entire pharmacology in a very unique way. So I will tell you entire pharmacology. Uh, in a very unique way, I am going to teach you in an innovative way. Nobody have taught you the pharmacology in such a unique way. I will tell you. Most of the students say that, ma'am, we learn pharmacology, we understand, but the most important problem with the pharmacology, we forget it. It's very volatile. It's very difficult to learn it and apply it in the MCQs. So today I will solve that problem. So give me uh, first few minutes, maybe in an, a half an hour or hour, you will get my pattern of teaching pharmacology. So today in pharmacology, I will take specifically the systemic pharmacology. Can I start? Can we go ahead? Give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Can we go ahead? So let me start with the rapid revision of pharmacology here. Okay, so today uh, we have already done the part one rapid revision in which we have covered the general pharmacology that is pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics as well as antimicrobial drugs. We have already covered it. Today we are going to take the systemic, the remaining systemic here. So I will start with the renal system. I will teach you all diuretics here. Then I will come on cardiovascular system. I will come on central nervous system, autonomic nervous system, respiratory system pharmacology, blood pharmacology in which I will take the anticoagulants and I will come on the endocrine pharmacology. So one by one, we are going to take all these systems in next four hours. Yes. So in next four hours, I'm going to crush it. And believe me, after that, even if you don't revise it, you will be able to do your questions exactly right in your exam. Got it? So, okay. Uh, yes, so I will include anti-cancer also in the end, if the time allows. Okay, so let's proceed without wasting any further time. Let me start with the first system, that is renal system. So in renal system, let me start with the first system, renal system. One by one, we will cover all these. So let me start with the first system, renal system. In renal system, I want to teach you diuretics basically. Okay, so before coming on the diuretics, you must understand a little bit of the pathophysiology. Humans have a pair of kidney. Okay, uh, all humans have a pair of kidney. Okay, inside the kidney, the structural and functional unit of the kidney is nephron. So each kidney contains 1 million, nearly 1 million of nephron. So humans have 2 million of nephron. So this is the diagram of a nephron. Can you see the diagram of the nephron? Huh? In the nephron, there are 5 parts. You can see this is glomerulus. This is proximal convoluted tubule. This is loop of Hanley. This is distal convoluted tubule and this is collecting duct. So I guess everyone knows that these four tubules together known as tubules. PCT, DCT, loop of Hanley and collecting duct. Together these all are known as tubules. So I guess everyone knows that. So uh, this is the nephron, a rough diagram of a sketch diagram of a nephron in front of you. You can see in the, now if you understand these sketch diagrams, now understanding the mechanism of action of all diuretics will be fun for you. So I will teach all the mechanism of act actions of all diuretics in this uh, sketch diagram. So please understand from the basic. You can understand this is a nephron. You can see the five parts of the nephron. Now inside the nephron, I am interested in the tubules. Okay, can you see the tubules, all four tubules? So the tubules are lined by the epithelial cell. Can you see the tubular cell, the epithelial cell, the green color cells lining the entire tubules? They are lining PCT, loop of Hanley, DCT, collecting tubules. They are lining everywhere. So these are known as epithelial cell or tubular cell, the lining of the tubules. Okay, now see here what I have drawn. Can you see here the afferent arteriole is coming? afferent arteriole it is coming inside the glomerulus making a capillary the tuft of the capillary and leaving out as efferent arteriole we all know this is normally okay so the afferent arteriole come make a tuft of capillary and leaves out as efferent arteriole after leaving out from the glomerulus after leaving out it forms the peritubular uh, capillary network it form a network around the tubules all four tubules it form a network that is known as peritubular capillary network so can i draw the sketch diagram like this it's a rough sketch diagram. Can I draw like this? Hmm? Can, can you see? Now what I have drawn? You can see the tubules. By tubules, I say again. By tubules, I mean four things. I mean PCT. I mean loop of Hanley. I mean DCT. And I mean collecting duct. These four things together, I call them tubule. So I am interested in tubules. To, ex to explain you the diuretics, I am interested in tubules. So can you see the tubules? Yes. Now in the tubules, can you see the green color cell? Lining the tubule, of course. Hannah, now let me highlight any of the green cells. Let's say this cell, Hannah, this cell, any cell. On one side of the cell, there is a lumen containing urine. Okay, so here it is the urine. 
So let me highlight the lumen containing the urine. So I'm, I'm saying this one. On one side of the green cell, there is a lumen containing the urine. On other side of the epithelial cell, there is a blood capillary, which is the efferent arteriole coming out. You can see and spreading everywhere around the tubules. So it is the blood capillary containing the blood. So in the center, you can see there is green color cell. That green color cell is tubular cell. So on one side of the cell, there is lumen containing urine. On other side of the cell, there is blood. If you understood this master diagram, not this master concept, now understanding mechanism of action of diuretics will be fun for you. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Everyone, each and every one of you, please give me a thumbs up. Have you understood what I taught you? So on one side, you can see. So here, let me zoom a portion. So let me zoom this portion or any portion. So in this portion, you can see in the center, this is a cell. The tubular cell, the green color cell. On one side of the cell, you can see the lumen. The lumen containing the urine. This is the lumen containing the urine. And on other side of the cell, you can see the blood capillary containing the blood. So my point is that this is a tubular cell. On one side, there is always urine. On other side, there is always blood. How many of you got it? Say yes. So this is the basics. Now if you understood that, let's start the chapter. Let's start the chapter diuretics. I'm teaching you diuretics. What is the drug diuretic known as? Diuretic is a drug which is given in edema. The symptomatic treatment of edema. It's not curative. It's symptomatic. So edema is swelling. Swelling anywhere in the body. So you are doctors now. Nah? Patient will be coming to you. Doctor, I'm having swelling here, here, here. Anywhere in the body. Hana? So what is swelling? What is edema? Edema is excessive accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space of that particular place. Hana, just suppose I'm having edema here, here. So there is excessive accumulation of fluid here. So to give the symptomatic relief from the edema, that excessive fluid has to be excreted in the urine. So diuretics are the drugs that excrete the water, that excrete the dog, water along with the sodium in the urine. So the, that is the definition of diuretic. So any drug which increases the excretion of sodium and water, we know water follows sodium. Jaha jaha sodium, waha waha water. So such a drug which increases the excretion of sodium and water in the urine, that drug is known as diuretic. How many of you got it? Say yes. Okay, say yes. So I will be concise on English, but it will be a very simple English. I guess everyone can understand it. And if you have any doubt, please write down clearly. Okay, in the chat box. So it will be a very simple language. Don't worry. I'm not using any hi-fi vocabulary. It will be a very simple language. You all will be able to understand it. Let's let's try for just 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, if you don't get it, get back to me. Okay, listen. So what is a diuretic? Diuretic is a drug that increases the excretion of sodium and water in urine. Such a drug is known as diuretic. So tell me the classification. How many classes of diuretics are there? We divide the diuretics into three categories. Diuretics are of three types. High ceiling, medium and weak. Hana, if you give, just suppose diuretic and patient is excreting excessive amount of urine after that. So it is very highly efficacious. High ceiling, high efficacious. Okay. The second are medium efficacious. If you give them, moderate amount of urine is there. It is not very much. Okay. And weak, they are not very good diuretics. Okay. They have a very weak action. So we divide them into three categories based on their efficacy. High, medium and weak. So there are three types of diuretics. In the high, we are having only one drug. In the high, high ceiling, we are having only one drug. The name of that drug is loop diuretic. What is the name of that drug? It's loop diuretic. Loop diuretic, there are, the, the, the prototype drug is furosemide. Apart from furosemide, bumetanide and torosemide can also be there. Okay, but the prototype dr drug here is the uh, furosemide. In the medium efficacy, we are having thiazide. We are having only one category that is thiazide. So there are many types of thiazide like drugs. Hydrochlorothiazide, that is the prototype drug. Apart from that, uh, hydroplumethiazide, benzthiazide, chlorthalidone, metazolone. There are many drugs. Okay, learn the prototype. Okay, and in the weak, there are three categories. You have to learn the three categories. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, only one drug is there, acetazolamide. Osmotic diuretics in which the sugars are there like mannitol. And potassium sparring diuretics in which we are having allosterone antagonist and sodium channel inhibitors. So basically you have to learn the classification. Now, now the only thing in the pharmacology you have to learn is the classification. Apart from classification, you don't have to learn anything. You know, mechanism of action you can understand in the form of the diagrams, flowcharts and videos. I will, I will show you many videos in the form of the animations I will show you. Okay, so you don't have to mug it up. And uses and adverse effects I will explain with the help of mechanism of action only. So you can understand that. But the thing you have to learn in pharmacology is the classification.
so please learn all classification at one place today we are going to cover all classification and if you wish i can provide you a pdf which contain all classifications at one place okay and you can revise it quickly before going to your exam so you should identify ki that particular drug belongs to which class ha na so you can see potassium sparring is again of two type aldosterone antagonist is spironolactone and epilirenone okay and sodium uh, channel uh, inhibitors is um, uh, amyloride the main drug here is the amyloride and triamterin okay so first learn the classification how to learn the classification how many type of diuretics are there there are three type of diuretics high ceiling they are very highly effective moderate the medium efficacy and weak diuretics so first learn that high ceiling have one class this have one class but this have three categories so total five categories of diuretics are there total five categories okay here we have loop diuretics i will call it l okay l i will make a mnemonic that's why i'm telling you call it l the loop diuretic it contains a drug furosemide here thiazides are there thiazide drugs i will call it t there are many thiazides ha na hydrochlorothiazide is a prototype and here i am having three drug carbonic anhydrase inhibitor okay osmotic diuretics and potassium potassium channel uh, uh, potassium um, uh, sparring diuretics okay so i will call it c o and p ha na so c for carbonic anhydrase o for osmotic and p for potassium sparring so i'm giving one one letter to them i want to make a mnemonic that's why so first learn their one one mnemonic got it you have to learn one one uh, uh, letter the first first letter now learn the drugs inside that you get questions on the drugs like for example have a look on the question can you tell me the answer which of the following is aldosterone antagonist so question is very simple it is simply based on classification of diuretic so you can see all of them are diuretic they are asking which of them is belonging to aldosterone antagonist so you can see the aldosterone antagonist category here this is the category so two drugs are there spironolactone and epilirenone now look at the options in the options we have epilirenone so my answer is epilirenone ha no my answer is epilirenone that is coming in this category so simple simple questions come on the classification that you have to mug it up the classification to ghotna hi padega uske sawa koi chara nahi hai theek hai now which of the following is a high ceiling diuretic high ceiling means loop diuretic ha no so is it furosemide yes furosemide bumetanide and toracemide i told you these three are loop diuretics so you get simple simple question which of the following is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor carbonic anhydrase inhibitor is only one acetazolamide so correct answer is acetazolamide so these are the questions based on classification now let me tell you the mechanism of action or the site of action of all these categories listen 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 where does these all act how to learn how to learn there are five categories now so diuretics are of five type people panch tarah ke hote hain diuretics are of five type ha na high ceiling medium efficacy and very weak one weak one are the adjuvant one the weak one are of three types okay carbonic anhydrase inhibitor osmotic and potassium sparring so i assign one one letter the high i will call them loop l the medium one i will call them t t for thiazide carbonic anhydrase inhibitor c osmotic is o and potassium sparring is p now where does they act answer is ma'am nephron very silly so the, of course they all act on the nephron but but which portion of the nephron let's draw nephron quickly so this is pct this is loop of hanley loop of hanley have two limbs descending limb and ascending limb you can see then there is dct and there is collecting duct i guess everyone knows the diagram of nephron each and every student you don't have to learn the sequence ki sabse pehle pct aata hai then descending limb of loop of hanley aata hai then ascending limb aata hai then dct and then collecting duct everyone knows the diagram so now they all act on the nephron but which portion of the nephron how to learn so i am having a mnemonic so the mnemonic is c o l t p cold p is my mnemonic let me explain let me explain what is c what is c What do you mean by C C? I I have given the C letter to carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. So carbonic anhydrase inhibitor act on PCT. ठीक है? Osmotic O for osmotic. Osmotic acts on descending limb of loop of Hanley. ठीक है? L for loop diuretics. They act on ascending limb of loop of Hanley. Okay. T for thiazides. Thiazides acts on DCT. Okay. And P for potassium sparring. All potassium sparring. है ना? Whether they are aldosterone antagonists or whether they are sodium channel blockers, they act on collecting ducts. how many of you got it so of course they all act on nephron but different portion of nephron and in the exam you get confused so i'm having a mnemonic for you what is the mnemonic people give me a thumbs up react the mnemonic is cold p c o l t p now imagine the diagram of nephron c means carbonic anhydrase inhibitor sabse pehle kya aata hai in the nephron the first thing is pct so it act on pct o means osmotic diuretic it acts on loop of hanley 
ascending limb. Uh, I'm sorry, loop of Hanley first descending limb come then ascending limb. So it acts on descending limb. L for loop diuretic. It also acts on loop of Hanley but ascending limb. Then DCT. So thiazide acts on DCT and potassium sparring they act on collecting duct. How many of you got it, people? Please respond now. If you respond, my energy will be touching the sky. If you don't respond, I will be also like you, just you know uh, reading reading not explaining so please be interactive just make the session a super simple and concise pharmacology okay it's for your benefit not for me got my point so please learn the mnemonic c-o-l-t-p okay c-o-l-t-p c-c-c the diagram of the nephron so here you all can see a nephron people see a nephron here say where is c-o-l-t-p say ma'am this is c acting on pct carbonic anhydrase inhibitor this is o acting on descending limb of loop of Hanley. that is osmotic osmotic di uh, diuretics l is loop they act on ascending limb of loop of Hanley. loop diuretics and uh, c o l t t for thiazide it acts on dct and p for potassium sparring they act on collecting duct c o l t p no need to learn their side so learn c o l t p so the mnemonic is called p the mnemonic is cold P. This is a mnemonic you can learn and you will never forget now. Okay, this is a so you get many questions, you know, many questions thick and thin. You can understand now the descending one is the thin and the ascending one is the thick. So osmotic diuretics acts on the uh, thin one and the loop diuretic acts on the thick one. You can understand from here. Got my point, Raj Yadav, Dev Raj. Got it. Now read the question and tell me the answer. You read it. You read and tell me the answer. What is the site of action of furosemide? So first thing, what is furosemide? In the five category, where does it come? Say ma'am, furosemide is a loop diuretic. So it is L. So what is my mnemonic? My mnemonic is C-O-L-T-P. So they are asking for L. The question is about L. Loop diuretic. Where does it act? It act on loop of Hanley. But which limb? Is it ascending or descending? Where does it act? What is the correct answer? What is the correct answer? Yes, it acts on thick ascending. Okay, so descending one is thin and ascending one is thick. But they will give you the word descending ascending along with thin and thick also. Don't worry. Okay, they will give the word descending ascending. So this is how you can learn. Now let me change this question for you. Currently answer is A. But if I change the question to osmotic diuretics, what is your answer now? From the ABCD? What is the answer now? Say, say. Let me write the mnemonic. C-O-L-T-P. I'm asking for osmotic diuretic. So in that case, answer will become B. So it acts on descending limb. You can see osmotic is acting on the descending limb and loop diuretic is acting on the ascending limb. Okay, let me change the question again. Let me ask you acetazolamide. Acetazolamide. What is the mechanism of action? So by giving this question, the examiner is judging two things. Whether you know classification, yes or no. And whether you know the site of action. Pahle to ye batao, acetazolamide hota kya hai? In which category it belongs? First, you tell me. Say ma'am. Acetazolamide is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. First thing. Okay. So carbonic anhydrase is C. So C acts on PCT. So my answer will become C in that case. Got it. And if I again change my question and if I give you any of the potassium sparring like uh, if I give you spironolactone, triamterin, amyloride, any of such drug. Hana? So these all are potassium sparring. All the potassium sparring act on Achha, option is not there. So let's say collecting duct. So answer will be collecting duct. And if I give any of the thiazide, answer will be T. So you get many questions on this concept. It's a very patent question. Okay. So let me give you, let, let's play a game. Okay. Let's, have you seen KBC? Kaun banega karod pati? I guess everyone have seen. So how does the participants are selected? First taste finger first. Hana. So I will give you a particular sequence. Hana. The four options, you have to arrange them in a sequence. Read the question. Okay. Read the question. I will give you just 30 seconds to arrange them. So there are four drugs in front of you. They all are diuretic. And the diagram of nephron is also given to you. Okay. Now arrange them according to their mechanism of action from proximal to distal part of the nephron. Arrange them. Which act proximal, then distal, then distal, then distal. Can you arrange them? Your options are in front of you. Is it ABCD, CDBA, DBCA or uh, BCAD? What is the correct answer? What is the correct answer? Can you please arrange it for me? Huh? Apply the mnemonic. The answer will be in front of you. What is the mnemonic people? Apply it. Say ma'am, C-O-L-T-P. This is the mnemonic, C-O-L-T-P. So C-O-L-T-P, in this mnemonic, you tell me what is triamterin. Triamterin is a potassium uh, sparring diuretic. So uh, it is coming in the last. Hana? So A is coming in the last. Hydrochlorothiazide is thiazide. It is coming here. Hana? Acetazolamide is the first. Acetazolamide is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. So C will be the first. So C and uh, bumetanide 
इस फ्यूरोसामाइड का बड़ा भाई सो इट इज अब डायबिटिक है ना सो आई गेस सी डी बी एज द करेक्ट आंसर एंड यू ऑल आर राइट लेट मी सी हु फर्स्ट पर्सन टू आंसर इट करेक्टली बिकॉज इट वॉज फास्टेस्ट फिंगर फर्स्ट सो उमंग गुप्ता Umang is the first. Okay. Anyway, so let's go ahead. So correct answer is CDB, and you all are right. Let's go ahead. So let me tell you. Let me tell you the loop. That uh, that the mechanism of action of all diuretics. Hana. We have already seen the site of action. So we are having five categories of diuretics in our syllabus. Say yes. So my way of teaching pharmacology is very simple. I always give you these master charts. I call them master charts. So the entire pharmacology I have converted in such 20 master charts. You know all the chapters we have master charts for all the chapters. So these are the drugs we are having loop diuretics, we are having thiazides, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, potassium sparing and osmotic diuretics. These three are weak. These three are weak diuretics. This one is medium efficacy and this one is high efficacy. So total we are having five. So first thing I want you to learn the name of the drugs in each category. Okay, learn the classification. Subse basic. Uske baad tell me the mechanism of action of each of them. You get many questions on mechanism of action. Then tell me the uses of each of them and tell me the adverse effect of each of them. For uses and adverse effects, I will give you the mnemonic along with explaining why this is a use and why this is an adverse effect. So first you understand. No, no, each category you will understand. At the end, you don't have to do anything before going your exam. Take out this table, revise it. Just, just in two minutes, you are done with diuretics. Literally two minutes. Literally, you can check the clock. In two minutes, you can revise the entire diuretics. But the first time for understanding, you will require time. Is it good? Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? Huh? Give me a thumbs up. So let's start. So here, because you know, I will give you the complete table, but I will explain you two in detail right now. Then I will move on the next system because we have to cover seven systems today. But I will give you the most important first two loop diuretic and thiazides we will cover. Okay. But I will give you complete table. You can revise at your own. Let's start with the loop diuretics. Let me fill this table. Start with the loop diuretics. What are the drugs? In the loop diuretics, we are having three drugs. I told you, furosemide, bumetanide, torosemide. The prototype drug is furosemide. That is the drugs coming on the mechanism of action. Now it's very difficult to understand, but I will make a cake walk for you. Listen, the mechanism of action. You tell me the site of action. Where does the loop diuretic X? I'm teaching you loop. C O L T P. Apply apply the mnemonic fast. C O L T P. I mean to say L axon ascending limb of loop of handling. From the mnemonic, we clearly know. So C, I have drawn a cell. Can you all see a green color cell? I have drawn a green color cell in the ascending limb of loop of handling. Can you see that green cell? It is the epithelial cell. Huh, no? The cell which is lining the ascending limb of loop of handling, not the complete nephron. I am interested in the green cell, the epithelial cell, the tubular cell, which is lining the ascending limb of loop of handling. Now on one side, there is urine. On one side, there is blood. Say yes. Can you see on one side, there is lumen containing the urine. One side of the cell. And on other side of this cell, we are having a capillary containing the blood. Okay. So the site, we already know ascending limb of loop of handle from the mnemonic cold P. Now let me zoom this portion. Let me zoom this portion like this. Like this. Can you see? So this is the cell of loop of handle. The ascending limb of loop of handle. Okay. On one side, there is urine. The lumen containing the urine. You can see this one. And on other side, there is blood capillary containing the blood. You all can understand. You all can understand. Now, please understand. First, before understanding the mechanism of action of loop diuretics or furosemide, before understanding that, understand what happens normally. What happens normally? So just suppose this is my cell, any normal healthy individual cell. So I'm having a kidney, pair of kidney. Inside my each kidney, there is 1 million nephron. So inside each nephron, there is loop of handle. So I'm having 1 million loop of handle on the right side, one on the left side. Hana, 1 million. So I'm having 2 million loop of handle. I'm interested in ascending limb of loop of handle of, of that nephron. Hana. So in that, I'm interested in that cell. So in a healthy individual on the luminal side, there is a receptor. The name of that receptor is sodium potassium 2 chloride. So whatever sodium potassium and chloride present in our urine, you see this side is urine, never forget. It will go inside the cell via this receptor. So sodium present in, in the urine of a healthy individual, chloride and potassium, it all enter inside the cell with the help of this transporter. It happens normally in you, in me, in everyone, this happens. Now what happens after they go inside? What happens to them? Once they go inside, the sodium will go into the blood via another transporter, sodium potassium channel. Chloride will also go in the blood via another transporter present on the basolateral side. Basolateral side, they will go in the blood. So sodium go in the blood. Chloride go in the blood, but potassium again leaks out hai na? via potassium channel. Okay, so this is the summary of the three ions. Hai na? Sodium, potassium, chloride. 
sodium and chloride going in the blood but potassium again leaks out and then come back so it does do, it keeps on doing the same the potassium this is normal people normal now imagine a patient is coming to me and saying doctor i'm having edema i'm having swelling here there here there here there i want to give furosemide to that patient just suppose i have given a tablet of furosemide and patient is taken with water so where does the tablet will go furosemide will go inside 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 that will get absorbed after getting absorbed from the stomach intestine it will reach in the blood so let's say this is furosemide in the blood furosemide how does it comes in the blood so it will go inside it will get absorbed it will reach in the blood from the intestine it will get absorbed okay so this is furosemide why i am giving to this patient because this patient is complaining of swelling Hannah, swelling anywhere in the body from head to toe anywhere so this furosemide is present on the blood now furosemide inhibit this receptor but this receptor this receptor is present on the luminal side so furosemide has to come on the luminal side to show its action so furosemide is present in blood from the blood it cannot show its action first it has to come in the urine from the urine it can show its action so furosemide will cross the cell this luminal cell can you see furosemide is crossing the cell from the blood it is coming to the urine this is furosemide using a using a scooter hana the transporter who's the scooter or the transporter it is sitting on a scooter i call it a scooter the scooter is the transporter so the furosemide is, is sitting on a scooter the scooter is carrying the furosemide from the blood to the urine and furosemide reaches here so what does this normally this scooter i'm not taking furosemide currently i'm normal i don't have any edema so what does this scooter is, is doing in me so normally this is the transporter of uric acid that's what my point normally it transport uric acid from the blood to the lumen but the patient who is taking furosemide just suppose currently in me this scooter is transporting uric acid from blood to urine and uric acid is excreted in my urine in everyone's urine it's the excreted product but if i am taking furosemide because i am having swelling somewhere so the scooter has to select the one out of uric acid and furosemide so furosemide have more affinity ha na so it will displace the uric acid uric acid will remain in the blood only and its concentration increases in the blood the one who takes in furosemide so it is a side effect of furosemide the patient presents with gout or hyperuricemia so i have explained one of the side effect why hyperuricemia or gout occurs in the patient who takes furosemide say yes people samajh mein aa raha hai kya ha huh? so this is the reason because furosemide uses the transporter of uric acid so uric acid is displaced it remains in the blood only there is one scooter only ha na the one people can travel on that so normally uric acid used to travel from here to there from blood to the urine but now furosemide is coming dhakka de diya usko ha na pushing the furosemide is pushing the uric acid and sitting on the scooter and going so the scooter is not empty if the uric acid will remain in the blood only the patient will present with hyperuricemia and gout say yes people got it now ultimately furosemide reaches here furosemide reaches here after reaching here what does it do it blocks it inhibits this transporter what will happen say ma'am sodium will not go in the blood chloride will not go in the blood potassium will not go in the blood they all where will they go they all will be excreted in the urine हाँ अच्छा देर इज अ रूल गोल्डन रूल जहां जहां सोडियम वहां वहां वाटर तेरा पीछा न मैं छोड़ूंगा है ना तो जहां जहां सोडियम जाएगा वहां वहां वाटर भी जाएगा सो वाटर इज ऑल्सो कमिंग पीछे पीछे सोडियम बिहाइंड बिहाइंड सोडियम सो सोडियम क्लोराइड potassium and water they all are excreted in urine so that is diuresis people what is the definition of diuresis i told you diuresis is excretion of sodium and water so this is how sodium and water are excreted i do not want to excrete potassium i do not want to excrete chloride but these are the side effects what can i do it is unavoidable but i want to excrete the sodium and water and that is done so this is the mechanism of action say people yes say yes okay okay got it so i will cover everything ha na so ha na stay connected let me see how much we can cover it today so i will be there today till 11 or 12 tonight ha na so for the next 4 5 6 hours we are together let's see we will try to cover entire pharmacology today okay so let's go ahead so this is how we have done okay can we go ahead say yes okay this is the mechanism of action now now listen this is a transporter what is the name of the transporter which is blocked say ma'am sodium potassium two chloride transporter this transporter transport sodium chloride and potassium they are not going in the blood now because the transporter is blocked but this transporter also transport two more ions magnesium and calcium so all five remain in the urine only so neither sodium is going in the blood nor potassium is going nor chloride is going nor magnesium is going nor calcium is going they all are excreted in urine ha na i want to excrete only one i want to excrete only sodium along with water but these all are side effects so patient have hypokalemia hypomagnesemia hypocalcemia because in the blood these all five are less these all five are less and patient have dehydration also because most of the water is lost in urine so these are the side effects so correspondingly i am telling you the side effects also along with mechanism of action people say yes respond no one will teach you like such a conceptual pharmacology i am teaching you 
got it with this sketch diagrams you can understand the entire pharmacology like this okay got it so this is the thing so tell me what is the mechanism of action so here you can see the cell tell me imagine what is the cell where it is present in my body say ma'am inside your kidneys inside your 1 million nephrons in your loop of hanley in your ascending limb of loop of loop of hanley this is the green cell you can see the green color cell this is that cell so imagine that cell inside your body ha na and if i am taking furosemide ha na furosemide is blocking this furosemide is blocking this receptor this one this receptor is blocked it transport five ions into the blood so all five the, the the transport of all five is hindered what does it transport it transports sodium potassium chloride magnesium and calcium so these all five are excreted in the urine so in the urine their concentration is more and in the blood their concentration is less so i will say hyponatremia ha na or along with the sodium water is also not there so i will say patient have dehydration patient have hypomagnesemia hypocalcemia hypokalemia these all concentration will fall in the blood that is the side effect of diuretics got it devraj got it now so this is how you can understand so whenever we are taking a loop diuretic first it will go from the blood into the lumen via using a transporter the transporter is of uric acid transporter okay you can understand because with that i can explain why the patient is having hyperuricemia or gout so this is the scooter scooter hai kiska uric acid aata jata hai usse usne usko dhakka mara aur khud baith gaya ki main aaya hu ab main baithunga tu nahi baithega so the furosemide is having high affinity for this transporter as compared to uric acid so uric acid will accumulate in the blood so in the blood there is more uric acid and i will give you the adverse effect on mnemonic don't worry okay so it is inhibiting this this transporter sodium potassium 2 chloride actually it transport five ions but the name is sodium potassium 2 chloride transporter present in the ascending limb of loop of hanley okay so sodium and water they will not go in the blood they will go in the urine and that will lead to diuresis this is the mechanism of action tell me the uses quickly tell me the uses quickly ha huh? there are five uses there are six uses i'm having a mnemonic the mnemonic is hemat we study hematology no you can learn the mnemonic hemat so of course you know it is it is increasing the urine the volume of urine it is increasing the volume of urine so you know most of the fluid is excreted in the urine so in the blood there is less fluid ha na just suppose if someone is taking diuretic so fluid will be less so of course it is used in hypertension in hypertension bp is more na if most of the fluid is lost in the urine bp will fall and hypertension is treated so first uses hypertension it can be used in hypertension h for hypertension of course it is used for edema it is the first line drug for edema ha na excess of fluid there is swelling here there it is lost in the urine ha na congestive heart failure if the heart is weak ha huh? someone heart is weak so we want less preload and less afterload less preload less afterload less fluid in the blood so in the body there will be less fluid so it is decreasing the uh, uh, preload as well as afterload to to this a make heart make heart heart is congestive heart failure m is malignancy you know sometime in malignancy the bone metastasis occur you know bone mats occur whenever bone mats occur the calcium come in the blood ha na imagine a person is having any malignancy any malignancy ha na maybe brain cancer breast cancer any malignancy that is metastasizing to bone ha na the bone will dissolve 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 in the blood there is excess of calcium now there is a problem this is known as hypercalcemia of malignancy i i do not want to treat uh, malignancy for malignancy i give chemotherapy radiotherapy surgery whatever but what to do for this calcium ha huh? i can give diuretic i can give furosemide what does furosemide do furosemide increases the excretion of calcium so whatever extra calcium is there in the malignancy in metastatic that will be excreted in urine it is known as hypercalcemia of malignancy so m for malignancy okay t for toxication imagine someone have taken a poison ha na someone have taken a tried to do suicide by taking excess of any drug so i want to do the diuresis so the drug is not absorbed ha na if it is absorbed i want the drug to be excreted ha na so i i will do diuresis in take in cases of toxication and one t for blood transfusion you know but blood transfusion so ideally we should give one unit of blood in a day ha na but imagine if the patient is having severe anemia and i have given multiple units two units three units in one day ha na so you know everyone have only 5 liter of blood but if i am not giving the packed packed cell i am giving the whole blood the packed cell is not available in the blood bank and i am giving the whole blood ha na to this person and multiple units so 5 liter ka 6 liter 7 liter ho jayega ha na person can have stress over the heart so along with giving the blood transfusion i can give the diuretic so say yes if you all got it so what are the uses people what are the uses the uses are h say 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 the mnemonic fast h e a m t t hemat to this a i will make a heart say the uses 
say the user say ma'am h for hypertension it is one of the first line drug for hypertension okay first line is thiazide one in resistant cases we can give uh, the loop diuretics okay e is edema Hana, we give an emergency the pulmonary edema we can give this drug heart is congestive heart failure m is malignancy actually hypercalcemia of malignancy one t is toxin and one t is transfusion transfusion and you can understand all if you have any doubt in any one please ask me rather than mugging up no 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 don't mug up mug up the mnemonic but after understanding each one can you understand each and every thanks for the compliment can you understand each and every use this is the uses okay uses we are done now coming on the adverse effect people adverse effect there are 11 adverse effect i will explain all I will explain all. Okay, I told you now. This is the transporter for five thing, Hana. Right? So if this transporter is blocked, listen. If this is blocked, these all five ions will not go in the blood. They will excreted in the urine. Which five? Say, ma'am, sodium chloride. I am not interested. Potassium, Hana. Right? Calcium, magnesium. The fifth is chloride, which is not important. And along with the sodium is water. Say yes. So excretion of sodium and water causes dehydration dehydration this is hypokalemia hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia so these are the hypo 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 so there is hypo of water hypo of sodium hypo of calcium hypo of magnesium hypo of potassium say so rather than learning hypo learn the five hypo together learn the five hypo together hypo i am having a mnemonic hypo pmnhc hana pmnhc hana uh Okay, so P stand for potassium, M stand for magnesium, Hana H N stand for sodium, H is H two O water, and C is calcium. You can make some other mnemonic P M N P M N H C. In sab ka hypo 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 hypo, and you can understand all. You can understand all. Say yes if you got it. Say yes. So this is the hypo 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 of five things. You know, in in human we all have pancreas. So let me draw a pancreas. Okay, this is the pancreas, for example. Inside the pancreas, beta cells are there which secrete insulin in the blood. Okay, so for the secretion of insulin, you know, from the pancreas, insulin come. Beta cell, insulin come in the blood. This is insulin. For secretion of insulin, actually potassium is required. You know, if potassium is present in the blood, then only insulin um, uh, will uh, come in the blood. Now here we are having hypocalcemia. You know, less less potassium so less potassium will go in the pancreas so less insulin will come in the blood less insulin less insulin will come in the blood patient glucose will rise patient will become diabetic glucose will rise you know, pre-diabetic or diabetic this is the reason why patient glucose will rise whenever the glucose will rise the lipid profile will also alter you know, glucose will rise so lipid profile will alter hoga. so lipid will also rise this is the reason I can correlate with the hypokalemia. So patients have hypokalemia, so less insulin. Because for the insulin secretion, potassium is required. Now potassium is less, so insulin is less, insulin is less. So glucose is more, glucose is more, so lipid is more. And I have already explained you the uric acid is more. Why uric acid is more? Because the furosemide is using the transporter of uric acid to come from the blood into the luminal side. The scooter is used. So these three things are hyper. So I am having three hyper with me. I am having five hypo and three hyper. Hyper me kya hai? Again, I am having a mnemonic. The mnemonic is GLU, G L U, G for glucose, L for lipid, U for uric acid. Please understand each and every point. People understand each and every point. Hana, rather than mugging up. So G L U, hyperglu. Okay, so five hyper, three hypo. Hana. Apart from that, three other uses. It is it is never given in the pregnancy. Number one. Hana. And it is can cause allergy. Allergy to sabi koi kara sakta hai. And it is autotoxic. It is autotoxic. Hana. Um, Ethacrinic acid and mercerai. Ye pehle use karte hai because of severe autotoxicity, now they are banned. So now we have only three loop diuretics, furosemide, bumetanide, and torosamide. Okay, got it. So it is autotoxic. So tell me, tell me the uses and the adverse effect. I am done with one. Uses and adverse effect of loop diuretics. Kaun batayega? The uses is he matter. He. There are six uses. What are the uses? H E A M T -T, T Hemat. Okay, okay, so make heart of this. Instead of a make a heart. I guess everyone knows what is hemat. So it is hypertension, edema, congestive heart failure, malignancy mein hypercalcemia, toxin and transfusion. Okay, chalo. Let's come on the adverse effect. Tell me hypo. Tell me five hypo. Okay, and tell me three hypo. What are the five hypo? The five hypo is P, M, N, H, C. Hana and three hyper is glue G L U and apart from that three more are there so total eleven are there. What is PMNSC? Same am hypo potassium, 
magnesium, sodium, H2O, H for H2, water, that is dehydration, and C for calcium. They all are less, 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 less in the blood, but they, unfortunately, they are more, more, more in the urine. Got it? And glue, glucose, lipid, and uric acid are more. And you know the reason for each and every of this. Lipidemia, Devraj, because of hyperglycemia leads to hyperlipidemia. Okay, that is secondary. Okay, and three additional thing is autotoxic. Number one, it is autotoxic. It is never given in pregnancy and it can cause allergy. Okay, so total 11 adverse effects. We are done, people. We are done. So read the question. Tell me the answer quick. We have to be a little bit quick. Chalo, read the question. Tell me the answer. Loop diuretics such as furosemide acts by what? Can you tell me the mechanism of action? So how does it act? Read the four option. I'm not reading... You please read the four option and tell me what is it. Yes, absolutely right, Shriya. Absolutely right. The correct answer is inhibition of sodium potassium 2 chloride transporter present on the thick ascending limb of loop of hand. So the site is correct and the transporter is correct. I guess everyone knows the correct answer. The correct answer is C. So you get many questions based on the mechanism of action, uses, and adverse effect. Now read. Which of the following is not an adverse effect of furosemide? Read. So you have to use the hypo and hyper. You know in furosemide there are five hyper and three hypo. What are the five hyper? P-M-N-H-C. And what are the three hyper? Glue. I have written opposite by mistake. What are the five hypo? These all are hypo. And three hyper is glue. Three hyper is glue. Now apply it. Apply it. Read the question. They are asking which of the following is not a side effect. So hyperuricemia? Yes, it's there. Hana? Hyperglycemia? Yes, it's there. Hyperlipidemia? Yes, it's there. But hypermagnesemia? No, 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 no. Magnesemia is hypo. It's not hyper. So, correct answer is D. If you know the mnemonics now, pharmacology is the fun for you. Anna, and if you understand it, you will never forget. Anna, ek bar samaj lo puri pharma. It's like a cakewalk. Believe me. So, correct answer is D. So, this is the next question in front of you. People read and tell me the answer. Furosemide causes all accept. Again, apply the hyper hypo funda. Hypo P M N H C and hyper glue. So tell me which of the following is not happening. So read it. So hyperglycemia, yes. Hypomagnesemia, Hana? yes. Hypokalemia, yes. P for potassium, but acidosis is not. Acidosis will be a side effect of carbonazo uh, carbamazamide. Hana? Acetazolamide, I mean. Okay, carbonic anhydrous inhibitor. So it is not there. So correct answer is still. You can easily make out. So this is what I have done. So from my master charts, I have filled the first column out of the five. Hana? So you know the drugs, furosemide, bumetanide and taurosemide. I guess everyone knows two are uh, banned now. Hana? We don't include them. Mechanism of action, everyone knows. It inhibits sodium, potassium, two chloride transporter present on thick ascending limb of loop of handle. The uses, everyone knows hemat. And side effects, everyone knows. I guess everyone knows. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Can I move to the next category? Thiazide? Quickly. Now you got the pace. Hana, warm up ho chuka hai. Ab bhaagna hai. So let's continue the marathon and let's come on the next category, thiazide. Okay, ji. So let's come on the next category, thiazide. First, tell me the drugs. Drugs, mechanism of action, uses side effect. The same four things we have to study for each and every drug of pharmacology. So let's start the drugs, thiazides. You know the drugs. Just read the drugs. I have already read them. These all are thiazide. The prototype drug here is hydrochlorothiazide. That is a prototype drug. Hydrochlorothiazide. Mechanism of action. You tell me the site of action. Apply the mnemonic. Never forget. C O L T P. I'm teaching you thiazide. It act on D C T. You can see. I know. So again, I'm having a green cell over here. Can you see the green cell? On one side of the green cell, I'm having the blood capillary. Anna, on other side of the green cell, I'm having the urine, the lumen containing the urine. Let me zoom this portion on the next page. So this is a cell of DCT. Last time also there was a cell, but that cell was ascending limb of loop of handling. This time this cell is of DCT. Okay, on one side we are having urine. On other side we are having blood. Say yes, people. Okay, yes, of course it will be useful for NEAT PG as well as FMG. It will be useful for both because I am telling you the crux of the entire pharmacology, the systemic pharmacology, you will never forget. So here you can see on one side there is a lumen containing the urine, on the other side there is the blood capillary containing the blood. This is a cell of DCT. You can imagine, you can zoom out this portion. This is a cell of DCT of the nephron. Okay, now you can see. Now normally what happens, first understand that, then I will tell you the mechanism of action of thiazide. Here there is a transporter of sodium chloride. It is not sodium potassium 2 chloride. No, no, no. Sodium potassium 2 chloride was a transporter there in loop in loop um, diuretics here only sodium chloride transporter which takes sodium and chloride from the lumen and it takes inside the cell after coming inside sodium and chloride both moves in the blood they both moves in the blood so with the help of this transporter sodium and chloride they move 
from the urine to the blood via this transporter. This happens normally in you, in me, in all our DCT, this happens normally. Now, just suppose I'm having edema anywhere on my body and I'm taking a tablet of one of the thiazide. So I'm taking a tablet. Where does the tablet will go? It will go inside, 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 inside. It will get absorbed. It will go in the blood. So this is the blood containing the tablet of thiazide. Can you see here? This is thiazide. So from the blood, first it will come in the urine. The first, of course, it will show its action from the urine, not from the blood. So it has to travel to the urine. How does it travel? It requires a scooter. Again, the scooter is same. So it will require a scooter. Scooter is a transporter. The transporter is of uric acid. So this thiazide uses the transporter of the uric acid. Sit on that. It sit on that. It utilizes the transport and come from the blood to the urine. After coming in the urine, it will block this transporter. But when this transporter is utilized, it is displacing the uric acid. So uric acid will remain in the blood. Again, it will cause gout or hyperuricemia like, like, Anna, the furosemide. Got it? Say yes. Huh? So it will reach here. This drug will reach here, uh, thiazide, in the lumen. After coming in the lumen, it will block this receptor. It will block this receptor. So sodium will not go in the blood. Chloride will not go in the blood. They will remain in the lumen. Jaha, jaha, sodium, waha, waha, water, tera picha na mein chodunga, hai na? So, so, water will also remain in the blood. So, sodium, water, excreting in the urine, that is diuresis. That is the definition of diuretic, I told you. The definition of diuretic is sodium and water excretion in the urine. Say yes, people. Is it conceptual? Is it conceptual? Bolo. Yes, of course, I will take anticoagulant also. Tara Chandrika, stay connected. It is there. After two, three systems, it's going to come. So, today we are going to complete it, hai na? Chalo. So, got it? Say yes, everyone. Everyone say yes. Anna, but here hypomagnesemia will not occur because this transport do not transport do not transport magnesium. No, no, no. Hypomagnesemia is not a side effect. Okay, let me tell you. Okay, you got it. Say everyone say yes. Anyone have any confusion? So it is inhibiting the sodium chloride transporter which is present on DCT. That is the mechanism of action of thiazide diuretics. The same you can see here. So what are the uses? The uses we will change a little bit. Instead of hemat, it's H-E-A-R-D. So first three are same. H-E-A is same. So H is hypertension here also. E is edema here also. And A, I will make A a heart. So heart, that is congestive heart failure here also. But H ke baad MTT ki jaga yaha pe RD hai. Heard, H-E-R-D. R is, you know, uh, in case of renal stones, we can use it. Renal stones, kidney stones. I will tell you why. I will tell you the reason. And D for diabetes insipidus. We will use it in diabetes insipidus, not mellitus. So please learn the users. Let me tell you the adverse effect. Listen, listen. What I told you there. Hmm? What I told you the di uh, loop diuretics adverse effect. And now I'm telling you the adverse effect of thiazide. I want to compare something. Listen, listen. What was hypo there and what was hyper there? I told you five things in the hypo. What were the five things in the hypo? Hmm? Here also I will tell you hypo and hyper. Only one change is there. That's why I'm doing back-to-back -back comparison. What were the five things hypo? P, M, N, H, C. And what was hyper? Glue. I guess everyone know. Dekho, 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 dekho. Everyone on the screen. Listen. Sir, calcium yahan se utke yahan jayega. That's it. That's it. People, the rest is same. P, M, N, H is there. That's it. C is not there. And instead of glue, it's glue. So calcium is increasing in the blood rather than decreasing. I will tell you the reason. Don't worry. First learn that. First learn that. First you learn that. How many of you got it? Huh? So that is the only, only difference. So here PMNH, see here only PMNH. And here glue, here glue curve. So calcium here in the blood decreases, here in the blood increases. In the blood increases, in the urine it will be opposite. People, how many of you got it? Huh? How many of you got it? Huh? So please learn it. Please learn it. Learn it. So that is apart from that three extra additional side effects. So total 11 here also we have total 11. So you can see hypo. Four hypo are there. Huh? P, M, N, H. Not C. Hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hyponatremia and dehydration. But not cal cal calcium. Calcium will come in hyper. Glucose. Instead of glue, it's gluc. So hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, hyperuremia and hypercalcemia. Got it. So everything, the reason is also same. Magnesium is not there, Devraj. No, I told you this, this transporter is not transmitting the magnesium. That transporter was different, Devraj. That was sodium potassium 2 chloride that was transmitting magnesium also. But this one is sodium chloride transporter present on DCT. Do not transmit magnesium. So magnesium is not, uh, achha, magnesium is written here. So a little bit of magnesium you can say. It's not a very major. But yeah, little bit magnesium you can consider here also. A little bit of magnesium will increase. Not much, but a little bit. But main magnesium is there in loop diuretics okay and of course it is not safe in pregnancy like the loop diuretics it is causing allergy also and instead of autotoxic it is renotoxic hannah it is causing the 
uh, renal insufficiency. So it is toxic for the kidney. So these are the three additional side effects. Now why the calcium is opposite? You have to understand that. Now you can see this is DCT. This is DCT. Hannah, in the DCT, have you heard parathormone is a hormone that causes absorption of calcium? You know, in our body, there is a hormone, parathormone secreted from parathyroid gland. We have four parathyroid gland, two on each thyroid. Hana, they secrete parathormone in the blood. Where does that parathormone go? Parathormone go in our kidney. It goes in the DCT. In the DCT, there are receptors for parathormone. Parathormone acts on that receptor and absorbs the calcium from the urine in the blood. Hana, it absorbs the calcium from the urine to the blood. Got it? So, what does thiazide do? Thiazide stimulates these receptors. So parathormone become hyperactive. That's why calcium get absorbed from the urine in the blood. So in the blood, the concentration of calcium is more. And the lumen in the urine, it is less. So this is the reason why calcium is doing opposite. Say yes. Huh? Say yes. Got it? So that is the thing. You have to learn. Only calcium is opposite. So instead of here, it is here. And I told you the reason also. The reason is parathormone stimulation of the receptors present on the DCT. By thiazide. How many of you got it, people? Now compare back to back. We are done with the two diuretics. Kitno ko samajai. How many of you got it? So we are done with the loop diuretics and the thiazide. Enumerate the drugs. Here only three drugs are there. Furosemide, bumetanide, tyrosamide. Here many thiazides are there, but the prototype is hydrochlorothiazide. But you have to learn all. Ha na? Clopamide, indipamide, you have to learn all. Okay. Mechanism of action. This acts on loop of Hanley, a sunding limb. This acts on DCT. This inhibitor transporter, the name of the transporter is sodium potassium 2 chloride. And this inhibitor transporter, the name of the transporter is sodium chloride. Anna, now compare the users. Anna, CCC, everyone on the screen. Hypertension is both of them. We can give them. But the main drug in hypertension is this. Anna, in resistant case, we can give loop diuretics. Edema is there in both of them. But the main drug in edema is loop diuretic. Anna, if it is not available or not working, then we can shift to thiazide. So hypertension and edema is use of both of them. But for hypertension, best is thiazide. For edema, the best is loop diuretic. But it is there in both. Anna, eko banado heart. Congestive heart failure, eko banado heart. Congestive heart failure. So first three uses are same. The next two are different. The next two or three are different. So here malignancy. Hypercalcemia of malignancy. Anna, toxication and transfusion. Okay, and here it is renal stone and it is diabetes insipidus. Now you can understand why it is given in renal stones, I guess, because it is uh, decreasing the calcium concentration in the urine. Okay, now this is a cell of DCT. You can understand this is a cell of DCT. On one side, as said, there is urine. Okay, and on other side, as said, there is always blood. There is always blood. Anna. So on the on the luminal side, there is, there is parathormone receptors. These are PTH receptors. So thiazide stimulate these receptors. Because of stimulation of these receptors, calcium move from the urine to the blood. So in the blood, the calcium is more. Hypercalcemia it is coming in glue. And in the urine, it is less. Since calcium is less in the urine, you know, the person who already have a calcium stone in the kidney. So we want to give less calcium in the urine. Na? Agar calcium urine zada hoga, it will crystallize and increases the stones. So stones have a tendency to reoccur. So if there is a person who is already having a kidney stone, so I, I can give the thiazide diuretic because it decreases the calcium in the urine. In case of renal stone, I want to decrease the concentration of calcium in the urine, not in the blood. Because the stone is not in the blood. The stone is in the kidney. Hana, got my point? So this is the reason. How many of you got it? Hmm? Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? So read the question. We will solve some questions. We are done with hazards also. Read the question. Hazard diuretics causes all except. Huh? So tell me the users and side effects. If you know the users and side effects, you can solve that. Huh? What are the side effects? What is hyper and what is hypo? Both are 4-4. Four, four. What is hyper? Hyper is gluc, G-L-U-C. And what is hypo? P-M-N-H. C is in the gluc. Now read hyperglycemia, yes or no? Read it. Hyperglycemia, first option. Say yes, ma'am. Hyperglycemia occurs. Increase calcium excretion. Is it increased calcium excretion? Excretion is more means blood may less. No, no, no. It decreases calcium excretion. So this option is incorrect. Hana, it is useful in congestive heart failure. Yes, it is useful in congestive heart failure because it is coming in hard. Hard may A is congestive heart failure. So this option is correct. And it decreases uric, uric acid excretion. Yes, it decreases uric acid excretion. That's why uric acid is more in the blood. So this hypo and hyper is in the blood. In the urine, it will occur opposite. How many of you got it? The answer is not D. Devraj, the answer is B. Rest all are right. Correct. Hana. So someone, Shriya, no, answer is not D. Okay, answer is B. I hope you got, I hope you got it. You got confused. So correct answer is B. Because it it decreases calcium excretion. It causes the absorption of calcium by parathormone. 
Okay, so correct answer is B. So let's move to the next question. The next question is in front of you. Thus that diuretics do not produce one of the following. So again, use the same concept, hypo and hyper. What is hypo? P M N H. And what is hyper? Glue. Now read it. What is not present? It's very simple if you know the mnemonics people. Hypoglycemia, I guess this is wrong. Glycemia is hyper, it's not hypo. So this is wrong. Hyponatremia, yes, it's correct. Hyponatremia. Hypokalemia, yes, it's also correct. Potassium. And hyperuricemia, yes, it's also correct. But this one is given opposite. So my answer will be A. So you frequently get questions on hypo, hyper, hypo, hyper. And you get mad in the exam if you don't apply the concepts with mnemonics. You should know the mnemonics. If you forget it, you have the concept. Say yes, people. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Okay. Okay. No, we don't use it for cholelithiasis. We use it only for renal stones. It don't go in the gallbladder. It goes in the urine. Got it? Tanmay. We don't use it in cholelithiasis. Only in renal stones. It decreases the concentration of the calcium in urine. Not in gallbladder. How many of you got it? So, can I start the next system? So, we are done with important drugs in the renal system. We got the concepts of all five and we have seen two in detail. Let's come on cardiovascular system. Are you interested with the same manner? Huh? So you have to give me a thumbs up. If you are satisfied, you want me with the same manner, I should continue all the system. Give me a thumbs up. Can we continue each and every one of you? Can we continue cardiovascular system? Let's start cardiovascular system. So here I will take three chapters one by one. First of all, I will teach you the drugs acting on Randin angiotensinogen system. Here I will discuss two types of drugs, ACE inhibitors, I will tell you quickly, and angiotensin um, receptor blockers. I mean ARBs we will discuss. Hana? Drugs acting on heart failures, the most important drugs, digitoxin, digoxin, Hana? we will discuss. Hai? And antihypertensive drugs, we will discuss ABCD protocols. Hana? We will discuss all one by one. Can we continue? So the first, I am starting first chapter in cardiovascular. It's a big system. I have to cover three different chapters inside that. Okay. So let's start the drugs acting on Randin angiotensinogen system. So before coming people on the drugs, Randin angiotensinogen system, you should understand that you don't know what is Randin angiotensinogen system. What does it mean? Many people even don't know that. What is Randin angiotensinogen system? So let me first explain you what is Randin angiotensinogen system and then explain you the drugs acting on that. So what is Randin angiotensinogen system? We all have blood pressure. It is having two components, systolic and diastolic. Systolic is always 120, diastolic is 80. I mean, this is normal blood pressure. Plus minus 10, 20 is okay. Okay. So this is normal. So I'm having this, you are having this. Normal people have this blood pressure. Now due to any reason, if blood pressure falls, due to any reason, for example, for example, from stupine position, I suddenly get up. Hana, we wake up in the morning. So we should not directly wake up. So all the blood will go in our legs. Hana, and the blood pressure may fall. Or ex for example, I'm having the vomiting. I'm having the diarrhea. I'm having the accident. So blood is lost. I'm having a surgery in which the blood is lost. Or due to any reason, blood pressure fall. What will happen? If the blood pressure will fall, we can go in shock and we all can die. No, no, no. We don't miss. This doesn't happen in us. Because God is great. Why? Because God has given a backup. God is great, people. God has given a backup. So whenever blood pressure falls in us, RAS get activated. So that is the function of the RAS, Renin angiotensinogen system. It get activated in healthy people only when the blood pressure fall. Whenever the blood pressure fall, immediately within seconds, it get activated. It's an inbuilt system in us. You say, now what is the system? What is so when just suppose in me the blood pressure is falling due to any, 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 any XYZ reason. Anna? So inside my blood vessel, this is my blood vessel, there is a protein which is present. It is always present in you, in me. It's an active. Anna? The name of that protein is angiotensinogen. It is formed by the liver. It is present right now also in me. But currently my blood pressure is normal, so it is not getting splitted. It is present in you also. Liver ne palace bana ke blood me dal rakha. So in all of our blood, human beings, this protein is present. The name of the protein is angiotensinogen. It is by the liver and it is present in the blood Hana. but as soon as the blood pressure fall Hana, blood pressure fall so all my organs are receiving the blood kidney also receive a fixed proportion of the blood kidney is the most sensitive Jesse sabko kam blood mila from head to toe all my organs are receiving less 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 blood because my blood pressure is less so all my organs from head to toe they are receiving less blood but kidney is most sensitive so as soon as the kidney receives less blood inside the kidney there are cells which are known as juxtra glomerular cells JJ cells they get activated they, they just sense, hai na? they are the sensor, in their sensor fit hai. Hai na? as soon as they sense that the blood is less as compared to normal, it means blood pressure is fault, they just secrete an enzyme in the blood, the name of that enzyme is Ranin. 
Renin come from the kidney. So renin come in the blood only when blood pressure fall. So currently in my blood angiotensinogen is present, but in my blood renin is not there because my blood pressure is normal. I guess currently, you know, if it falls, then kidney will sense it inside the kidney juxtaglomerular apparatus. JJ cells will sense it. They are present on the apparent arteriole, and they will secrete the renin enzyme in the blood. What does this renin do? Renin convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin one. Okay, angiotensin one, but angiotensin one is not very active. No. In the lung, there is another enzyme. The name of that enzyme is ACE. What is ACE? Full form of ACE? Angiotensin converting enzyme. Naam mein hai. The meaning is hidden in the name itself. Angiotensin converting. It will convert angiotensin. It will convert angiotensin 1 to 2. Angiotensin 2 is the most important product. Now, it will act on 6 organs. I will tell you which 6 organ. All the 6 organs have angiotensin receptors. Hana. So this is the thing. So whenever there is a fall in BP, renin get activated. In all, you can see this is a blood vessel. This is my blood vessel, for example. So in all of our blood, Hana, there is a protein. The name of the protein is angiotensinogen, which is synthesized by the liver. Whenever the blood pressure will fall at that time, the enzyme renin will come in the blood. Hana, the renin will come from the kidneys. It will come in the blood. Okay, and renin convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Now, from the lungs, another enzyme will come that is ACE. ACE convert, ACE is angiotensin converting enzyme. It will convert the angiotensin 1 to 2. So, finally, we are having 3 protein plus 2 enzyme. Say the 3 protein. Say, ma'am, first there was angiotensinogen. Then angiotensin 1, then angiotensin 2. These are the three proteins one by one they are formed. And we are having two enzymes. What are the name of two enzymes? First is renin secreted by kidney. And second is ACE secreted by lung. So this family is known as RAS. It is a family having three protein and two enzymes. The family is known as RAS. It's a RAS family. Anna, what is the full form of RAS? Renin angiotensinogen system. Okay, it's the renin angiotensinogen system. It's the family having three protein and two enzyme, five members in the family. The five members in the family. Now, they will maintain our BP. How they will maintain? The most important member is angiotensin 2. Now, what does this angiotensin 2 do here? It will act on the six organs. What are the six organs? In our blood vessels, it causes vasoconstriction. So, BP will rise again. And a vasoconstriction, hoga, you tell me, BP will rise or not rise? So, BP will rise. It will act on the heart. In the heart, it will increase the rate, force, contractility. So again, the BP will rise. So it will act on the blood vessel causes vasoconstriction. It will act on the heart, increases the rate, force, contractility. It will act on the uh, adrenal. It will secrete aldosterone. And aldosterone causes sodium water retention. It again increases the BP. It acts on the kidney. Kidney also do sodium water retention. Hana? So again, it raises the BP. It acts on the brain. In the brain, there is a, uh, you know, it, it, it stimulates the posterior pituitary. From the posterior pituitary, there is increased ADH secretion. So we have more thirst. We feel thirsty and we drink water. So again, BP will rise because we are increasing the fluid. We are drinking water. And it will act on the uh, nerves. Which nerves it will stimulate? It will not stimulate parasympathetic. It will stimulate the sympathetic stimulation that will raise the BP. So don't learn the organ. I do not want you to learn the organ. But there are six organs. On all these six organs, there is a receptor. AT receptor. Angiotensin receptor is present. AT, 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 angiotensin receptor. So this angiotensin 2 is going on its receptor, binding with the 6 receptor and increasing the BP. So the fall in BP again become normal. For example, my BP become 90 by 70. So again, it will become 120 by, uh, 120 by 80. Got my point? Because these 6 organs are acting. Say yes, got it. So this is renin angiotensinogen pathway. Thankfully, thankfully God has given the system to us. So whenever we have fallen BP, we don't worry. Imagine if suddenly I'm, I'm doing postural, you know, from supine to wake up. And I just get up in an erect position. So I don't, I feel a little bit dizzy, but my BP again maintained. If I'm having vomiting, I'm having diarrhea, I'm having accident, I'm having surgery, my blood is lost, fluid is lost from the body. If we are using access of diuretic, anything we are doing, Hana, my BP will fall, but God has given me this system inbuilt system in us so bp will maintain again say yes if you all got it hmm? say yes Hana. so this system you understood now i will tell you the drug before that there is one more function of the ace but from where the ace is secreted ace is secreted from the lung so ace is secreted from the lung when the bp will fall Hana. but currently what ace is doing in my lung currently my bp is normal so but ace is present in my lung so what is the normal function of ace when the BP will fall, it convert angiotensin 1 to 2. But currently my BP is normal, so I don't have angiotensin 1. So I don't want this conversion. So ACE is not doing this conversion. So normally ACE do another function in my lung, in everyone's lung. In our lung, there is a, there is a metabolite which is formed that is bread, bradykinin and substance P. So ACE inhibitor degrade that metabolite because this bradykinin and substance P, na, it causes cough. It causes edema. It causes itching. Hana? It causes taste disturbance. So ACE just inactivate the bradykinin and substance P. So I don't have cough, I don't have edema because in my lungs, ACE is present. ACE is doing this function. So can I say ACE is having a double role? 
Huh? Can I say Ace is having a double role? Say yes, people. So what is your doubt? Please write down in the chat box. Anna, whenever I will finish the topic, I will address your doubt. Whatever is your doubt. Okay. So whenever the Ace, the Ace is having a double role. Whenever BP is normal, normally in me, right now the BP is normal. So it convert bradykinin and substance P to an active product. But whenever our BP fall, at that time it convert angiotensin 1 to 2. So Ace have a double role. See the double role of the Ace double rule of the ACE. It does this conversion also. It does this conversion also. This conversion when there is hypotension. Hello. And this conversion when the BP is normal. Everyone give me a thumbs up people. Keep on responding. Say yes. So this is the double rule of the ACE you can see. See this role also. See this role also. Okay. Got it. Got my point. Hello. Okay. So we all got the same. Ma'am. Now come on the drugs. This is the normal physiology I taught you. Now coming on the drugs. Listen. You know, after an age, maybe after 50 years, after 60 years, many of the people have hypertension. How many of you, the parents are hypertensive or the grandparents are hypertensive? How many of you, the family, someone is hypertensive who is elder? Huh? Any relative? How many of you know hypertensive relatives? Neighbors? Huh? So there are many people who, who is hypertensive. After a particular age, maybe we also have the hypertension. Huh? So maybe 50. So have you ever thought why hypertension is such a common disease in an increased age? After 50 years, what happens in the body? So patient have the hyper person have the hypertension. What happens? So God has given this family now the, the 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 three uh, three proteins and two enzymes RAS. RAS kyun diya hai? Why God has given RAS inbuilt RAS in us? The family of the RAS. Why? Whenever BP fall, it get activated at that time and normalize our BP. This is the function of RAS. Hana? After 50 years or 60 years in old age, RAS become hyperactive. Even on normal BP, it become active. Hana, my BP is normal. For example, my age become more than 50 years. Hana, I become old. At that time, RAS. Hana, my BP is normal. Currently, my BP is normal after 50 years. In fact, on normal BP, RAS will get activated. If the RAS will get activated on normal BP, it will act on the sixth organ and it will raise the BP. And person have a hypertension. Got my point? So whenever we have low BP and RAS get activated, the RAS do the BP normalization. Hana. It will increase the BP and do it normal. But if the BP is already normal and RAS become hyperactive, even on normal BP, if it, if it is getting active, so person will have hypertension. So this is the reason for hypertension in old age. That is known as primary hypertension. That is overactivation of RAS. Say yes, people. Hmm? So this is overactivation of RAS. So this is the overactivation of RAS. Overactivation of RAS. So if you want to treat the hypertension, inhibit RAS. How can we inhibit RAS? We can inhibit RAS at three places. People on the screen. We can inhibit RAS at three places. Hana, inhibit ranin. Inhibit ranin. Hana, if you want to treat the hypertension in an old age, inhibit ranin. So angiotensinogen will not convert it into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 will not convert into 2. Hana, 2 will not act on the organ and BP will not rise. Number 1. Number 2, ACE inhibitor. Inhibit the ACE. If you are not inhibiting the ranin, it's okay. Inhibit ACE. So angiotensin 2 will not form. If you are not inhibiting ranin and not inhibiting ACE, the third thing, Block the receptors, AT receptors. Block the AT receptors. So if angiotensin 2 at all it is forming, it cannot act on its receptor and it frees the BP. So there are three type of drugs. There are three type of drugs. No need to learn people. I, I hope you got it. How many of you got it? There are three type of drugs. Ranin inhibitor, ACE inhibitor and angiotensin receptor blocker. These are the three drugs which inhibit ROS at the three different levels. How many of you got it? Either inhibit the ranin, number one, or inhibit the ACE, or inhibit the receptors. I mean, inhibit the receptors means block the receptors. Hana, most common among them we use is ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Ranin inhibitors we do not use very commonly. How many of you got it? People, samajh mein aara hai kya? Samajh mein aara hai. So ACE inhibitors, we will see them one by one. So again, let's start the chapter. Let's start the chapters that is ROS inhibitors. So I'm having ACE inhibitors to teach you. ARBs to teach you and ranin inhibitors to teach you. Ranin inhibitors are not very important so we can skip but these two categories we will see among the same headings. First enumerate the drugs in each category. Tell me the classification. Then mechanism of action of each of them. Uses of each of them. Adverse effect of each of them. And contraindication from the adverse effects only we can make out the contraindication if you got it. Ah, so let's start. Chalo, let's start the ACE inhibitor. Tell me the drugs. How many drugs you know? Say ma'am all the drugs are prill, 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 prill. I mean the suffix is prill. How many prills you know? Capropril, Sinopril, Inalapril, Parindopril, Ramipril, Fosipril, Quinopril and Tranodopril. So don't add pril after your name. You have to learn the exact names. Okay. So please learn the name of the drug along with the suffix pril. But looking at the suffix pril, you can identify it's the ACE inhibitor. You will get the option. If you don't learn, it's okay. You will get in the option. Uh, in my first part, I have taught you the prodrugs. 
Have I taught you products in my part one? If you have not watched, please watch it. Products. I told you in that part that all the ACE inhibitors are products except two. You get question on that. Capropril and lisinopril are not prodrug. Remaining these, remaining all these are the prodrug. You get question on that. So please learn it. Capropril and lisinopril are not prodrug. They are active directly. But remaining all are inactive. They are prodrugs. So all pills are prodrug except capropril and lisinopril. It's a big question out there. You have to learn that. Huh, no, what is the mechanism? We are done with the drugs, people. Chalo, who will tell me the mechanism of action? Say, ma'am, now me hai. Come on. It's very easy. Common sense. Ace inhibitor inhibitase. <laughs> that is the mechanism of action. It's very easy. So basically, ACE inhibitor inhibit the ACE. See the ACE. It inhibit ACE. So inhibit ACE, so angiotensin 1 will not convert into 2. 2 will not form. 2 will not form. It will not act on the 6th organ. So it will not rise the BP. So BP will fall again. So this is the mechanism. It inhibit ACE. ACE inhibitor inhibit ACE. So angiotensin 2 is not formed. It will not act on the 6th organ. It will not rise the BP. BP will fall. This is the mechanism of action. Tell me the uses. For uses, I am having a mnemonic. I know, first learn the mnemonic, then I will explain you each and every use. So the mnemonic is home care makes patient definitely strong. This is the mnemonic. H stand for hypertension. So of course, that is the drug we are reading for hypertension only. Now in old age hypertension, we can give this drug. Because if we give in hypertension, angiotensin 2 will not form. And it will not act on the sixth organ. It will not act on the sixth organ. BP will not rise. BP will fall. BP will become normal, I mean. So hypertension, the first choice of drug in hypertension. C, for congestive heart failure. In congestive heart failure, it is acting on heart also, no? So angiotensin 2, what it is doing in the heart? It is increasing the rate, force and contractility of the heart. Uh, of the heart. In congestive heart failure, we want to decrease the rate, force and contractility. So here angiotensin 2 is not formed. So it will not increase the rate, force and contractility. It will reduce the rate, force and contractility of heart. So in congestive heart failure. In MI also, we can give because it is reducing the rate, force and contractility. In prophylaxis of MI also, MI and prophylaxis of MI, we can give it. For example, there is an obese patient having diabetes, high chances having a MI in future. So we can give for prophylaxis also. Okay, or after a primary attack of MI, for preventing the secondary attack, we can give it. Hannah D for diabetic nephropathy and S for scleroderma crisis because of in a scleroderma crisis, you know, hypertensive crisis occurs. So for preventing that, we can give it. Say yes. So the mnemonic is home care makes patient definitely strong. First of all, what are the uses of ACE inhibitor? Say ma'am, home care makes patient definitely strong. Say the full form. Hypertension, congestive heart failure, MI, prophylaxis of MI. Diabetic nephropathy and scleroderma crisis. You will never forget and you can understand each of them. Rather than learning now, if you didn't got the mechanism in any, you can write down, okay, ma'am, what is the mechanism in this use, in this use? You can understand each one, I guess. Tell me the adverse effect. For adverse effect, I also am having a mnemonic. So I will teach you the form of the double aged. I will give you the mnemonics and I will explain you each and everything in the mnemonic also. So if mnemonic bhool bhi gaya, you have the backup, you have the concepts also. So you should know the mnemonics as well as concepts both. Sir, concept se kaam nahi chalega. Sir, mnemonic se kaam nahi chalega. You should know both. Got it? So, the mnemonic for the adverse effect is captopril. What is the mnemonic? Captopril. Captopril itself is the mnemonic. C stand for cuff. A stand for angioneuritic edema. Achha, I told you ACE inhibitor. Na? Listen. Listen, listen, listen. I told you what does the ACE inhibitor do? Say, ma'am, ACE inhibitor inhibit ACE. Obviously, ACE inhibitor is a drug which inhibit the enzyme ACE. Okay, but I told you ACE is having a double role, people. ACE is having a double role. Hana, you are inhibiting ACE. Hana, so you want to inhibit this conversion. Of course, because patient is hypertensive, you, you do not want angiotensin 2 to be formed. You will inhibit this conversion. Angiotensin 2 will not form. BP will not rise. Okay, you want this. But if you inhibit ACE, this conversion will also block. Now, unfortunately, we do not want to th block this one. But as a side effect, this will block. If this will block, this conversion will also block, you know, because you are inhibiting ACE. So, bradykinin and substance P will not be degraded into bradykinin and substance P. Just a second, my pen is not working here. What happened? Huh. Bradykinin and substance P will not convert into inactive product. They will remain as bradykinin and substance P only and they cause cough, they cause edema, they cause itching. They can cause taste disturbances. So this is the side effect of ACE inhibitor. How many of you got it? Here we can correlate the side effect. Because we are inhibiting the ACE. So we want to block this conversion. ACE is having a double role. Hana, in the blood, ACE con inhibit, ACE convert angiotensin 1 to 2. We want to block this conversion. We do not want angiotensin 2 to be formed. We want to treat hypertension. But in the lung, ACE convert bradykinin into inactive product. This conversion will also block. Now, bradykinin will not uh, convert into inactive product. And bradykinin will lead to edema, cough and 
uh, a cough edema and itch so this is the three side effects you can understand out of all the cough is due to bradykinin hai na a for angenuritic edema you can see cough a for angenuritic edema the face edema angenuritic edema it is also due to bradykinin bradykinin and substance p this is also bradykinin and substance p and you can see i i is itch this is also itch the three side effect of the bradykinin you know these are the three side effects of the bradykinin you can see so this is also due to bradykinin okay so captopril me se teen to bradykinin ke ho gaye hai na c a and i apart from p p is proteinuria t is t is taste disturbance taste disturbance is also due to bradykinin and t is teratogenic also o is others theek hai just to finish the mnemonic i have put o p is potassium increase it increases potassium hai na it increases potassium in the blood hyperkalemia it increases potassium please learn and r is renal impairment and l is low bp sometimes it accidentally decrease the bp we want to decrease the bp ha na we are giving it in hypertensive person and we want to decrease the bp make it normal but sometime it will accidentally decrease the bp and the person will be, become hypotension and person will have vertigo and fall down that is usually first dose hypotension got it so l for low bp so captopril so what is the contraindication the contraindications are the park par ki never give ac inhibitor in pregnancy p for pregnancy a is allergy never give an allergy of course r is renal artery stenosis or a single single kidney never give it in renal artery stenosis or single kidney because here the main thing in renal artery stenosis everything depends on the glomerular function and here if you give the ac inhibitor it will give it will do the vasodilatation and it will fall the glomerular uh, filtration rate so we cannot afford that and k is kalemia if the potassium is already raised never give it will further increase the potassium and person can have arrhythmias no no if the potassium is already raised never give ac inhibitor so this is the thing how many of you got it read the question we will revise it read the question tell me the answer we will revise complete ac inhibitor read the question pdf will be shared on the telegram group after the session okay so please understand first the session after that i will share the pdf also don't worry about that in all april is contraindicated in all of the following except The question is on the contraindication of enalapril. What is enalapril? Pril, pril. It's a pril. It's a yes inhibitor, ha na? So it is contraindicated in PARK, P A R K, ha na? So diabetic nephropathy is it there? No, diabetic nephropathy wasn't used as people. Home care makes patient definitely stronger. D is diabetic nephropathy, so we give it in diabetic nephropathy. But in single kidney, yes, we don't give it renal artery stenosis and single kidney. Bilateral renal artery stenosis, we don't give it. Hyperkalemia, we do not give it. So correct answer is A. The correct answer is A. Okay, renal artery stenosis is a contraindication. No, no, renal artery stenosis is not the answer. The answer is A because it is coming in the uses, not the contraindication. How many of you got it? We are done with ACE inhibitor. In this way, you have to study each and every drug of the pharma. I have converted the entire pharmacology in twenty master charts. Such twenty master charts. Just read that. Pharma is nothing after that. Okay. Most of the questions are from master charts only. Most of the charts. So most of the master charts we are going to discuss today. Out of those twenty, let's see how many we can cover. Okay. So from this master charts, you can revise the entire pharmacology very easily. So let's start the A inhibitor. Tell me all the A inhibitors. Same. I'm all pril, 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 pril. All of them are prils. Okay. What is the mechanism of action? Name me a A inhibitor inhibit A. ACE is inhibited, so angiotensin one do not convert into angiotensin two. That is the mechanism. Angiotensin two is not formed. BP will not rise. Okay. Uses home care makes patient definitely strong. Adverse effect captopril. You know the full form. And contraindication is PARK. So if you learn the mnemonic and if you know the full form, you will rock. Okay, Shreya. Uh, Telegram group is whatever you are watching uh, YouTube session right now. No. Ha na, Doctor Bhanu Prakash. So that is the Telegram group. You can search and you can join. Ha na, the same Telegram group wherever you are watching the session right now. The link may be given the pinned uh, in the pinned uh, message after the session. So you can click on the pinned uh, link in the chat box in this uh, session after the session. Okay. Now let's come on the next. The next are ARB. Let me start with ARBs. Ha na, what are the drugs? The drugs are Sartan. The suffix is Sartan. So it is Losartan. Candy Sartan, Wal Sartan, Tell Me Sartan, Irbe Sartan, Old Me Sartan, 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 Sartan. So the suffix is Sartan. ARBs. What does they do? Name me hai. Ha na angiotensin receptor blocker. What does they do? They block the six organ receptor, AT receptor, AT receptor on the blood vessel, AT receptor on the heart, AT receptor on the adrenal, AT receptor on the kidney, AT receptor on the brain, AT receptor on the nerves. So AT angiotensin receptors are Block, na na by angiotensin two. I mean by ARBs. So they block. So angiotensin two is present in the blood. 
but it cannot act on the receptor because the receptors are blocked so it cannot raise the bp so bp will fall so although angiotensin 2 is present but it cannot show its action because the receptors are blocked these are arbs say yes say so, ma'am what is the advantage of arbs as compared to ace inhibitor rather than inhibiting ace why i should prefer arbs because if you are inhibiting ace na so secondary side impact is bradykinin is not degraded na so cough Hana, angiogenetic edema itch is occurring but if we are blocking the receptors hana, this function is going smoothly ready can get can we are not blocking ace hana. so here cough itch and angiogenetic edema and taste disturbance will not occur so that is the advantage of arb over ace inhibitor how many of you got it that is the advantage why we prefer arb as compared to ace inhibitor because here this function will continue smoothly now we are not inhibiting ace so bradycanin will get converted into inactive product so whatever the side effect of uh, uh, ace inhibitor were there these side effects will not be there so that is the difference bradycanin and substance p uh, degradation will occur they will not accumulate and cough rashes taste disturbance angioneritic edema they will not occur so uses are same home care makes patient definitely strong the uses are same side effect may say after removing cough itch angioneritic edema hypotension is a side effect they are also here also hyperkalemia is a side effect they are also here also and in pregnancy you can give nothing neither this nor that so they are teratogenic both of them so we have removed certain side effect the remaining are there so compare we are done with this chapter everyone give me a thumbs up we are done with this chapter compare 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 we are done with drugs inhibiting drug drug inhibiting drugs the main uh, use is hypertension so we have seen the two categories ace inhibitors angiotensin receptor blocker these are prill 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 these are certain 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 if you don't learn the names it's okay you will be you will be given in the options and in the options you can easily identify it the mechanism of action they block the enzyme ace they block the receptors on the sixth organ they don't block the enzyme ace here the uses are same home care makes patient definitely strong here also the uses home care make patients definitely strong the side effects are different. Captopril may say remove cough, remove angiogenetic edema, remove rashes, remove itch. Uske baad jo bach gaya, that is a side effect. Hypotension is a side effect of both of them. Increased potassium and teratogenicity is a side effect of both of them. Contraindication you can say park here also. So we are done. People respond. You people are not responding. These are not very important. You can skip it. So let's come on the next chapter. Heart failure drugs. Can I start the next chapter? Heart failure drugs. Are you people there? Can we continue? Huh? Give me a minute to drink water. Can we start the next chapter? Very important chapter and difficult to understand, but I will make a cake walk for you. So give me a thumbs up while if you are awakened and understanding and enjoying the session. Thank you so much. Anna, so let's continue with heart failure drugs. Let's continue heart failure drugs. So before understanding the drugs, the mechanism, the everything, you must understand that disease, no? So first I taught you, ki RAS kya hota hai? then I taught you the drugs acting on RAS. Now in the similar way, if you want to understand heart failure drug, first understand what is heart failure. If you don't understand heart failure, so pharmacology, you cannot understand without understanding pathology. So first understand patho followed by pharma. Pharma is like this. Got it? So there is a particular sequence. So first understand the disease. A little bit about that. One minute I will teach you heart failure. Then I will come on the drugs of the heart failure. So what is heart failure? People, what is heart failure? In the heart failure, you can see the diagram of the heart. Now you can see this is the left ventricle. In heart failure, the left ventricle is not pumping properly. Left heart failure we are talking. You know? The left ventricle is not pumping. Normally, the left ventricle pumps the blood. You know? The blood goes in the aorta. The pure blood, the oxygenated blood and aorta distribute it throughout the body in all the organs. But now in left heart failure, the left ventricle is not pumping. Hana, the left ventricle is not pumping properly. So blood is not received by all the organs. Hana, so that is heart failure. Now God is great. As I told you, God is great. So God has given compensation for everything. In our body, for everything, there is a backup. The God has given us such a complex human body. Now the backup is already there. Like for Paul in BP, the backup is Ras. Hana, backup is RAS, that is Renri Angiotensinogen system, the backup is given. Whenever we have hypotension, it automatically gets stimulated. In the same way, if the heart fails, again there is a backup in the body. The backup is there is sympathetic stimulation. Heart failure is an emergency. Imagine if my left ventricle is not pumping. Unfortunately, never it never happens. But imagine if it is happening in anyone. The left ventricle is not pumping properly. So it's an emergency situation. You know, the blood is not going in aorta and all the organs are receiving less blood or no blood. Less blood or no blood, all organs, it's an emergency. In emergency, sympathetic stimulation occurs. Hana? So sympathetic stimulation occurs in the body. Hana? So inside the heart, in the, in the left ventricle wall, there are cells. These are known as cardiomyocytes. Let me draw the cell. 
can you see the wall of the left ventricle i'm drawing the green color cell these are cardiomyocytes hana on them beta beta 2 receptor is present hana whenever there is sympathetic stimulation adrenaline will come in the blood so whenever the heart is not pumping the left ventricle is not pumping all the organs are not receiving blood it's an emergency the body will secrete the adrenaline hana nor adrenaline it's a sympathetic stimulation so that will go on the heart on these on the receptor of these heart cells i'm sorry not beta 2 beta 1 receptors are present and that will increase the contractility hana so you see it's a very good thing god has given a backup so whenever the heart is not pumping automatically sympathetic stimulation will take place nor adrenaline will come in the blood and that nor adrenaline will act on the beta 1 receptor present on the wall of the left ventricle and it increases the contractility so the failing heart which was not contracting it start contracting again for the next few for the next few hours or uh, maybe days hai na wo thodi der ke liye compensation hai hai na whatever is the disease you have not treated it bhai heart fail ho raha hai to koi to disease hogi the muscle is the weak or some mi is there or cardiomyopathy is there hai na cardiac tamponade is there whatever is the disease but here temporarily the heart again started pumping so you say ma'am it's a very good thing hai na you can see because of the beta 1 receptors present in the wall of the heart on the cells it again started pumping because of compensation so god is doing a very good thing but because of compensation there is one good thing but two bad things are there two harmful effects of this compensation so one good thing is this you can see alpha and beta receptor distribution is there i will teach you this in the ans also hai na so you can see this is a good thing because of the beta 1 stimulation in the heart the heart started pumping again but because nor adrenaline is present in the blood it will go at two more places it will go in the heart it is doing good here but it will go at, at two more places the same nor adrenaline here it is increasing the contractility but it will go in the kidney also in the kidney hai na again there are beta 1 receptors in the kidney and it will increase the secretion of the renin from the kidney Hana, what does the renin will do? Renin angiotensinogen pathway will come in the role. Renin angiotensinogen pathway will increase the blood pressure. It will, it will increase the preload, it will increase the afterload. Hana, so in a failing heart, you know, we have preload and afterload. Bhi bada diya. So it is not a good thing. It will do sodium water retention. Renin will do sodium water retention, renin will increase the BP. So it's a bad thing because heart is already failing. And you are increasing the workload on the heart. Hana, this is a good thing for the heart, but this is a bad thing. And the second bad thing noradrenaline is doing, it is going on the arteries and the veins. Hana, on the arteries and veins, on the media, alpha receptors are present. It is stimulating the alpha receptors and causing vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction. Hana, again, it's a bad thing. Because of the vasoconstriction, again, the heart pay workload will increase. You know, the veins will also do the vasoconstriction. The arteries will also do the vasoconstriction. So again, the workload will increase. So two bad things are also there. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? So one thing, so whenever the compensatory mechanism is doing three things, total three things, one good and two bad. You can see the good one is in the red and the two bad ones are in the blue. Total three things, the compensation. So whenever the left ventricle stop pumping, three things happen. One good and two bad. And this is known as compensation. Hana. So God ne to achha karna chaha, lekin galti se bura ho gaya. So one thing is good. What is good? Pehle good bata do. What is good? The good thing is that it is increasing the contractility. That is good. We want that because the heart is failing. We want to increase the contractility via beta 1 receptors present on the heart, on the left ventricle cardiomyocytes. We want that. But two bad things are happening. So beta 1 receptors on the kidney got stimulated and it secrete ranin. Hana, ranin will secrete the aldosterone from the adrenaline and it will cause sodium water retention. Because of the sodium water retention, it will increase the workload on the heart. It will increase the workload on a failing heart. And second thing, the on the blood vessels, the alpha receptors also get stimulated. Alpha receptors will cause vasoconstriction of the arteries as well as vein. It will increase the preload, afterload. Again, the workload on the heart will increase. Since the workload on a failing heart will increase, you know, the left ventricular hypertrophy will occur. The muscle will increase in thickness as the adaptation. Have you read adaptations in pathology? Hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, metaplasia, dysplasia. So left ventricle wall will become thickened, thickened, thickened to compensate. And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. That is, that is the most important cause of morbidity and mortality in heart failure, congestive heart failure. That is left ventricular hypertrophy. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? So whenever, listen, I'm telling you the summary. I'm telling you the summary. Everyone on the screen. It's a difficult chapter. I'm trying my best to give you the concept. I know I can also try to give you the classification and just finish the chapter. But I want to give you the concept. Listen, this is the left ventricle. I'm teaching you a disease known as heart failure. I know. So what is happening? Say ma'am, heart is failing means left ventricle is not pumping. Now imagine this is a person whose left ventricle is not pumping. So blood is not coming in the aorta and all the organs are not receiving the blood. 
they are receiving less blood or not blood because left ventricle is not pumping. Oh my God, it's an emergency. So sympathetic stimulation will take place. Sympathetic stimulation will take place. It's an emergency condition. Noradrenaline will come in the blood quickly within fraction of second. Noradrenaline. It will go on, on three organ. Noradrenaline. It will go on the heart only. Hana? On the heart, you can see the left ventricle wall have green color cell. These are known as cardiomyocytes. I will draw again. These are cardiomyocytes. On these cells, the beta-1 receptors are present. It will increase the contractility and the failing heart, which was not pumping, it started contracting again. It's very good. Hana, composition is working. So, noradrenaline is doing a good thing. So, first thing is good. Hana, but noradrenaline will go at two other organs also, apart from heart. There, it will do the harmful effects. Hana. So, noradrenaline, which is coming in the blood as a sympathetic stimulation in emergency, in emergency, it will go at three organs. Number one, heart. Number two, it will go on the adrenal of the over the kidney and number three blood vessels so in the heart it will increase the contractility that is a good thing that is known as inotropic effect and uh, that can sustain the failing heart for a little longer for a little bit longer but over the adrenal and over the blood vessels it is doing two harmful effects the same noradrenaline over the adrenal it is secreting renin renin will secrete aldosterone aldosterone will cause sodium and water retention sodium water retention in the body means it will increase the workload over the heart and here it will cause vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction means again it will increase the workload over the heart. So the heart is failing. Left ventricle is unable to pump. There is 5 liter of blood in my body. Heart is not pump. The 5 liter of blood heart is unable to pump because the left ventricle is weak. It cannot pump. And you are increasing the fluid to 6 liter, 7 liter. Oh my god. It's not able to pump 5 liter. You are increasing the workload. So here we are doing sodium water retention and increasing the workload of a failing heart. So it will increase the heart failure. So one thing is good, two things are bad. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? If you got it, hmm? if you got this now, now you can understand the drugs. Hannah, let me explain you the drugs for heart failure. If you understand, listen, everyone here. Now, here, one thing is good now, but I told you the contractility is increased only for little longer. The heart is the heart contractility is increased because of noradrenaline beta 1 stimulation. It is little. So we can give inotropic drugs. Inotropic drugs that increases the contractility of heart. And until we give the inotropic drugs, the contractility will be more. So here, that is the first drug. So first drug is inotropic. Remaining all drugs are for two harmful effects. And remaining all drugs. Only one drug, inotropic drug we are giving here to increase the contractility. Remaining all drugs are to oppose the compensation. And which is harmful, two, two harmful compensations are there. So alpha stimulation is causing the vasoconstriction. Now we give alpha blocker. Okay, and beta stimulation is causing the renin secretion. We give beta blocker. So we give alpha blocker and beta blocker. Alpha and beta blocker. Hannah, for arteries are contracting, we can give arterial vasodilator. Veins are contracting, we want to give vein, vein ka vasodilator. And we want to give both, both dilator. So arterial dilator, venodilator and both dilator. Hannah, so that is vasodilators. We want to give vasodilators. Okay, renin is increased. Hannah, we do not want to increase it. We will give ACE inhibitor and ARBs. ACE inhibitors and ARBs, just now we have seen, they inhibit the renin. Hana. So we will give the ACE inhibitors and ARBs, that is the drug which oppose RAS. Okay. Aldosterone is increased. We will give aldosterone antagonism. We have seen in the diuretics. Aldosterone antagonism. Hana. We can see, give the diuretic. And sodium water retention is there. We can give the diuretics. Hana. Because heart is not able to uh, pump 5 liter. And here the blood is 6 liter or 7 liter. So we want to uh, excrete the extra fluid. So we want to give the diuretics. Now you can understand the classification. <laughs> now if you don't know about the compensation, now if I don't tell you, just suppose, Hannah, for example, you don't know about this all situation, that compensation is taking place. And you are imagining, ma'am, only one thing is taking place, heart failure. Heart failure means heart is not pumping. Heart is not pumping. That is heart failure. Heart is not. So you can understand, ma'am, why we are giving inotropic drugs to increase the contractility. But if you don't know the compensation, how you can understand this all? To understand the mechanism of this all, you have to understand the compensation. So the remaining all drugs is to oppose the harmful compensation on the body. Hana, only one drug is increasing the contractility. Rest all the drugs are not increasing the contractility. Heart failure is a disease in which the left ventricle is not pumping. So obviously I want to increase the contractility because left ventricle is not pumping. I want to increase the contractility. So I am giving the inotropic drugs. Obviously, I can understand the mechanism and I can correlate. But why I am giving diuretics? Huh? Why I am giving alpha blocker, beta blocker, aldosterone antagonist, diuretic, vasodilator, arteriodilator, venodilator and RAS inhibitor. Why I am giving all this? Huh? In a failing heart, why? If you don't know about the composition, you cannot correlate. Now you all can correlate people. Say yes. Say yes. So this is the heart failure drug. 
among them the most important is the inotropic and of course we will give and we will give other drugs also to inhibit the compensation to inhibit the harmful compensation i mean this is all harmful compensation i do not want it because this all is increasing the workload on the heart people respond if you got it say yes if you didn't got it write down me to repeat Anna, how I will know whether you got it or you. You can see me. You can see my expression. You can hear me. Neither I can see you nor I can hear you. What I can see is your chat. So kindly write down. Whatever is that, you write down. You got it? Can we go ahead? Okay, G. So this is the classification. So how many drugs we give? See, how many drugs we give to treat heart failure? So now no need to learn the classification. You can understand the mechanism of each and every drug. Why it is useful in heart failure. So tell me the classification quickly. Say ma'am, inotropic drugs we give to increase the contractility. We give alpha blocker so that the alpha receptors on the blood vessels are blocked. We give arteriodilator, venodilator and both dilator that is vasodilator. Hana, we give beta blocker to block the beta 1 receptor on the kidney Hana, to inhibit the renin secretion. We give RAS inhibitor to inhibit the renin, ACE inhibitor and ARBs. We give aldosterone antagonist to inhibit the aldosterone. We give diuretics because it is sodium water retention so this is all classification okay among them the most important one is inotropic drugs so i will teach you inotropic inotropic drugs are three types i know there are three type of inotropic drugs cardiac glycosides i know let me erase it cardiac glycosides sympathomimetics and uh, phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor cardiac glycosides sympathomimetics and phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors so i will teach you inotropic drugs because diuretics i have already taught you i know there is nothing separate to teach it but how you can correlate why we are and now if you remember diuretics ke, uh, uses ka pneumonia kya tha, i taught you two diuretics today only if you are attending my lecture from the beginning hai na? you may be knowing i taught you furosemide what was the pneumonia of furosemide i told you h e a m t t hemat and what was the mnemonic of uh, uh, thiazide h e a r d in both of them a i make heart if you remember now you can correlate this is how the diuretics is useful in heart failure and i have told you there also now you double correlate so this is how i've already told you this um, renin angiotensinogen system i told you the users hana home care makes patient definitely strong so care ka see kya congestive heart failure now you can double correlate that we are using renin angiotensinogen system there hana so this is how you can correlate people hana beta blocker we will see in ans so here i'm teaching you only one drug that is inotropic us may be a drug cardiac glycoside so i want to teach you cardiac glycoside in detail rest all the drugs are covered here and there say yes Say yes if you got it. Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead, people? Huh? So let's start cardiac glycosides. Tell me the drugs, mechanism of action, uses, adverse effect, contraindication. My headings are fixed. In entire pharmacology, the master charts. I call them master charts. Revise entire chapters in not more than five minutes. If you make this master charts, I'm having 20 with me. I just revise them and my entire pharmacology is get revised just in one or two hours. That's it. Each and everything. And all the MCQs are from those master charts. I call them parre. And the master charts, the 20 tables. That's it. The entire mass, my pharmacology is compacted. I must say 90% of the pharmacology is compacted like that. Okay. This is a way you should study. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and let me tell you the cardiac glycoside. In the cardiac glycoside, we are having two drugs. We are having digoxin and digitoxin. Together, these are known as digitalis. So if I use the word digitalis, I mean both. I mean both digoxin and digitoxin. Anna, so there is difference in their pharmacokinetics, but they are together known as digitalis. The mechanism of action of both of them is same. So let's study digitalis. Anna, so here I'm telling you the mechanism of action of digitalis. So tell me the organ on which it attacks. It's an inotropic drug. It increases the heart contractility. So of course it will act on the heart. So this is a heart. So where does it act? Can you see the yellow color cells I have drawn for you? Let me highlight. I'm talking about this cell. On the next page, I will zoom this cell. So first, you should have an imagination what cell ma'am is showing to us. So I will show you this cell directly. Use maybe cons of which cell is there in our body. So this is a heart cell. This is a cell of the left ventricle wall. So can you see the here, the yellow cells I'm drawing, this green color cells. So this cell I have drawn on the next page. So imagine this cell is this one. You can see in the left ventricle. You can see the left ventricle. You can see the wall of the left ventricle. Now let me zoom one of the cells. Let me zoom one of the cells. So this is a zoom version of the cell. Okay. Now what I'm teaching you, say ma'am, you are teaching us inotropic drugs. Inotropic drugs. What is inotropic? I'm teaching you digitalis. Digitalis include digoxin, digitoxin both. Digitalis I'm teaching you. One of the most important inotropic drug that is cardiac glycoside. Cardiac glycoside or digitalis, digito digoxin, digitoxin, everything is same. Okay. So it increases the contractility. So you say ma'am, how does normal heart do systole and diastole? What is systole and what is diastole? Huh? Left ventricle do systoles means it contract. Left ventricle do diastoles means it's relaxed. 
So what does the inotropic drug will do? It will increase systole or diastole. It is increasing the contractility. So of course it increases systole, not diastole. So if you want to understand the mechanism of action of inotropic drug people, you should understand how does normal systole and diastole take place physiology. Hmm? If you understand the physiology, you can easily understand the pharmacology here. Let me correlate. Huh, no? Let me first and then one minute, let me teach you how does systole diastole normally takes place. And then let me tell you how does digitalis increase the systole, not diastole. In this way, it is inotropic. It is increasing the contractility. I mean, it is increasing the systole, not the diastole. It is prolonging the systole. So let me tell you how does normal systole and diastole take place. Again, see this cell. Which cell is this? The heart cell, the left ventricle wall cell. Can you see the green cells here? I have, I have drawn the green cells. This is one of the cells. Hana. Now this cell is present in the heart, in the wall of the left ventricle. Hana. Now how does systole take place? On the cell membrane. Now you all can see this is the cell membrane. On the cell membrane you can see the various transporters are there. Okay, on the cell membrane various transporters are there. The first transporter is the calcium channel. Anna, the first transporter here, I am talking about the calcium channel. From the calcium channel, a little bit calcium, let's say 1%. For an example, a little bit calcium enters at the time of the systole. 1% calcium is entering from the calcium channel. Okay, you will say, Mama, a little bit calcium is entering inside. Okay, and going in the cytoplasm of this cell. Anna, so this calcium will go in the endoplasmic reticulum of the cell. Endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic reticulum or endoplasmic reticulum one and the same thing. Hana. Little bit calcium will go and on this there is another receptor which is known as Renault receptor RYR. It is known as RYR, Renault calcium channel, RYR receptor. It will stimulate it. It will stimulate this receptor. Hana. Once this is stimulated inside which abundant of calcium is present. So all the calcium will also come out. So 99 calcium will come from here. So total 100% calcium in the cytoplasm. 1% is coming from outside, 99 coming from the endoplasmic reticulum. First 1% come from outside from the calcium channel. Please understand it's difficult. I will try my best and I will tell only once. Listen, so first the little bit of calcium is coming from outside in the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm have zero calcium. The cytoplasm of the cell have zero calcium. Hannah, first little bit 1% is coming from outside. That 1% is triggering, triggering the Renault receptor present on the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Once the Renault receptor gets stimulated, the remaining 99% calcium will come out and total 100% will occur in the cytoplasm. So in the cytoplasm suddenly calcium calcium transiently increases Anna? transiently calcium increases too much okay this increased calcium will cause troponin uh, it will remove the trope uh, it will cause the you know what do you say uh, this uh, actin myosin actin myosin contractility okay it will bind with the troponin and it will cause actin myosin contractility and the cell will contract the cell will contract that is systole. This is how systole takes place. So tell me systole ka mechanism. Say ma'am, little bit calcium coming from outside via calcium channel. Okay, 1%. After that, it is stimulating the RYR receptor. Hai na? On the endoplasmic reticulum of the cell. Then remaining abundant of calcium will come and the maximum 100% calcium will go into the trop uh, tropomyosin. It will activating the actin myosin and it is causing the contraction of the cell. This is how systole takes place. Say yes. Now systole is done. How does diastole take place after that? So after the systole is over, once the systole is done, hai na? for a particular period, there is a systole. After that, what is happening now? This on the endoplasmic reticulum, sarcoplasmic reticulum, one receptor was RYR from which calcium was coming. 99% calcium was coming. Hai na? There is one more receptor that is known as sarca. That is known as sarca. The full form of sarca is sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATP. Sarca. It is known as sarca. Sarca will get activated and it will take the calcium again back. Whatever given is taken back. Whatever fraction is given. So if I say 99% is given, so 99% is taken back. So whatever given by RYR is taken back by the Sarka. Sarka ne utta vapis de liya. Usne bula jitna RYR ne diya hamara humko vapis de do. Hana? So Sarka has taken back. So only 1% is left now. Hana? Which was coming through the voltage calcium. Now this 1% also wants to go outside so that the diastole will occur. When the calcium is present, systole will occur. When calcium is absent, diastole will occur. Because calcium causes the contractility. Actin myosin contractility. Hana? Now this 1% wants to go outside. So it will go to a transporter present on the cell membrane. This transporter is known as sodium calcium exchange. Sodium calcium exchanger. Hana? It will request this transporter. Can you please take me out? My job is done. I have done the contraction. I want to go out. So this transporter say, okay, you go out. Instead of you, I will take the sodium because I am sodium calcium exchanger. You go out, I will take the sodium. Sodium will come inside. And what happens to that sodium? Once the sodium come inside, there is one more transporter. The name of transporter is sodium potassium exchanger, sodium potassium ATPs. Sodium will go outside and potassium will come inside. So the diastole is done. How many of you got it? 
how many of you got it ha na this is how diastole occurs so this is how systole and diastole occurs normally so when the systole and diastole you have understood now i will tell you the mechanism of action of digitalis here listen normally first i am telling you normally a little bit of calcium 1% is coming from outside through calcium channel then it is going to rvir receptor on endoplasmic reticulum and it is stimulating so remaining 99% calcium is coming and that is causing the troponin c activation and that is causing actin myosin contraction so hard contract systole occur after the systole sarca gets stimulated sarca present on sar sar uh, sarcoplasmic uh, uh, reticulum and it will take back the calcium whatever given by rvir it is taken back by the sarca the 99% is gone now the 1% which is pending it is going to ncx sodium calcium exchanger it is doing it is taking the calcium out and taking the sodium in and sodium is going out via sodium potassium atp now tell me the mechanism of action of digitalis who will tell me the mechanism of action of digitalis digitalis block sodium potassium atp you will say ma'am what will happen if sodium potassium atp is gone how systole is increased let's do the cycle again can you help me let's do the same cycle again start from the beginning start now start from the beginning only one change is there this receptor is blocked sodium potassium atpase receptor is blocked it is transporter is blocked so again start from the beginning 1% of the calcium is entering via here ha na 1% a little bit calcium is entering from the calcium channel let's start the systole and it is going to rvir from the rvir it is triggering that ha na the remaining 99% is coming so calcium is causing the contraction systole is done now it's time to diastole it's time to diastole whatever given by rvir taken back by the sarca sarca is taking back now 1% is left wohi 1% khel karega the 1% is left normally this 1% go to ncx request ncx can i go out please ha na I, my job is done systole is done i want to go out ha na because there is no uh, job now i have i have done the systole now it's time to do the diastole i want to go out so normally ncx takes it out and instead of it it takes the sodium which goes out from sodium potassium atps and instead of it potassium is coming but now this is blocked so this will reject the offer and six will say no i cannot take you out because if i take you out i have to take the sodium inside but sodium potassium atp channel is blocked i cannot take you inside if i take you inside what i will do of the sodium i cannot take you inside so that 1% will be trapped inside the cell only and that will again go to renault rvir receptor again cause the systole so systole is exaggerated intense prolonged and this is the mechanism of action of inotropic drug i tried my best how many of you got it the mechanism of action of digital is ha na you cannot understand more easier than this how many of you got it people respond bolo yes no so others you got it what about others say people say ha huh? samajh mein aayi kya so what does the digital is do ha na if you got it very good if you didn't got it no that's also good learn one thing digital is block sodium potassium atp is transporter that's it on the cardiac myocytes in the left ventricle it blocks that if this is blocked no sodium will not go out ha na so intracellular sodium will rise so when the 1% calcium will request the sodium calcium exchanger can i go out this exchanger will reject the offer so that 1% will trap inside the cell only and again and again it will stimulate the sarcoplasmic reticulum again and again it causes the contraction it increases the contraction and it is the inotropic effect this is how ha na this is how the digital is acts okay this is how the digital is act ha na now how does the digital is enters now there is a problem listen this is digital is ha na digital is can block this receptor from the inside it cannot block from outside so it has to enter the cell or andar se aake it can block from the inner surface it can block it cannot block the outer surface so to come inside it compete with potassium ha na potassium and digital is both are coming both want to come inside ha na so if potassium is less ha na both and the, the whose concentration will be more that will come if potassium is more potassium will come digital is will is more digital is will come if potassium is less digital is will come more inside and it will contract the heart more ha na and it can cause arrhythmias in the heart so digital is toxicity can occur in hypokalemia so decrease potassium increases chances of toxicity and increase calcium also increases the chances of toxicity kyunki calcium to contractility karata hi hai digital is bhi contractility karata hai to calcium digital is both are causing contractility so decrease potassium and increase calcium both increases the chances of digital is toxicity because digital is a drug which is having very narrow uh, therapeutic index so we have to be very vigilant got it ha na so tell me the two two causes of digital is toxicity two risk factors decrease potassium and increase calcium i explain both they both can cause digital is toxicity users there are only two users number one congestive heart failure to increase the inotropic effect and in arrhythmias it decreases the heart rate it decreases the heart rate that's why use in um i'm sorry it increases the heart rate it increases the contractility and it increases the heart rate 
since it increases the contractility we can use in heart failure it increases the heart rate which we can use it in uh, i'm sorry yaar. it decreases the heart rate we can use in arrhythmia it causes bradycardia theek hai now it is the only drug which is used in arrhythmia and it can cause arrhythmia also it can cause arrhythmia yes it's a unique drug it is used in arrhythmia and it can cause arrhythmia also हाँ ना इट कैन कॉज अ रिदमिया द एडवर्स इफेक्ट आर ऑफ टू टाइप एक्स्ट्रा कार्डियक में इट कॉजेज नॉशिया वॉमिटिंग द मोस्ट कॉमन साइड इफेक्ट बिकॉज इट इट कैन क्रॉस बी 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 एंड इट कैन स्टिमुलेट द सी टी जेड सेंटर इन द ब्रेन एंड इट कैन कॉज नॉशिया वॉमिटिंग एंड इन द कार्डियक साइड इफेक्ट इट कैन कॉज रिदमी ठीक है सो देर इज अ निमोनिक फॉर द कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन वीक एच ई ए आर टी कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन वीक हार्ट दैट इज द कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर डिजिटलिस्ट सी फॉर कार्डाइटिस इफ द पेशेंट ऑलरेडी हैव माओ कार्डाइटिस डोंट गिव डिजिटलिस्ट I is increased calcium. V uh, W is W P W syndrome. है ना H is hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia because they increases the chances of toxicity. E for elderly. है ना elderly में the renal uh, excretion may be less and the patient may have toxicity. A for A B block. A B block है partial है तो it will convert into complete A B block because it causes bradycardia. I told you. है ना R is renal failure. And T is thyroid, hyper or hypothyroidism. It is contraindicated. So these are the contraindications. Can you tell me quickly? We are done. We are done with this chapter also. Cardiac glycosides. These two I am not teaching you. I will give you the master charts. But we are done with the cardiac glycosides. Say yes, people. How many drugs we have? We have only two drugs: digoxin and digitoxin. Both of them together known as digitalis. What is the mechanism of action? Can we fill it together? What is the mechanism of action? Say, ma'am, it block sodium potassium ATPase transporter present on the cardiac myocytes, and you know what will happen? It will increase the systole. Okay. What are the uses? Say, ma'am, two uses. Number one, it increases the contractility, and it decreases the heart rate. Since it increases the contractility, it can be used. in heart failure congestive heart failure it increases the contractility inotropic effect and it decreases the heart rate it can used in arrhythmias ha na adverse effect are also too important extra cardiac mein nausea and vomiting and cardiac mein arrhythmia so please mind arrhythmia it is used in arrhythmia it can cause arrhythmia and contraindication mein i have given you a mnemonic the mnemonic is um what is the mnemonic i have given you the mnemonic is contraindicated in weak h e a r t contra indicated in week h e a r t you get questions on that please learn that so this is how we can revise in one minute one drug one minute one drug one minute say yes if you got it so this is digital is the mechanism of action of digital is you frequently get pyq read and tell me the correct answer it inhibits sodium potassium atpase pump it inhibits sodium proton atpase pump it activate um, activated metabolites are produced in the liver or inhibit calcium concentration in the blood so what is the correct answer yes absolutely right shreya absolutely right everyone yes the correct answer here is a yes yes passam absolutely right everyone is right yes yes bridge desh Every, everyone is right yes yes the correct answer is it so we are done so last chapter of cardiovascular system so we are done with tvs also okay so the last chapter is anti hypertensive drug so last chapter the third chapter i am teaching you i already taught you the drugs acting on ras so i taught you ace inhibitors also i taught you arbs also after that i taught you cardiac glycoside the main drug here i taught you is digital is that is the drugs uh, which are uh, used in heart failure and now i am teaching you the drugs which are used in hypertension that is anti hypertensive drugs so complete cvs will be done from my side i mean the important code say yes so how many drugs we use in hypertension in hypertension we use five drugs out of which four are first line and the last one the top fifth one is the second line drug so what are the five drugs a b c d these are the first line drugs in hypertension plus vasodilators so these are the five drugs what is a b c d a for ace inhibitors and arbs ACE inhibitors and ARBs. I mean the drugs which inhibit RAS. Okay, ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Which is better? I told you ARBs are better because they do not cause cough. They do not cause angioedema. They do not cause itch. They do not cause taste disturbances because they do not inhibit the degradation of bradykinin. And they do not inhibit the degradation of bradykinin and substance. So ACE inhibitor, ARB, both are options here. A for ACE inhibitor and ARB. The drugs which inhibit RAS. B for beta blocker. C for calcium channel blocker. And D for diuretics. है ना बी फॉर डायरेटिक्स से यस है ना एंड बी फॉर वेसोडाइलेटर गॉट इट सो दीज आर द फाइव कैटेगरीज ऑफ द ड्रग वी आर हैविंग सो फर्स्ट इज एस इनहिबिटर्स यू कैन सी इट हियर है ना एस इनहिबिटर्स एंड एआरबीज है ना ड्रेनिन इनहिबिटर्स आल्सो यू कैन से सो द ड्रग्स व्हिच इनहिबिट रास द फर्स्ट ए बी इज बीटा ब्लॉकर 
you can see beta blockers the main we can use alpha blockers also but beta blockers are better c is calcium channel blockers you can see these all are calcium channel blockers d is diuretics the fourth one and the fifth b is vasodilator the classification cannot be compacted on one page that's why i have taken it on two pages you can see a b c d v now inside which please read the drug by yourself because if i read it it will take time hana and we have less time and we want to cover the complete pharmacology in the next few hours say yes hana so a b c d plus v okay a means ace inhibitors and arbs arbs hana you can say renin inhibitors also i mean the drugs which inhibit ros theek hai b means beta blocker beta blocker we can take alpha blockers also but better to take beta blocker C means calcium channel blocker, CCBs. D means diuretics. In the diuretics, I taught you two categories, na? Today only I taught you at the beginning, loop diuretics and thiazide. I told you for hypertension, thiazides are better. And for edema, the loop diuretics are better. So here, first choice diuretic will be thiazide. And V for vasodilators. How many of you got it? So please learn the classification, people. Now, classification, you all will learn. I know. Mechanism of action, most of them, you already know. Now, what is the rule? Hana, what is the rule? The rule says... That ABCD rule. What is the ABCD rule? You know what is ABCD. A for ACE inhibitor or ARB, B for beta blocker, CCB and diuretic. Always, if the patient is less than 50 years, 55 years, start with one drug, either A or B. And if the patient is old, more than 55 years, start with one of the drugs C or D. So always start with monotherapy. Hana, according to British Hypertension Society guideline, there is a four-step rule. There is a four-step rule. Step one, start with monotherapy. Either start with A or B or C or D. Who will decide? you will start with a or b or c or d depending on the comorbidities of the patient depending on the age of the patient depending on multiple factors depending on the affordability of the patient depending on many factors you will decide what is best for that patient you have four options a b c d you are doctor patient will come to you and patient will not say doctor mujhe bp ka bimari ho gaya i am hypertensive patient will say doctor i am having headache i am feeling um, dizziness or i am having headache hai na and it is not subsiding frequent headaches so if you measure the bp or it is an incidental finding sometime and you will say oh, my god you are hypertensive on one reading we cannot rely we have to measure it repeatedly at least three times if every time the blood pressure is elevated it is more than 120 by 80 and there is a fixed classification also so we will start the patient on the anti-hypertensive drug hana so we will start either with a or b or c or d so depending on multiple factors you will decide what is the best for that patient because for a b c d i am assuming you know the adverse effect of all Hana, you know. Now ask the patient about other comorbidities. Are you diabetic? Are you having any other problem? Do you have glau glaucoma? Or uh, do you have uh, uh, prostatic hypertension? Or do you have any other disease? Are you angina patient? Do you have MI? Any other comorbidity you have? So you should know which drug is not to be given in which disease. So you should know the contraindication. Pharma me ek rule hai. Kya dena hai ye pata ho na ho. Tumhe ye zarur pata hona chahiye kya nahi dena hai patient ko. So you are in the safe zone. Kya nahi dena hai ye pata na? To major blunder nahi maro ge in your practice. ठीक है और क्या देना है धीरे-धीरे सीख ही जाओगे got it so that is the rule seniors told us whenever we were doing our ambivalence got it so क्या नहीं देना है वो पहले पता होना चाहिए कि what are the contraindication first learn that after that learn the uses so always you should know the contraindication which drug has to be not given in which patient so never forget to ask the history of the patient and start with either A or B or C or D if the at the lowest dose है ना if the blood pressure is controlled it's good if it is not controlled increase the dose if it is still not controlled start with biotherapy start two drugs so out of A or B start one of them or out of C or D start one of them so you can choose one out of A or B and choose one out of C or D so you have various combinations start with the bi therapy double therapy if it is still not controlled start with the triple therapy start both C and D and uh, give A or B one of them along with C C to dena hi dena hai D to dena hi dena hai along with that you give A or B and if it is not controlled it's malignant hypertension start with all four therapy I know so this is the four step rule now what questions you get in your exam okay exam pe aate hai what questions you will get in your exam now? You will get particular comorbidity. Patient is having hypertension. Of course, that's why you will give antihypertensive. Of course, you are giving antihypertensive to any person. So, person is having hypertension. But along with the hypertension, person is having angina. So, what to prefer and what to not give? You should know the preferred drug and you should know the contraindication in an angina patient with hypertension. In a BPH patient, benign prosthetic hypertension. BPH or BHP, whatever. Benign prosthetic hypertension, male patient is there. Elderly male grandfather is there. Hana, having hypertension also and prostate enlargement. Very common finding. Hana, a grandfather age patient more than 80 years is coming to me. Having hypertension. Already a known case of BPH. Not operated. So which drug to be preferred? 
है ना एंड कॉन्ट्रेडिकेशन में कुछ नहीं है सो यू हैव टू लर्न दैट है ना देर इज अ रीजन फॉर ईच एंड एवरी आई विश इफ आई कुड हैव टाइम एंड आई कैन गिव यू द रीजन फॉर ईच एंड एवरी इफ देर इज अ डायबिटिक पेशेंट है ना नेवर गिव बीटा ब्लॉकर बिकॉज दे अगेन इंक्रीज द ग्लूकोज नेवर गिव डायबिटिक्स दे अगेन इंक्रीज द लिपिड प्रोफाइल एंड ग्लूकोज डायबिटिक्स में पढ़ा के आई हाइपर ग्लू जी फॉर ग्लू जी ग्लूकोज सो नेवर गिव डायबिटिक्स नेवर गिव बीटा ब्लॉकर टू अ पेशेंट विच इज डायबिटिक्स गिव ए और बी गिव ए और ए और सी never give b or d ha na so from a b c d what you are giving what you are not giving you have to learn that ha na in a patient with low renin hypertension in a patient with asthma in a patient with congestive heart failure in a patient with mi in a patient with thyrotoxicosis what to prepare what to be avoided i want you to learn this table ha na i wish if i could have time i can give you the explanation for each of them i wish but you know uh, sometime we will read the pharmacology in elaborate uh, manner currently you have the exam ahead now so you have less days for the exam so learn this table but whenever you have the time and i also have the time we can conduct the elaborative you know comprehensive course of the pharmacology on the youtube only so we will see the reason for each and every of them and we can give time i can give one hour to this table and i can explain you each and every why why this is preferred and this is not preferred but currently i suggest you to learn this table as it is okay so that at least mcqs you can do ha na now what next question you get ha huh? what next question you will get you get question on what drug to be avoided during pregnancy in a pregnant female if the hypertension occur what not to be given what to be given and what not to be given so what to be given first tell me what is safe during pregnancy and then tell me what is avoided during pregnancy tell me both tell me both so what is safe in pregnancy there is a mnemonic the mnemonic is better mother care during hypertensive pregnancy and now b for beta blocker you can safely give beta blocker to a pregnant lady which is hypertensive m for methyl dopa ha na you can easily give methyl dopa c for clonidine okay d for uh, dihydropyrimidine it is one of the ccp you can give among the ccps you give dihydropyridine only okay h for hydrolyzin it is a drug of choice start with hydrolyzin it is a drug of choice for hypertensive emergency in pregnancy okay someone is asking hypertensive emergency in pregnancy now okay and uh, uh, pregnancy p p is prazosin so please learn please learn the mnemonic better mother care during hypertensive pregnancy better mother care during hypertensive uh, during hypertensive pregnancy so say these are the safe drugs you can give beta blocker you can give methyl dopa and uh, you can give um, you can give d for what h for hydrolyzin that is a preferred drug in hypertensive emergency in pregnancy p for prazosin ana uh, c for ccbs which ccb uh, dihydropyridine d for dihydropyridine and ccb and c for clonidine so please learn this mnemonic and what not to be given remaining all our contraindication never give ac inhibitor no never give arvs no never give diuretics so a and d we cannot give b and c we can give we can give b we can give c a and d out of abcd we cannot give non selective beta blocker to kabhi nahi dena hai here we are giving selective cardio selective beta blocker non selective beta blocker bhi nahi dena hai and sodium nitroprusside we cannot give ha na this is sodium nitroprusside is the drug of choice in uh, emergency of hypertension hypertensive emergency i mean uh, in a non pregnant condition that is a drug of choice in pregnancy hypertensive emergency is dealt with hydrolyzin how many of you got it how many of you got it hypertension emergency and malignant hypertension is same you can see malignant hypertension the definition one blood pressure is more than uh, 200 upon 120 that is malignant hypertension and that is hypertension emergency only okay can we go ahead huh can we go ahead so we are done with this how many of you are satisfied till now we have done renal system completely we have done the cardiovascular system i have covered three important chapters in many drugs in cardiovascular system can i start the central nervous system with the same deal huh if you people are Are cooperating, we will cover all. Now, the central nervous system is a big system. Uh, autonomic nervous system is also very big. So these two will take one one hour, at least one one hour, ha na. And after that, these three are small, relatively small. I mean, ha na, not very big. So we will require half 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 hour at least on them also. So I'm, I'm I have to take the session for the next three or four hours ahead, ha na. So if you show the interest, we will continue with the same. Say yes. Can I continue? can i continue say yes people can i start central nervous system is it a compact just revision the crushing of pharmacology in the super simplified manner are you enjoying learning understanding the concepts and understanding how to learn and mug up pharmacology there is a particular way okay nobody tells you that particular way how to learn pharmacology okay okay very good thank you thank you so much so be interactive the only request be interactive during the session so that 
I also feel the same zeal and energy from inside. Anyways, coming on the next unit that is central nervous system. So in central nervous system also I will cover three important drugs or chapters or units. First I will cover the sedatives and hypnotics. Then I will co come on the anti-Parkinsonian drugs. And then I will come on the anti drugs. You frequently get 99% of the questions from central nervous system from these three units only. So let's start with sedatives and hypnotics. Can I start sedative and hypnotics? So what is sedative and hypnotic? Huh? For what disease we use the drug? For sleeping. Some people have um, insomnia. The name of the disease is insomnia. They have sleeping trouble. Insomnia. They can't sleep. They have problem in induction of the sleep. Hana? Or whenever they sleep, their sleep is interrupted multiple times during the night. They can't sleep very well. They do not have a refreshing sleep. So for them, we use the drug sedatives and hypnotics. Sedatives and hypnotics, we use them. So here two main categories are there. I'm having barbiturates. And I'm having benzodiazepines. Nowadays, we use benzodiazepine. Barbiturates, we don't use as a sedative now. But initially, we have because they are very dangerous. Hana, more than sedative, they are used for suicidal purpose. And they are very risky. Sometimes, anyone wants to do suicide in laymen, Hana, who are not doctors, they use sleeping pills to, to do the suicide. Because they have a, you know, some mentality like that. If we take one sleeping pill, we sleep. And if we take 100 together, we will die. <laughs> so for, for suicidal or homicidal purpose, they are very commonly used. Hana. So they are very dangerous drugs, barbiturates. That's why we don't use them as a sedative nowadays. We use them for anesthesia, basically, I will tell you. But benzodiazepines are the best drug. And nowadays, we have newer benzodiazepines also. I mean, non-benzodiazepines, the newer sedatives. So I will tell you here two main important categories. Okay. I will tell you two main important categories here, barbiturates and benzodiazepines. Okay. First, we will see barbiturates. Then we will see benzodiazepines. They both are sedatives and hypnotics. Okay. Benzodiazepines are better. As compared to barbiturates, I will tell you the reason also. So first, you have to learn the name of the drugs inside each category. Then you have to learn the mechanism of action. Very important. And now, uses and adverse effects. One by one, we will see. And now, this and this. So, this chapter will be done. After that, we will come on anti-Parkinson's drug and anti-epileptic drug. So, CNS will be done. And now, chalo, quickly, we will go. So, we will start with barbiturates. Let's start barbiturates. Tell me the drugs here. Tell me the drugs, name of drugs. So barbiturates, we divide them into three categories, long acting, short acting, ultra short acting. In the long acting, only one is their phenobarbiton. The name of the drug is phenobarbiton. In short acting, Hana, we have butobarbiton and pitobarbiton. Not very important. Hana. But in the ultra short, we have thiopanton and methohexiton. Okay, so you have to learn this one is important and this two are important. These are not important. So learn these are all about barbiturates. Huh? Now for understanding the mechanism of action, you can understand in our brain there are two neurotransmitters. I guess you have read this in physiology. In the brain there are two neurotransmitters. We have GABA, we have glutamate. GABA is inhibitory neurotransmitter and glutamate is excitatory neurotransmitter. Huh? So whenever, currently I am wake up, I am not sleeping. So inside me glutamate is functioning. I don't know about you. In you GABA is functioning or glutamate? Whenever we sleep, we want GABA. GABA is inhibiting the neurons. Neuro neurons stop firing and we can sleep quietly. But whenever we are awake, we are using our brain. Hana. So in us, the glutamate is activating. Hana. And it is uh, the neurons, it causes the neurons to fire. And we are awakened right now. So in you, what is active right now? Is it GABA or glutamate? In me, of course, it's glutamate, you can see. Hana. So glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter. And GABA is inhibitory neurotransmitter. See, people got it, learn the two neurotransmitter. So for sleeping, we require GABA. For sleeping, we require GABA. So you have to understand the GABA receptor. Let me tell you GABA receptor. In you also, glutamate is active. Very good. Chalo. So this is the GABA receptor. Can you see the GABA receptor? GABA receptor is a pentamer having five units. Two alpha, two beta and one gamma. Can you see? This is alpha, this is alpha. This is beta, this is beta. This is gamma. So it's a pentamer having five units. It's a receptor for GABA. Hana. So inside the GABA receptor, there is chloride channel. Inside the GABA receptor, there is a chloride channel. Let me tell you what is happening normally when I go to sleep today at 12, maybe 12 or 12.30 or 1 a.m. in the night today. After the class when I go to sleep. I know. So in my brain, the GABA will come. GABA will go to its GABA receptor. Can you see this is GABA? It is going and binding with its receptor, GABA receptor. When GABA will go, bind with the GABA receptor, the chloride channel will open. So chloride will go inside. Hana, chloride will go inside. See the arrow. When chloride will go inside, it will hyperpolarize the neuron. This is the membrane of the neuron. Can you see on the neuron, this is present. So my neurons will get hyperpolarized and there is inhibition of the neuron. Neurons stop firing so I can quietly sleep. So whenever I am sleeping inside my brain, whenever I am trying to sleep, I mean, I know. So 
inside my brain the GABA will come GABA will bind with the GABA receptor on the neurons it will open the chloride channel chloride will go inside it will hyperpolarize the membrane of the neuron neuron will stop firing it will be inhibited and we can quietly when all the neurons stop firing we can sleep quietly so this is how we people sleep say yes Hana. now the people who don't sleep we have to induce it Hana. insomnia me so let me tell you the mechanism of action of barbiturates there are three mechanisms of action of barbiturates let me explain there are three mechanisms of action of barbiturates can i explain you all three one by one so there are three mechanisms of action gaba facilitatory gaba mimetry and the third one is inhibit glutamate glutamate Hana, glutamate is excitatory either inhibit the glutamate or increase the gaba gaba is inhibitory Hana. we have two neurotransmitters gaba and glutamate Okay, GABA is inhibitory. Okay, and glutamate is excitatory. There is a person who is having insomnia. Person can't sleep. I want to give a drug to a person which can induce the sleep. So I have to give a drug which can increase GABA or which can decrease glutamate. So the person can sleep. Hana. So I am giving barbiturate. Barbiturate increases GABA by two methods. I will tell you the difference. And it inhibits glutamate. So this is a triple action of barbiturate. What is GABA facilitatory and GABA mimetic? Let me explain. Hana. Listen, this is barbiturate. Can you see here? This is barbiturate. Barbiturate is coming. Hana, just suppose I am taking a tablet of barbiturate. Hana, tablet is going inside me. It is absorbing. It is going in my blood. Via blood it is reaching my brain. Inside my brain on the neurons the same receptor for GABA. It binds with the same receptor on which the natural GABA bind. So it binds with the same receptor on which natural GABA bind. After binding what it is doing? It is increasing the affinity of this channel for the GABA. Hana, so initially if the GABA is binding. So chloride channel is opening for 1 millisecond. Now, after barbiturate, the same chloride channel is, in, is, is opening for 10 milliseconds. So, it is increasing the time of chloride channel opening. So, more chloride will go inside and the uh, neuron will be become hyperpolarized and the person can sleep. How many of you got it? So, basically, this is GABA facilitatory action. What do you mean by facilitatory? So, here, the barbiturate is increasing the action of natural GABA. It is not showing its own action. Barbiturate, dekho Hindi mein bolti hon, barbiturate chloride channel ko nahi khol ra. Jo gaba se khol hai, usi ko zyada ke liye khol hai. How many of you understand Hindi? Achha, how many of you don't understand Hindi? Huh? What the barbiturate is doing? Barbiturate is not opening chloride channel. In the next it will do. Hana, in the gaba by mimetic action. In the gaba mimetic action, it itself will open the chloride channel. Here it is not opening the chloride channel. It is increasing the duration of opening of chloride channel which is opened by the gaba. So basically it is augmenting the function of inherited gaba. जो गाबा काम कर रहा है उसी को बोल रहा हूं तू अच्छे से कर मैं बैठा हूं ना यू तू कर अच्छे से मैं भी आया हूं है ना तू कर पर मैं नहीं करूंगा पर मैं तुझे हौसला दूंगा कि तू कर सो दैट इज द थिंग आई कैन एक्सप्लेन यू इन हिंदी गॉट माय पॉइंट है ना सो बारबिचुरेट इज यू नो इट इज द काउंसलिंग गाबा दैट यू जस्ट इंक्रीज इट फॉर मोर टाइम इट इज नॉट इटसेल्फ इज इंक्रीजिंग दैट इज गाबा फैसिलिटेटरी एक्शन एंड व्हाट इज गाबा माइमेटिक एक्शन है ना सो बारबिचुरेट इज बाइंडिंग विद द रिसेप्टर एंड इटसेल्फ इट इज ओपनिंग द क्लोराइड चैनल आल्सो Itself, it is opening the chloride channel also. So basically, it is increasing the chloride channel duration via GABA also, and it itself is खुद भी open कर रहा है. पहले GABA को बोल रहा है कि तू कर, तू कर, मैं बैठा हूँ ना. उसके बाद वो खुद भी खोल रहा है कि चलो मैं भी खोल देता हूँ. So it is having double action: GABA facilitatory action and GABA mimetic action. In GABA facilitatory action, it is augmenting the function of inherited GABA, and in GABA mimetic action, it itself is opening the chloride channel without the use of GABA. So here GABA is required, here GABA is not required. है ना? And third action, it inhibits glutamate. Say yes, people respond. Huh? Please respond now. Thoda bolo. I will I will complete everything, Gagan, but keep on saying, interacting, and responding. So this is the triple action of barbiturate. Use. We don't use it because you know, because uh, uh, in this action it requires GABA. Okay, it requires GABA. It's a good thing it requires GABA. But in this action, without GABA also, it can induce the sleep. So it's very risky. It's very risky. It is used as a suicidal pill and it can cause the death. Hana? So we don't use them as a sedative. Phenobarbiton we use in epilepsy and thiopenton we use in anesthesia. So we use in epilepsy and anesthesia. We don't use as a sleeping pill. No. Because you anesthesia they know. As a short anesthesia we can use. In epilepsy we use. But we don't use it as a sedative. Because it is very risky. And it can cause a death in the person. If taken the overdose. And overdose taking is very common. And in depression people do so. Okay. Adverse effect. It causes hangover the next day. So in the night people will sleep taking barbiturate but the next day also sleepy 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 hangover the next day it's very common so it's not a good thing 
as a refreshing sleep we sleep in the night but when you wake up in the morning it should be refreshing it is not hangover of the night so here hangover is common drowsiness is common sleep is very disturbed on withdrawal hai na paradoxical excitement occurs sometime respiratory depression can occur hai na in the brain the respiratory center can depress so patient can have respiratory depression that's why an overdose the patient can die hai na drug automatism it's very unique thing hai na patient have amnesia you know amnesia temporary loss of memory just suppose i am the person i'm having insomnia i can't sleep i can't sleep so you are a doctor you said ma'am why don't you take barbiturate i have taken a barbiturate hai na i have taken a barbiturate after taking the pill at 10 o'clock i have taken my memory is lost temporary loss of memory short term memory loss gazni hai na short term memory loss ho jayega theek hai so my temporary after taking the tablet i forget and i take the pill again and again and again because i forgot i have taken the pill so that is drug automatism because of amnesia patient get confused and he takes the repeated doses without remembering he already taken the dose so you know overdose can occur and patient can die because of respiratory depression people it's very risky we cannot afford that say yes if you got it samajh gaya yeah drug autism it's a unique thing so after taking the tablet patient have temporary memory loss that is amnesia and patient don't remember he has taken the pill he forgot whether i have taken i have not taken and he used to take the repeated doses okay and uh, tolerance develops very soon okay it increases vitamin d metabolism so a uh, vitamin d is non functional patient can have osteomalacia ha na calcium is not there bones become weak and vitamin k metabolism is also interrupted so patient can have bleeding so these are the side effects of barbiturates drowsiness sleep disturbance paradoxical excitement the most important is respiratory depression patient can die drug autism vitamin d and vitamin k theek hai so these are the side effects we cannot afford that so let me tell you a better version the better version is the benzodiazepine benzodiazepines how many drugs we have we have many drugs here some we use as a hypnotic ha na hypnotic is for sleeping ha na it is used as insomnia some used as anti anxiety before going to your exam you have anxiety na no, ma'am i have tremors i have anxiety i can't sleep the night before exam so every time we give you a suggestion that before exam you should have a good sleep and the only night you can't sleep is the night before exam so many students ask me the query ha na no, ma'am i can't sleep the night before the exam so what should i do so i suggest them to take one of the, this tablet a low dose a low dose alprazolam 0.25 ka bhi aadha ha na you can take so you will have a good sleep and anxiety will also reduce anti anxiety and anti convulsants some of them are used so you can see dal dipam is the ev everything it is used as insomnia also anti anxiety also anti convulsant you can use this classification i mean learn by yourself so this is benzodiazepin ha na so what does they do ha na they do only one thing gaba facilitatory action they don't do gaba mimetic action there we have double action gaba facilitatory and gaba mimetic here we have only facilitatory the same action so here you can see where is diazepam this is diazepam diazepam is coming binding with the receptor it do not open calcium chloride channel by itself no 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 ha na uh, the the barbiturates were doing so they do not open they just increases augment the action of gaba so they always require gaba for their action how many of you got it how many of you got it so i taught you two drugs right now the mechanism of action i am comparing i taught you barbiturate and now i am teaching you benzodiazepine ha na so here i taught you it is having gaba facilitatory action as well as gaba mimetic action and here i am telling you only gaba facilitatory no gaba mimetic that is the main question you get from here so gaba facilitatory means it augments the activity of intrinsic gaba it do not open the chloride chloride channel by itself whatever gaba is opening that lifetime is only increased if gaba is opening the chloride channel for 1 millisecond if this is present it will open for 10 millisecond so this is done here also it augments the activity of intrinsic gaba intrinsic endogenic gaba hai na but here gaba mimetic me it itself open the chloride channel this is absent here i mean to say here even in absence of gaba they work because of this section but here they will never work in absence of gaba for acting the gaba inherited gaba should present so these are safe these are safe these are unsafe how many of you got it i tried my best how many of you got it got it so here we have only gaba facilitated reaction so benzodiazepine have only facilitatory no mimetic barbiturates have facilitatory ha as well as mimetic how many of you got it people that's why benzodiazepines are safe because they always require gaba for their activity but barbiturates are not safe because even in absence of gaba they can show their activity samajh mein aaya kya ha na so what are the uses i already told you insomnia anxiety and epilepsy and pre anesthetic medications you can use so that was we are using only in uh, uh, epilepsy and in convulsions ha na uh, epilepsy and uh, anesthesia ha na here we are using for anxiety and insomnia also so see the difference okay
सी द डिफरेंस वी कैन यूज इट बिफोर द एंडोस्कोपी प्रोसीजर है ना वी कैन यूज इन मसल स्पास्ट वी कैन यूज इन टिटेनस बिकॉज इट इज मसल स्पास्ट वी कैन यूज इन अल्कोहल विड्रॉल ऑल्सो ठीक है एडवर्स इफेक्ट अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ टायर्डनेस द नेक्स्ट डे बट नॉट हैंग ओवर इट्स नॉट हैंग ओवर है ना सो मिलसेंस इज देयर बट अ लिटिल बिट वेरी माइन्यूट है ना अटैक्स दिया समटाइम हेड डैक वर्टाइगो एंड डिजीनेस इज देयर है ना प्रोलॉन्ग इफेक्ट्स एंड हैंग ओवर इज देयर बट नॉट वेरी कॉमन टॉलरेंस डिपेंडेंसी सो दैट इज अ थिंग एडवांटेजेस दीस आर बेटर वन दे हैव अ हाई थेरेपेटिक इंडेक्स है ना इफ द पेशेंट टेक 10 टैबलेट्स ऑफ बारबिट्यूरेट देयर आर हाई चांसेस द पेशेंट विल डाई बट इफ द पेशेंट टेक्स 10 टैबलेट्स ऑफ बेंजोडाइजेपिन देयर आर लेस चांसेस द पेशेंट विल डाई बिकॉज़ थेरेपेटिक इंडेक्स इज मोर सो दीस आर रिलेटिवली सेफ बिकॉज़ पेशेंट यूज इट फॉर सुसाइड पर्पस स्लीपिंग पिल्स हैं ये भी स्लीपिंग पिल्स हैं ये भी स्लीपिंग पिल्स हैं ये ले लिया तो पक्का मरेगा ये ले लिया तो चांस है बच सकता है है ना एंड वी हैव एन एंटीडोट फॉर दिस we have antidote the name of the antidote is flumazanil here we don't have antidote ha na imagine ha na i am uh, there uh, in the emergency duty and there is a stretcher there is a teenage boy 15 year old boy the parents are carrying the boy on the stretcher uh, doctor please save our son so i said what happened to him he tried suicidal attempt so how he had tried suicidal attempt he has taken sleeping pills so the first thing i will ask with sleeping pills tell me the empty strip show me the empty strip so if uh, they are showing barbiturate so i am worried I know I don't have antidote for that, but if they are showing it is one of the benzodiazepines, I will quickly give flumazanil. Flumazanil is available. That is the antidote. I know. So that is the advantage. We are having the antidote. I know. It is having lower abuse liability. It is safer. Respiratory depression be zada nahi hoga. Cardiovascular depression be zada nahi hoga. So this one is safer. So you can compare the barbiturate and benzodiazepine. In barbiturate we have mimetic plus facilitatory both action. Here we have only facilitatory, no mimetic action. I know. These are the here the curve is steep. That's why it is dangerous. and here the curve is flat so they are relatively safe hai na here addiction ka problem hai here addiction ka problem nahi hai amnesia ka problem dono mein hai yahan thoda zyada hai antidote here it is available here it is not available hmm how many of you got it how many of you got it say yes so can we revise we are done with this chapter we are done with this chapter read the question tell me the answer first diazepam x by which mechanism can you tell me the mechanism of diazepam mechanism of action of diazepam Huh? Is it GABA mimetic action? Huh? Or is it GABA facilitatory action? Or is it increasing the duration of sodium channel? Or is it excitation of the neuro CNS? Huh. What is diazepam? First, you tell me diazepam kya hai? Is it barbiturate or benzodiazepine? Where it is coming in the classification? It is benzodiazepine. It is not barbiturate. So, what is the mechanism of action of benzodiazepine? So, it is GABA facilitatory action, not mimetic. And if I change it with the drug phenobarbital or thiopentone, what is your answer in that case? in that case your answer will become a and c both i mean it is having mimetic also facilitatory also you will get one of the option that is both action so in that case the answer will be both so you get frequently question on that ha na can we revise it people we are done with one chapter is tarah se padhni hai pharmacology enjoying learning bolo ha huh? so learn the drugs here short acting intermediate acting long acting this is the classification we have only four drugs here in the benzodiazepine the classification how many of you how many of them are used as a hypnotic how many of you are uh, this is used as a uh, in convulsions and uh, it is used in anxiety so this type of classification is there learn the drugs on side mechanism of action write down one one thing so write down this one is used as a gaba facilitatory as well as gaba mimetic reaction and it inhibit glutamate also the third action and a glutamate inhibition here only gaba facilitatory no gaba mimetic no inhibition of glutamate so we have here only one function is common one mechanism of action the remaining two are additional here uses this one is used in epilepsy and anesthesia this one is used in insomnia it is used as an anti anxiety in anxiety we use we use in epilepsy also we use it pre anesthetic medication as a muscle spasm as tetanus we use adverse effect here there are many respiratory depression cardiovascular depression here we don't have such depression here antidote is not available here flumazanil is available so you have to learn that okay read the next question i guess you all can tell me read the next question read the next question thank you so much brijesh thank you so much for your compliment okay so antidote for benzodiazepine overdose what is the antidote of course the antidote is flumazanil so all the drugs are fffff don't get confused the correct answer is flumazanil flumazanil pronounce it clearly zor se bolo flumazanil so that is the drug okay so can we go to the next chapter the next chapter is going to be rocking ha na anti parkinsonian drugs no one will teach you with such a simplicity anti parkinsonian drugs it's a difficult chapter but i will really make a cake walk for you believe me i will make a cake walk for you 
So what are anti-Parkinsonian drugs? Of course, these are the drugs which are used in Parkinsonism. So if you want to understand anti-Parkinsonian drugs, you cannot understand it if you don't know what is Parkinsonism. So before starting a chapter, people, before starting a chapter, you should understand the pathology of that disease in which that particular drug is used, that particular classification or drug uh, category is used. So I'm teaching you anti-Parkinsonian drugs. You should understand, ma'am, Parkinsonism kya hota hai? What is the pathology in Parkinsonism that we have to treat with this? So first understand problem kya hai, then you can fix it. Na? If you don't know what is the problem, you don't know what is the problem, how you can fix it. I directly ask you, fix the problem, fix the problem, fix the problem. You say, ma'am, what is the problem? Tell me the problem, then I will fix it. So in the same way, first understand what is Parkinsonism. Then I will tell you anti-Parkinsonian drugs. So what is Parkinsonism? Parkinsonism is a disease of basal ganglion. Basal ganglion, in our brain, we have basal ganglion that control our activity. Hai na? It is a disorder in which, let me tell you, there are two types of uh, neurotransmitters inside the basal ganglion. In the brain, we have basal ganglion. Inside the basal ganglion, we have two neurotransmitters, dopamine and acetylcholine. Dopamine is having inhibitory activity and acetylcholine have facilitatory activity and there is a balance between the two. Normally, in my brain, in your brain, the person who don't have Parkinsonism, the both are equal. Dopamine and acetylcholine, they are equal. This is a normal person. Hana, what happens in Parkinsonism? In Parkinsonism, I'm sorry here, make it 50. So, dopamine is less. Acetylcholine is normal, dopamine is less. So here there is degeneration of the neurons which synthesize dopamine. Degeneration of the neurons in the basal ganglion. So this is the brain. This is the basal ganglion in the brain. Normally in the basal ganglion we have two types of neurons. Hana, cholinergic neurons, they synthesize acetylcholine. And dopaminergic neurons which synthesize dopamine. And there is a balance is required between the two. Hana, both of them are 100-100, there is a balance between the two. But in Parkinsonism these neurons are degenerated. So dopamine is less, acetylcholine is normal, so imbalance occur. Since dopaminergic neurons are inhibitory and they are lost, the disease is known as Parkinsonism. The disease, dopaminergic is inhibitory neurotransmitter. Normally there is a balance between the two. You can see dopamine and acetylcholine, they are equal. You can see in the balance, they are equal. Now you see dopamine is less and acetylcholine is more. The problem is not that acetylcholine is more. Acetylcholine is normal only. The problem is that dopamine become less because of degeneration of the neurons which synthesize dopamine. So those neurons are gone. Ha na? So in the brain, in the basal ganglion, only the neurons which form acetylcholine are present. Dopaminergic are present, but they are less in quantity. Okay. So without dopaminergic, the inhibitory influences are lost and excitatory become unapho. And that's why the person have tremors, the person have rigidity and increased muscle tone. The name of the disease is Parkinson's. Ha na? So here increased excitatory activity because the inhibitory activity is lost. So unopposed excitatory activity. That's why person have tremors. Can you see? The person have tremors. Excitatory activity is more. Acetylcholine is more that is causing the tremors because the un, it is unopposed by dopamine. Rigidity is more in the body. You can see rigidity. It's very rigid because it is excitatory. Inhibitory activity is gone. Huh, no? And hypokinesia is there. Say yes if you got it. So this is Parkinsonism. So you tell me if you want to treat Parkinsonism, what do you do? See ma'am, there are two ways. You want to make the balance again. No? Balance, balance is disturbed. Huh, no? I want to make the balance between the two. Dopamine and acetylcholine. So two ways. Either increase dopamine or decrease acetylcholine. So the problem is with the dopamine. So main treatment focus should be on increasing dopamine. If we can increase dopamine, again the balance will be there. But if we can't increase it, at least reduce acetylcholine, so again balance will be there. So dopamine become 50 and acetylcholine is still 100. This is 50 or this is still 100. So by giving treatment, my first purpose is to make it 100. If I can't make it 100, if suppose, I will make it 50. Then I will, I will try to make it 50. So again, there is a balance. So I'm having two type of main drugs. So this is the main theme of treatment. Either increase dopamine or reduce acetylcholine. How many of you got it, people? Samaj mein kitna ko aara hai? Maza aara hai, pharma aari hai samaj mein? This is how we have to study pharma. Understand the disease first. Hana, then study the pharmacology of that. And you will see the pharmacology is the super simplified subject. Out of the 19, I must say it is the simplest subject. Hana, sir, so beast pages hai meri paas, puri pharma mein. The master charts I call them. Majh sir, utna hi hai. Once I have understood everything, I am having the concept. Now reading the master charts give me the complete revision of entire pharmacology. Hana, I can give you those master charts. Hana, by, first you have to understand here. I cannot give it directly. By diya to kuch nahi samjega. Man, what is the full form of this mnemonic? What is the so first I have to explain it here, and then I can give you the master charts. Hana, in each chapter I am giving you the master charts likewise. So this is the treatment of Parkinsonism. So in Parkinsonism, in anti-Parkinsonian drugs, the drugs which treat Parkinsonism, anti Parkinsonian drugs, there are two types of drugs. The drugs which increase dopamine and the drugs which reduce, reduce acetylcholine. I want to make a balance again. Because here, 
the disease in the basal ganglion inside the brain in the basal ganglion the neurons which which synthesize dopamine are lost they are degenerated they are lost but the neuron which synthesize acetylcholine they are still present so acetylcholine is more dopamine is left so i want to increase dopamine or i want to reduce acetylcholine so that is the main two treatment ha na so main two treatment may reduce acetylcholine theek hai anticholinergics are there that we will see the next chapter in autonomic nervous system ans mein i will teach you anticholinergic drugs the next chapter is ans anyways i will teach you that ha na lekin the drugs which increase dopamine i want to teach you here ha na there are six drugs i will teach you all six people all six six category chhe ki chhe main padhaungi abhi right now in one master diagram in one master diagram these are the six drugs they all increase dopamine i am teaching you the drugs which increase dopamine there are drugs which reduce uh, acetylcholine but that we will see later on ha here i am not teaching you not important here the important drugs which increase dopamine but remember treatment me there are both treatment increase dopamine reduce acetylcholine these are the six drugs which increase dopamine ha na so you will see ma'am dopamine is less give dopamine na dopamine ka precursor de do the most important drug the dopamine precursor levodopa so i will teach you levodopa in detail and the remaining five a little bit little bit little bit so i will teach you levodopa in detail and the remaining five a little bit not in detail but a little bit i will tell you at least the mechanism of action of all of them and the drugs of all of them adverse effect you can learn by yourself dopamine i will teach you uh, levodopa i will teach you completely that is the prototype the most important drug in parkinsonism these all drugs increases dopamine how they increase dopamine by different mechanism i will tell you mechanism of action of all of them got it ha huh? so let's start let's start listen for understanding the mechanism of action of all six drug you have to understand this you will say ma'am you should ask me a question ma'am you are saying i want to increase dopamine in the brain in in a patient of parkinsonism the dopamine is gone the neurons which synthesize dopamine is gone so why don't you give dopamine directly a tablet of dopamine you give now the problem is that dopamine cannot cross bp i want to give dopamine dopamine is available also but dopamine cannot cross bp i cannot give intrathecal injection directly dopamine daily ha na i will give in the blood either injection or tablet so that it will go in the blood so from the blood how it reaches the brain if it it cannot cross bp i want a drug that can cross bp bp to cross karna padega i cannot directly inject in the brain na i will give by any route it will go in the blood i give intra venous subcutaneous oral bhai kisi bhi route se main de dun it will go in the blood but from the blood how it reaches in the brain if it cannot cross bbb dopamine cannot cross bbb that is the pity thing we are having but don't worry we are having a precursor of dopamine the name of the precursor is levodopa levodopa can cross bbb you will say ma'am the job is done it's okay you can't give dopamine give the precursor of dopamine now give levodopa so once i take the levodopa levodopa will cross the bbb and i want in the brain it should convert into the dopa ha na again there is a problem in that ha na what is the problem now what is the problem now say so, ma'am you are giving levodopa levodopa can cross bbb but in our blood two enzymes are present ha na one is gdc what is gdc let me tell you decarboxylate ha na this is the decarboxylate enzyme decarboxylase enzyme ddc decarboxylase enzyme ha na it is present in the blood 99% of the levodopa it convert in the dopamine in the blood only ha na as soon as i am taking a tablet levodopa is a tablet ha na imagine i am the patient and i am taking you are a doctor you have given me levodopa i am taking levodopa i am taking it ha na it is going inside 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 from my stomach intestine it got absorbed it goes in my blood i want the levodopa from my blood to go in my brain and in my brain it convert into dopamine ha na but unfortunately in my blood only there is an enzyme the culprit enzyme the name of the enzyme is ddc 99% of the levodopa get converted into the dopamine in the blood only you will some not cannot cross bbb it is a wastage of the tablet only 1% can cross only 1% can cross that is a wastage number 1 ha na only 1 to 2% will reach of the dose you are giving number 1 and dopamine is present in the blood i do not want dopamine in my blood i want dopamine in my brain i do not want dopamine in my blood because in the blood dopamine will go to the three organs number 1 it will go in my heart and cause arrhythmia in me number 2 it can go in the blood vessel and cause hypertension in me and number 3 it can go to the ctz ctz is not covered by bbb by the way it can go to the ctz and stimulate the ctz it cause vomiting in me so i can have three side effects of the dopa so it's a problem ho gayi ha na i am a patient i am having parkinsonism you are a doctor you said ma'am levodopa you are not a, suppose someone is not a good doctor and someone has given me levodopa no ma'am take levodopa you are a patient of parkinsonism levodopa is the drug you take it so i'm taking the levodopa tablet levodopa is going inside me getting absorbed reaching in my blood i want levodopa 
to go in my brain and get converted into dopamine. But before it goes in the brain, in the blood, there is an enzyme. The name of the enzyme is DDC. It converts 99% of levodopa which I have taken in the blood only into dopamine. And dopamine cannot cross BBB. It will remain in the blood only. So whatever I have taken, just suppose I have taken 100 milligram tablet, only 1% will reach in the brain. So that is a wastage. Hana, pahli baat, pahla problem. And second problem, the dopamine which is formed in the blood, the 99%, that will act on the three organ and causes three uh, side effects. It will act on my heart. I will have arrhythmia. It will act on my blood vessel causing vasoconstriction I will have hypertension and it will stimulate the CTC center I can have nausea and vomiting say yes so what is the solution of this problem what's the solution of this problem so same I never take levodopa alone always take levodopa Hana, always take levodopa with DDC inhibitor Hana, the carbidopa the carbidopa or benzazide the carbidopa or benzazide are the drug which inhibit DDC so always take a combination levodopa is not at all alone available combination aata hai nahi hai market mein. In the market, there is no brand in which levodopa is alone. Levodopa is always given with DDC inhibitor. This is the reason. Whose DDC inhibitor? Name them. Name them. Say, ma'am, carbidopa or benzazide. Take one of them, not both. Hana. So, if I'm taking the combination, so as soon as I take the tablet, which contain two things. My tablet contain two things. My tablet contain levodopa also and carbidopa also. So, it is going inside me. Hana. It is getting absorbed. So, as soon as it reaches the blood, the carbidopa and benzazide will inhibit the DDC. Now, DDC cannot split the dopa, levodopa into dopamine. So, all the 100% will go in the blood. Hana, and I don't have the side effects of the dopamine on my heart, blood vessel and CTZ. Say yes, people. Huh? 100% will go in the brain. It's 100%. There is one more enzyme in the blood. One more enzyme. COMT. It is not much. It converts a little bit of levodopa. Hana? Into OMD. Another metabolite. Another metabolite. Not dopamine, but another. So, I have to give COMT inhibitor also. The COMT inhibitor is tolkapan or anta kapan tolkapan or anta kapan the kapan sarvin so i have to give so ddc hamesha denai cumt is not very important cumt so you have to always give levodopa along with ddc inhibitor but sometimes we have to give along with the cumt inhibitor also this conversion is 99 percent this conversion is only one two percent if you don't give cumt inhibitor it's okay out of the hundred percent dose 99 percent will reach the brain only one two percent will not reach so that we can afford Hana? so we can give cumt inhibitor or we can not give also but you have to understand so first is uh, uh, dopamine precursor that is levodopa you have to give it with ddc inhibitor that is carbidopa or benzazide and you can use cumt inhibitor also that is tolkapan or antapan how many of you got it Kitno ko samaj mein now imagine this levodopa reaches the brain listen listen ddc is present there also and cumt <laughs> ddc is present there also people they could samjho what is the problem what is the problem hana i want this conversion do not take place here but I want this conversion to take place here. Hana, the same enzyme DDC is there. So you will say, ma'am, if you are giving DDC inhibitor, did the DDC at both places will get inhibited? No. I will say this is a peripheral DDC inhibitor. It will inhibit the DDC present in the blood. It will not inhibit the DDC present in the brain. In the brain, I want DDC. I want, I want levodopa to get the dopamine conversion in the brain. Brain mein dopamine chahiye na. I don't want levodopa. Levodopa is the precursor of dopamine. Mere brain mein kami dopamine ki hai. dopamine chahiye. I want this conversion to happen. So I want DDC of the brain. But I do not want the DDC of the peripheral blood. How many of you got it? So I will give a peripheral. And this is the this is the importance of the word peripheral. So I am saying peripheral DDC inhibitor. It is not central DDC inhibitor. It is a peripheral DDC inhibitor that is carbidopa and benzazide. People, there is a word. Hana peripheral. Wo important hai. Hana tum bolo peripheral. Theek hai. As a name, peripheral hai wo. Hana the peripheral DDC inhibitor is there. Okay, but not central DDC inhibitor. Okay, so that is the thing. That is the thing. So this is one of the drug. Apart from that, after going in the brain, once the dopamine is formed, mao. Mao B can act on the dopamine and convert into H vinyl mandelic acid. It is a metabolite. So we can give Mao inhibitors also. We can give. So I told you the mechanism of action of all the drugs. They are visible here. See all the green color in my this master. I call it master slide. On my master slide, see all green, 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 green. Can I highlight all the greens at one place? So this is the mechanism of action I taught you of all five categories. Let me highlight one by one. So first drug, the most important is the levodopa. The prototype drug. Anna, but I cannot give it alone. I have to give it with peripheral DDC inhibitors. That is carbidopa or benzazide. Okay. Sometimes I can give it COMT inhibitors. Anna, that is tolkapan or antkapan. Anna, here I want to inhibit both tol tolkapan. The central also, the peripheral also. But DDC, I want to inhibit only peripheral, not the central. Please understand. In the brain, there is one more enzyme that is Mao. So I want Mao inhibitor also. Mao B inhibitor. Anna, Mao B inhibitor is salicylin. Salicylin. So please see levodopa, carbidopa, benzazide, tolkapan, antkapan, and salicylin. 
So please see the mechanism of action of all these drugs along with the name of the drugs I told you. The five categories. How many of you got it? If you understand this master diagram, things are going to be super simple for you. Hana? So let me explain you one by one. Chalo, we have to see levodopa in detail. So let me start with the first category out of the six. The first, achha, last category bhi batai dhu, glutamate antagonist. Hana? So you are antagonizing the glutamate. You are not doing anything of the uh, dopamine. You are antagonizing the glutamate. Okay, so this category is also there. So let me tell you the first category, the most important levodopa. We have only one drug in this category, levodopa. Dopamine precursor is only one, levodopa. So let's start levodopa. Dopamine precursor, levodopa. Say yes. So the problem is that dopamine cannot cross BPB. No, no, no. So you have to give its precursor. The precursor levodopa can cross the BPB. That's why we are giving levodopa. But as soon as you will give it, it will get uh, get uh, metabolized by an enzyme DDC. Dopa decarboxylase DDC. Peripheral DDC. And 99% of it is gone. See, whatever 100% tablet you are giving. I am the patient and I am taking a tablet and a 100% tablet. Once it will go out of which 95% more than 95 I mean 99% it will metabolize by DDC and it will convert into dopamine. Dopamine will cause three harmful effects me. In my heart it can cause arrhythmia. In my blood vessel it cause hypertension. I am sorry not hypertension it will cause postural hypertension. It will cause vessel dilatation. And in CTZ it will cause nausea and vomiting. And only 10% I am sorry only 1 to 2% will cross, uh, cross the BBB and it will reach the brain. And in the, the brain, it will convert into dopamine and show the therapeutic effect. So only 1-2% to 2 is going. And if I am not giving DDC inhibitor, that's why we always give levodopa with carbidopa. We never give it alone. Hana, you got the reason. Because we want to increase the entry of levodopa. We want 100% should enter. Not only 1-2%. And in the periphery, we want to reduce the side effect of the dopamine. The three side effects. So this is the reason. So if you give the combination, levodopa plus carbidopa. Dono saath mein de rahe if you are giving the combination, levo plus carbi. So first carbidopa inhibit the peripheral conversion of DDC. So levodopa will remain as levodopa only. Hana? And it will not convert. It will not convert into dopamine. So levodopa will cross the BBB. Hana? Once it cross the BBB, in the brain, I want the DDC to act. So this was a peripheral inhibitor, not central inhibitor. Brain, central DDC is functioning and it converts the levodopa into dopamine. And dopamine, there is a balance. There was an imbalance between the dopaminergic and cholinergic neurons. Now no, there will be balance. So acetylcholine will become equal to dopamine. And there is smoothing of the movement. Parkinsonism is cured. I mean not cured but controlled you can say. Got it. So this is the thing. So adverse effect kya hai? At the initiation of the therapy, the same three adverse effect due to the excess of dopamine in the blood. If you don't give carbidopa, there are three side effects. On the heart, there is arrhythmia. On the blood vessel, there is vasodilatation causing hypotension. Hana, vasodilatation. And third, stimulation of CTZ causes nausea and vomiting. So these are the three side effects. Nausea and vomiting due to CTZ, hypotension due to vasodilatation and arrhythmias due to heart stimulation. These three can be controlled by uh, carbidopa. If you are giving levodopa with carbidopa, this will not happen. So these are the three side effects. But on prolonged therapy, now what is happening now? Listen, listen. Treating Parkinsonism is a difficult thing. Parkinson, Parkinson disease, it's difficult. Listen, listen, you are doctors now, listen. What is the problem? Say ma'am, normally dopamine is equal to acetylcholine in the brain, in my basal ganglion. This is the thing, this is normal. But in Parkinson's patient, the problem is that this is less. So unfortunately, this will become more. Anna? So this is less, this is the problem. So I want to increase this, Anna? so that again balance will occur. So for that, I'm giving the various drugs. I'm giving levodopa along with carvidopa, with salicylin, with antecapone, with tartelcapone. I'm giving various combinations. Okay, you will say, I'm, with this all combination, dopamine will increase again. But sometimes it increases excessively. So again, imbalance occur. Again, imbalance occur. Now later on, if you continue the therapy for many years, after many years, due to access of dopamine, the side effects will occur. Hana, no, there is no, no thing ki we can measure it every day. Ki aaj dopamine kitna hai, acetylcholine kitna hai. So if you continue therapy, continue therapy, after many years, what happened? The dopamine will access. And because of the access of dopamine, patient can have abnormal movement, which is known as dystonism. Hana, patient can have various abnormal movements, you can see. Hana, these all are abnormal movements. Hana, you can see the abnormal movements are there. That is known as dyskinesis. Now, this, this side effect cannot be reduced with carbidopa. Whether you are giving with carbidopa or without carbidopa, because this side effect is due to dopamine. And dopamine is going to be accessive after many years. Say yes, prolonged therapy. Hana, so now the problem is not this. Hana, the problem is not this. In Parkinsonism, this is the problem. Dopamine is less. Hana, acetylcholine become more. But now because of access therapy, dopamine become more. Acetylcholine become less and this is the first side effect. The second side effect is psychosis. Patient become mad like thing. Hana, psychosis is there. And third, fluctuation. You never know when the patient is on or off. 
so sometime when the dopamine is less patient presents with the symptoms of parkinsonism that is tremor rigidity and hypokinesia the three symptoms and sometime when the patient have access of dopamine access of dopamine patient have abnormal movements so some day patient presents like that some day patient so how to deal with that Anna, if you give treatment patient have abnormal movements if you don't give treatment patient have symptoms of parkinsonism so making a balance after a prolonged therapy is really a difficult thing how many of you got it people samaj aari hai kya baat huh? so this is the uh, at uh, um, uh, later on these are the three side effects abnormal movements hai na? psychosis and on off phenomenon that is very easily fluctuation is there some day the patient is on some day the patient is off on means patient is patient is showing the abnormal movements but not parkinsonism syndrome and off means patient is showing the parkinsonism symptoms not the abnormal movements so you can understand the disbalance samajh mein aaya not treating a parkinsonism patient is a real challenge after many years initially the response is good but after many years this happens ha na contraindication there are three contraindication of levodopa never give levodopa in ulcer because it increases the risk of the bleeding in the ulcer never give it in melanoma because you know levodopa is a precursor of melanin melanin bhi banta hai usse never give it in melanoma and never give it in glaucoma because it increases iot and now so these are the three contraindication ulcer peptic ulcer malignant melanoma and glaucoma you can make some mnemonic p m g or make some good mnemonic <laughs> anything is not clicking in my mind if you have something in your mind tell me p m g peptic ulcer malignant melanoma and glaucoma these are the three side effects of levodopa we are done people we are done chalo we are done with this chapter also quickly tell me the drugs only one drug levodopa mechanism of action what does it do so levodopa is a precursor of dopamine now so we never give it alone we always give it with a ddc inhibitor rather say peripheral ddb inhibitor why i'm insisting the word peripheral you know that so one of them is carbidopa or benzazide so we give them together and what they are doing how they are acting i told you adverse effect at the initiation of the therapy the adverse effect are different and later on the adverse effect are different so at the initiation of the therapy we have the adverse effects which can be controlled with carbidopa if you are not giving carbidopa then only they will occur i mean in the heart arrhythmias are there in the blood vessels vasodilatation is there and in the ctz the stimulation causing nausea vomiting but if you are giving carbidopa they can be subsided but later on we have the adverse effect due to excess of dopamine we have abnormal movements which are known as Uh, uh which are known as what the abnormal dyskinesia so abnormal movements are there which are known as dyskinesia or psychosis is there or fluctuating is there on off phenomenon how many of you got it and these cannot be uh, 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 this cannot be removed with on adding even on carbidopa contraindication i told you a mnemonic to learn pmg and now it is peptic ulcer melanoma and glaucoma Hanji, respond now, people. I am doing a real hard job for you, people. I know pharma, but I am teaching you. So show that you know, show that uh, happiness that you are getting it very easily. And I am remaining all. I told you the mechanism of action here. Okay, so read the question. We are done with this chapter. Read the question. Tell me the answer. In the treatment of Parkinsonism, carbidopa is used with levodopa. Why? Why we are using carbidopa? We you always give levodopa with carbidopa. Why? What is carbidopa? It increases the half life of levodopa by inhibiting its metabolism. Hmm? It inhibits levodopa excretion. It initiates peripheral. Uh, it inhibits peripheral uh, uh, dopa decarboxylase, or it inhibits central dopa decarboxylase. So of course, it in inhibits DDC dopa decarboxylase. But which one? Peripheral or central? Which one? Peripheral or central? I insisted. No. Yes, the correct answer is C. Absolutely right. Why only few people are responding? Everyone say the answer. We are done with this chapter. Can I come on the next chapter? The last chapter of CNS. After that, we will come on ANS. Can I come on the last chapter? The last chapter here is anti-epileptic drug. So let's start anti-epileptic drug. Anna, so these this is the classification of anti-epileptic drug. Epilepsy is scissors. Anna, epilepsy is scissors. Okay. So anti-epileptic drugs. uh this is the classification i'm not reading it you can read the classification is based on the composition of the drug the chemical formula so how many of them are barbiturates how many of them are hydantoin how many of them are succimide like that ha na so among them three are important that i want to tell you in detail panitoin of course the most important drug carbamazepin and valproate so i will select three the ultra important and this is the thing i'm going to teach you in uh, antipilpitic drugs so we will see panitoin carbamazepin and valproate in detail the again the same thing here we don't have drugs because we have one one drug only we don't have classification we have 
mechanism of action, adverse effect uses. My headings are always same in entire pharmacology. Okay, so let's start it. Let's start with the phanitoin. Can I start phanitoin? Huh? So phanitoin. So phanitoin is the antiepileptic drug without CNS depression. Rest all the antiepileptic drug have little bit of CNS depression. So but here there is no CNS depression. So you have to understand the mechanism of action. For understanding the mechanism of action of uh, antiepileptic drug, first understand epilepsy. You cannot understand antiepileptic drug if you don't know epilepsy kya hota hai. So first let me tell you seizures kaise aata. Hana, how does the seizures occur in the brain? Seizures is what? It is hyper excitation of a focus in the brain. So in our brain, any focal area, any focal area, if the neurons are firing too much, they are hyper excited. So patients have seizures or epilepsy. Hana, it is hyper excitation. So on the neurons, there is sodium channel. This is a sodium channel present on the neurons of the brain everywhere. Sodium channel is present. Sodium channel have sodium channel have three stages. Hana, first it is resting. When it gets the action potential, it gets activated. This is resting. You can see this one is resting. It is closed. It is closed. When it gets the action potential, it is activated. It is activated. It will open and you can see the sodium is going inside. The sodium is going inside. It is firing neuron. The neuron is firing. It is excited. It is excited. Hana. After that, Hana, it do not come on the resting directly. First, it go to an inactive state. This is known as inactive state. Here it is refractory. Listen my words. In this stage, it is refractory for the next action potential. It remains there for a few milliseconds. After that, again, it go to the resting. How many of you got it? So first, the neuron is there. You can see this is a neuron in the brain. On the neuron, this is a sodium channel. This is a sodium channel present. So initially, the sodium channel is resting. It is closed. It is closed. When the action potential will come, it will open and sodium will go inside. Hana. So it will become open. It is known as activated state activated so initially it is closed when the action potential is coming it is activated it will open for a fraction of milliseconds sodium will go 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 after that it become inactive inactive so there are three inactive is important we, we just miss it we think there are only two stages that is the resting and active rest no no there is a third stage also inactive you say what is inactive what is the difference between resting and inactive i repeat my question what is the difference between resting and inactive in resting the neuron respond to the action potential but in inactive neuron do not respond to action potential it becomes refractory for a millisecond to prepare for the next event and after that it again go to the resting it become again sensitive how many of you got it so this stage is there although it's open but it is refractory and sodium will not go inside although it's open so this stage is known as inactive Hana, got it say yes so this stage is known as inactive stage Hana. so normally the sodium channel get open Anna, when the general action potential is generated and after that it goes to inactivation for a fraction of milli millisecond in which there is it is refractory to the stimulus it won't take another stimulus another action potential during seizure neuron become depolarized and opening stage is more it is continuously firing 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 continuously open so continuously open means continuously firing 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 patient have seizures any focus not complete brain a focus a little focus any of the focus the sodium channel become hyper excited and it is opened and continuous firing continuous firing of action potential at higher frequency takes place it will lead to scissors now i am telling you the mechanism of action of phanitoin along with other other anti-epileptic drugs also and now what does they do they freeze Phanitoin frees the sodium channel in the stage, in inactive stage, not in resting stage. So it will freeze the sodium channel on the neuron in inactive stage so that it becomes refractory for the action potential, for the next action potential. So what does the phanitoin is doing? It is binding with the sodium channel in inactive stage and it is prolonging the duration. Normally inactive stage is for a millisecond, for a fraction of millisecond, but it is increasing the duration of that, that thing. Hana, instead of uh, one millisecond, maybe it is of 100 millisecond now, if phanitoin is binding with this. Hana. So it is prolonging the duration of the inactive stage. Sodium channel is not able to come in the resting stage very quickly. It will come, but very less after many minutes, many uh, seconds, I mean. Hana. So sodium channel is not able to come in the resting stage. So inactive stage make them refractory for the next stimulus. And the rate of recovery of the sodium channel is reduced and seizures are controlled. This is the mechanism of action. How many of you got it? Huh? Thank you so much for your compliment, Pradeep. Thank you so much. How many of you got it? So this is the mechanism of action. So not only phanitoin. Phanitoin acts by this mechanism. There are six antiepileptic drugs which act by this mechanism. Phanitoin, carbamazepine, valproate, lamotrigine, and uh, topiramate and zonisemite. These all act by this mechanism, the same mechanism, the same mechanism. It is freezing the sodium channel in inactive stage, not in resting stage, not in active stage, in inactive stage, 
freezing the sodium channel in inactive stage for a longer time before it again come to the resting stage. So the frequency of firing will reduce and the seizures will be controlled. So these six anti-epileptic drugs act by this mechanism. What is the mechanism of action? Say freezing of sodium channel in inactive stage so that it becomes refractory for the action potential. This is the mechanism of action. What are the adverse effects? Adverse effect is phanitoin only. Phanitoin ka adverse effect phanitoin. I know I'm having a mnemonic. So P stands for P450 interaction. You know, phanitoin is a drug which is interacting with the cytochrome P450 enzymes. H for hirsutism. Hirsutism is there. Hana. E, hirsutism especially in the females. Females will become like the males. Hana. Uh, the females can have uh, uh, hairs over the facial hairs and like that. Hirsutism. E, E for enlarged gums. Very important question. You get the image based question also on this. You will get this image and they will ask you, tell me the drug whose side effect is shown in the image. So it is gum hypertrophy. You can see the gums are hypertrophic. Very typical and unique side effect. So gum, G for E for enlarged gums you can say. Hana. N is for nystigmus. In the eyes, there is nystigmus. Y is yellow, yellow brown pigmentation of the skin. T is teratogenic. Never give phenytoin to a pregnant lady. The fetus will have phenytoin syndrome. Okay. O is osteomalacia. I is interference with B12 metabolism. That's why patients have megaloblastic anemia. And N is neuropathy. So, what is the mnemonic? Phenytoin. Say the full form. The most important is enlarged gum. Enlarged gum, you get the question. Most important. You can learn all, but the most important is the enlarged gum. Say yes. So this is the mnemonic. And use this. It is used in epilepsy, of course. It is used in tonic, uh, clonic and partial, both epilepsy. Tonic, clonic also, generalized also, partial also. But it is used in arrhythmias also. It is used in neuralgias also. And it is used in paroxysmal nightmares also. So three, apart from the epilepsy, three more uses are there of phanitoin. You can make a mnemonic if you wish. I don't have any mnemonic. So we are done with the phanitoin. Carbamazepine, valproate, not very important. You can see by yourself. Read the question. Read the question. I guess you can answer. Which of the following anti-epileptic drug can cause gum hypertrophy? Of course, you know the answer. It's phanitoin and you get an image-based question also. Frequently, you get the image-based questions. We are done with this. How many of you are learning, enjoying, understanding? Huh? So we are done with renal system, cardiovascular system, CNS system. Now the biggest system in pharmacology is autonomic nervous system. So what do you want? Shall I take autonomic nervous system first and then the remaining three? Or shall I take the remaining three first and then autonomic? Because the time required here is one and a half hour and time required the two, three combined is one and a half hour, two hours. Like that. Hana, these three are small, small one. So what do you want? Shall I take ANS first or followed by the remaining three? Or shall I take remaining three? I mean recipe, endocrine and blood followed by ANS. Whatever you say, I can do that. Huh? ANS. So most of the students want me to tell ANS first. Let's start ANS. No worries. So let's start ANS. So I teach ANS in a very unique, unique, unique way. The world's first unique way. On the globe, I must say. I know, no one will teach you ANS with this way. I know. You don't have to learn anything. Everything is conceptual in autonomic nervous system. It's a little bit lengthy. I know, but you, if, once you understand it, you will never, never, never forget it in your life. Okay. So I request you to share the link of this session with all your friends, with your batchmates, with your colleagues, anyone on this globe who want to understand pharmacology with simplicity. Please share it. It will be a big help for all of us, for me. And you know, it is on YouTube. It is free. So everyone should be benefited from this. So please share it with everyone whosoever want to understand pharmacology and who have this type of ascent on the globe the, the language i'm you know speaking so who, who can understand my ascent they can watch it and they can understand it very easily anyways so let's go ahead on the autonomic nervous system in the autonomic nervous system you cannot understand autonomic nervous system if you don't know what is autonomic nervous system <laughs> so central nervous system have two components we have brain and spinal cord can you see a brain and can you see a spinal cord this is central nervous system first let me tell you what is autonomic nervous system then i can explain you the drugs over here now please listen this chapter is difficult and really very interesting okay so there is brain you can see and there is spinal cord you can see okay from the brain cranial nerves come out and from the spinal cord spinal nerves come out so how many cranial nerves we have and how many spinal nerves we have so i guess everyone knows we have 12 pairs of cranial nerve and everyone knows that we have 31 pairs of spinal cord out of the 31 pairs 8 are cervical, 12 are thoracic, Hana, thoracic uh, 5 are lumbar, 5 are sacral and 1 is coccygeal. I guess everyone knows that. So this is the nerves. We are having the nerves. Now how many type of nerves we have? We have two types of nerves people, sensory and motor. So just suppose this is the organ. Okay. 
and this is also an organ okay what is the sensory nerve sensory nerve is a nerve that takes the signal from the organ towards the central nervous system that is taking the sensation towards the central nervous system motor nerve is a nerve that takes the signal from the central nervous system towards the organ Hana, this is a motor nerve i guess everyone knows this is a basic this is sensory this is motor you can see the arrow sensory is taking the signal from the organ to the central nervous system motor nerve is a nerve that is taking the signal from the central nervous system towards the organ now sensory nerves are also known as afferent nerve motor nerves are also known as efferent nerve i am interested in efferent nerve because my autonomic nervous system is created by the efferent nerve i am not interested in sensory nerve that is just for basic i taught you let me tell you the motor nerves now motor nerves are of two types let me highlight the motor nerves motor nerves are of two types what are the two type of motor nerves see these all are motor nerves in the diagram see let me draw the arrow now you can say yes ma'am these all are motor nerve they are carrying the signal from the central nervous system towards the organ so see the arrow here see the arrow here see the arrow here you say yes ma'am they all are motor but what is the difference between them difference is the organ see the organ they are supplying can you see the organ they are supplying say 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 huh? here if they are supplying to a voluntary muscle huh? so it is known as somatic nerve somatic system somatic and if they are supplying to an involuntary organ involuntary organ which is not now i can contract my bicep tricep deltoid these are my voluntary muscle i know these all are my voluntary with my wish i can contract relax them but i cannot stop my heart by my wish i cannot stop the lungs i cannot stop the peristalsis this is involuntary muscle which are known as visceral muscle which are known as smooth muscle so we have two type of muscle skeletal muscle which is voluntary and the smooth muscle which is present in our heart in our lungs in our intestine in our glands or whatever so that is involuntary Involuntary is the smooth muscle. Got it? So, skeletal muscle, the nerve which is supplying to the skeletal muscle, it is somatic system. And the nerve which is supplying to the smooth muscle or involuntary muscle, involuntary organ, Hana, it is autonomic nervous system. So, I hope you got it. What is autonomic nervous system? I am teaching you autonomic nervous system. So, let's start autonomic nervous system. Say, what is autonomic nervous system? I am not teaching you somatic nervous system. I am teaching you autonomic nervous system. Say yes. Got it? So, autonomic nervous system, now see the difference between somatic and autonomic. Hana, the below two are autonomic. Why they are two, I will tell you that also. Okay, by two, why, why two autonomic are there? I will tell you the difference. First, see, the above is somatic and below two are autom autonomic nervous system. Now, what is the biggest difference between them? Say, ma'am, I can see that in somatic, there is only one nerve. It is starting from the central nervous system, it is ending in the skeletal muscle. But in autonomic nervous system, there are two nerves. The one starting with the CNS, it is ending at the middle. And the second is starting and ending in the organ. Hana, it's like this. It's like this. So the junction of the two is known as ganglion. At the junction of the two, we have a ganglion. It is known as ganglion. So we have ganglion in autonomic nervous system, but not in somatic. Because in somatic, we have one. We have one. But in autonomic, we have two. We have two. Say yes. Say yes. Now ganglion is never at the center. Now ganglion, there are two possibility. If the if the ganglion is towards the organ, this is known as preganglionic nerve. So preganglionic nerve is longer and post is short. Hana? Or if the ganglion is towards the central nervous system, then pre is short and post is long. Samja kya? Got it. Say, see again, see again. Based on that, I will say there are two types. There are two types of autonomic nervous system. I am teaching you autonomic. See, two, two nerves are there. Hana, in somatic, only one nerve is there. I am not teaching you somatic people. Forget it. Somatic kisi organ padhenge. I am not teaching you somatic. I am teaching you autonomic nervous system. In autonomic nervous system, there is always a ganglion. Here we have a ganglion. Here we have a ganglion. But see the location of ganglion. It's never central. Either the ganglion is towards the effective organ or it is towards the central nervous system. Now we have two fibers. Preganglionic, postganglionic. Preganglionic, postganglionic. If the preganglionic is longer, and post is shorter. That is ganglion is towards the organ. It is known as presympathetic, parasympathetic system. Parasympathetic system. And if the ganglion is towards the central nervous system. So in that case, pre is short and post is long. It is known as sympathetic system. Samja, got it, huh? So this is the difference between parasympathetic and sympathetic. So autonomic nervous system is of two types. So I will teach you everything, but start with the basic. I always start with the basic. I assume students know nothing. I mean, the students don't know anything. I assume that. I don't know whether you know the basics or no, but I start my lecture from the basic. Now, if you understand this, you can understand the drugs very easily. There are two types of autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic and sympathetic. What's the difference? In parasympathetic, you can see the preganglionic fiber is longer and post is shorter because the ganglion is towards the organ. But in sympathetic nervous system, the ganglion is towards the central nervous system so here the post is longer and the pre is shorter so that is the main difference between them so now read it now read it and they all are motor nerves you can see the arrows they all are motor nerves okay so there are two type of autonomic nervous system parasympathetic and sympathetic here the ganglion 
is close to the organ. That's why pre is long and post is short. And in sympathetic, the ganglion is close to the spinal cord. That's why pre is short but post is long. I hope you can make it out and you get questions on that. Now out of all the nerves, I told you there are 12 pairs of cranial and 31 pairs of spinal and among the 31 you know which one is which. Which one of them is parasympathetic and which one of them is sympathetic? You tell me which one of them is parasympathetic out of the 12 cranial and 31. We have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Cranial nerves, spinal nerves. So which one is sympathetic and which one is parasympathetic? You tell me. You tell me. Let's start with parasympathetic. None of the spinal is parasympathetic. Parasympathetic may we have only cranial. Let me check. Yes, we have only cranial. The four cranial. 3, 7, 9, 10. Out of the 12, 4. You have to learn the numbers. 3, 7, 9, 10. You know the names. Uh, now number 3, 7 is facial. 9, 10 is vagus. Hana, you may be knowing. So 3, 7, 9, 10. These are the four nerves which have, which have the parasympathetic. So parasympathetic is present only in cranial. Not none of the spinal. Okay. Uh, uh, sympathetic one is present in i'm sorry i'm sorry in four cranials it is present and in the spinal it is present only in sacral it is present in spinal also in the spinal it is present in the sacral in the sacral and sympathetic is present only in spinal not in cranial it is dorso lumbar dorso matlab thoracic and this is lumbar got my point it is visible here also you can see this is parasympathetic see from where it is arising and see this is sympathetic and see from where it is arising see the parasympathetic it is arising from the four cranial three seven Maybe this is 9, maybe this is 10. So, 4 cranial and from the spinal, it is the sacral component. So, said is craniosacral. It is said as craniosacral. Hana, now come on the sympathetic. Sympathetic, none of them is cranial. No, none of them is cranial. All of them are spinal. In the spinal, it is thoracolumbar or dorsolumbar. It is thoracolumbar or dorsolumbar. How many of you got it? You get questions on that. So, this is the difference between parasympathetic and sympathetic. Now, the last thing, before starting the four chapters, I will teach you four chapters here. Before starting the four chapters, let me tell you the neurotransmitters. Let me tell you the neurotransmitters. Now, see the diagram. Now, in the brain, in the in, in the nervous system, autonomic nervous system, we have neurotransmitters. So, in somatic system, only one nerve is there. I told you, only one nerve is there. So, we require only one neurotransmitter at the end. But in autonomic nervous system, two, two nerves are there. So, we require two, two neurotransmitters, one at the ganglion, one at the organ. Here also, one at the ganglion, one at the organ. How many of you got it? Huh? So, in somatic system, it's only one that is acetylcholine. In somatic system, I'm not teaching you anyway somatic. In somatic, only one neurotransmitter is required, that is acetylcholine secreted at, at the organ, skeletal muscle, and it reacts with muscarinic and nicotinic receptors there. That's it. We are done. Okay. Now, coming on the autonomic. In the autonomic, two, two are there. One neurotransmitter is required at the ganglion. And one is at the organ. One is at the ganglion. One is at the organ. At ganglion, it's always acetylcholine. At ganglion, no, no matter. At pre-ganglion, it's always acetylcholine. Whether it is parasympathetic or sympathetic. Say yes. But at organ, it is different. At organ. At organ in parasympathetic, again, it's acetylcholine. But at organ in sympathetic, it is not adrenaline. So the neurotransmitter which is present at the organ matters. At the ganglion, it is same. Now here also acetylcholine, here also. So it doesn't matter. But at the organ, here it is acetylcholine. That's why parasympathetic system is known as cholinergic. Because the last neurotransmitter is cholinergic. It's acetylcholine. And here the last neurotransmitter is not adrenaline. That's why sympathetic system is known as adrenergic. This is the reason we give them this name. Parasympathetic is known as cholinergic and sympathetic is known as, known as adrenergic. Say na, got it, huh? So this is the basic. I hope you got it, huh? So this is the summary. You can see neurotransmitters in the somatic. We require only one that is acetylcholine. But in autonomic nervous system, we have two autonomic nervous system. We are sympathetic and parasympathetic. We require two two neurotransmitter: one preganglionic, one postganglionic, one preganglionic, one postganglionic. Now the rule is that preganglion is always acetylcholine, but the postganglionic is different. Here postganglionic is uh, in sympathetic. It is mostly noradrenaline. But sometimes can be adrenaline in the adrenal medulla or dopamine. And really it is acetylcholine. And here it is always acetylcholine. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone got it? Hmm? Thank you so much Abhinav for your compliment. So are you people there? Respond. So why parasympathetic system is known as cholinergic and why sympathetic system is known as adrenergic? I hope you got it. Now the last thing before starting the chapters, let me tell you their actions generalized. If you understand their actions very generalized, it's very easy for you to understand the chapters. Cholinergic, anticholinergic, adrenergic, anti-adrenergic. I will teach you four chapters one by one. And at the same heading, I will teach you four chapters. The drugs, the mechanism of action, uses side effects. Done. Four chapters, one by one. Ready? Huh? So before that, let me tell you the actions of 
parasympathetic and sympathetic ha no now you can see various organs i have drawn i have drawn a eye in the eye we have i we have a pupil so i have i tried to draw the eye and the pupil and this is i tried to draw the salivary gland ha no this is the heart you can see these are the lungs i have drawn this is the git i have drawn and this is the urinary bladder i have drawn in each of my organ both the nerves are there है ना सिंपेथेटिक पैरासिंपेथेटिक सो करंटली आई एम सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू यू आर स्टडिंग आई एम टीचिंग यू है ना सो इन अस व्हिच नर्व इज इज एक्टिव इन ऑल द ऑर्गन इन माय आई इन माय सलाइवरी ग्लैंड इन माय लंग इन माय हार्ट इन माय जीआईटी इन माय यूरिनरी ब्लड इन ऑल माय ऑर्गन्स व्हिच नर्व इज एक्टिवेटेड ईच ऑर्गन इज सप्लाइड बाय बोथ ना सो जस्ट सपोज माय आई इट इज हैविंग सिंपेथेटिक आल्सो पैरासिंपेथेटिक आल्सो इन माय सलाइवरी ग्लैंड सिंपेथेटिक आल्सो पैरासिंपेथेटिक आल्सो हार्ट लंग जीआईटी एवरीथिंग सिंपेथेटिक आल्सो पैरासिंपेथेटिक आल्सो सो करंटली एट अ टाइम वन इज एक्टिवेटेड ना बोथ कैन नॉट बी एक्टिवेटेड Hmm? Currently, one is activated, है ना? So currently we all are relaxed. Whenever we are relaxed, ना parasympathetic comes in action. Parasympathetic means relaxed state. I'm teaching you, I don't have any tension currently, है ना? So I guess I you don't you also don't have any tension, है ना? But imagine there is a there is a lion in front of me. Ah, oh, I have to save my life. Oh my God, I have to run. I have to save my life. Come on, there is a lion. There is a life threatening condition in front of me. At that time, inside my all the organs, sympathetic stimulation will be there. so emergency is sympathetic ha na so whenever we are relaxed ha na whenever we are relaxed there is parasympathetic and whenever there is an emergency it's sympathetic and you can understand correlate the function also now whenever we are relaxed we don't want the pupil to be much open we are relaxed now small vision is okay to me so it shows meiosis in the pupil there is meiosis but whenever there is a lion i want to increase my vision i want to run everywhere and you can understand like that ha na just i'm telling you a way to learn so here there is midriasis midriasis ha na so in parasympathetic system there is meiosis in sympathetic system there is midriasis so in the eye we have both whenever we require meiosis whenever we require midriasis okay the salivary gland currently i am sitting in front of you but i am feeling hungry maybe after the session i will eat my dinner ha na so my salivation is taking place okay so increased salivation is there but whenever there is a lion in front of me i don't have time to eat food i can't say lion wait i am coming and eating my food okay it's the emergency situation and at that time we don't require saliva so saliva production decreases you can understand Got it. Now coming on the heart. Currently, I'm sitting in front of me. My heart rate is normal. Maybe between eighty to hundred, I can measure. Ha na. So heart rate is normal. Normal or reduced, it's normal. But there is a lion in front of me. My heart will pump like anything. It will be more than one twenty, one thirty, maybe one fifty. So heart rate will increase here. Contractility, heart rate, velocity, everything will increase. Ha na. At that time, if there is an emergency, yet everything is less or normal. You can say. Ha na. Coming on the lungs. Currently, I'm sitting normal, relaxed. I don't require much oxygen. I'm sitting calmly, coolly. So bronchoconstriction is there. Ah no, lungs don't are bronco bronchus are not much dilated. Less oxygen is required. But there is a lion. I have to run, run. I require more oxygen. Ah no. So at that time, bronchus dilatation is there. You can correlate everything. People just imagination is there. Just a way you should get it. ठीक है चलो GIT in the GIT currently GIT में parasympathetic is taking place because i am feeling hungry but at the emergency we don't require any parasympathetic there is no time to eat urinary bladder whenever we are relaxed and whenever the bladder is full we can go we can use the washroom we can micturate we can void ha na so at that time urinary bladder mein you have to understand two thing this is known as detrusor muscle and this is known as sphincter please understand please please this is detrusor muscle this is detrusor muscle and this is sphincter so two things are there this is sphincter listen so whenever we want to void we want to void what we have to do so this contract the detrusor has to contract ha na and the sphincter has to relax so urine will come out urine will come out so to contract so to to micturate we have to contract the detrusor and we have to relax the sphincter then only urine can come out otherwise so detrusor will contract and sphincter will relax then the urine will come out ha na but whenever we don't want to void whenever we don't want to void at that time we relax the detrusor we relax the detrusor so that urine can accumulate here and we contract the sphincter so that urine do not come out we contract the so whenever we want to void i guess everyone can understand we have to contract the detrusor and relax the sphincter and whenever we do not want to void the urine at that time we have to re relax the detrusor and contract the sphincter how many if you got it ha huh? so during parasympathetic stimulation during relaxed state we can void so this is parasympathetic but during emergency we don't have time to micturate ha huh? na there is a lion we cannot use the toilet at that time ha huh? na so this is sympathetic in sympathetic this will happen so this is how you can understand say yes if you got it everyone so this is the mechanisms now can i start the four chapters if you are interested i want to teach you four chapters cholinergic anticholinergic adrenergic anti adrenergic okay what does the cholinergic drugs will do cholinergic drugs will act on all these organs and whatever the parasympathetic system was doing it is exaggerating that 
है ना कोलिनर्जिक वॉट डज द एंटी कोलिनर्जिक विल डू एंटी कोलिनर्जिक विल ब्लॉक दिस एक्शन एंड डू द रिवर्स है ना डू द रिवर्स वॉट डज एड्रीनर्जिक ड्रग विल डू एड्रीनर्जिक ड्रग विल डू ऑल द सिंपेथेटिक थिंग दैट विल एक्जग्रेशन एक्जग्रेशन ऑफ ऑल दैट है ना एंड वॉट डज एंटी एड्रीनर्जिक विल डू एड्रीनर्जिक एंटी एड्रीनर्जिक विल ब्लॉक द एड्रीनर्जिक रिसेप्टर एंड डू द अपोजिट सो कैन आई से कोलिनर्जिक इज इक्वल टू एंटी एड्रीनर्जिक एंड एंटी कोलिनर्जिक इज इक्वल टू एड्रीनर्जिक मोर और लेस हाउ मेन एफ यू गॉट इट I tried my best, yeah. I'm trying best. I'm trying best. How many of you got it? Huh? Because these both are opposite to each other at most of the organs, except one organ. I forgot to tell you, male sex organ, that is penis. Male sex organ. At most of the organs, they are opposite. Huh? No, one is increasing, one is decreasing. One is increasing, one is decreasing. They are opposite. But at penis, that is male sex organ, they are complementary. They are not opposite. So one is doing the erection and one is doing the ejaculation. During sexual intercourse, first there is erection and then there is ejection. These are not two opposite things. These are two complementary things. Huh? No? So here the parasympathetic. Stimulation causes erection of the penis, and sympathetic stimulation causes the ejection. And also, only at the male sex organ the action is complementary, but at all other organs the action is opposite. So that is the thing. Okay, can I start the chapters? Okay, before starting the four chapters, you frequently get question on the meiosis and mitriasis. Which drug causes meiosis and which causes mitriasis? Can you tell me among the four? I will tell you the classification of all four. Now I will give you four boxes learning the four classification. That is your homework. You have to learn all four classification together at one place. Ah no, you have to learn the uses and side effect. The uses and side effect I am going to teach you in a unique way. I will tell you the receptors. In that receptor only I will mark the uses as well as side effect. No need to learn. Understand? कुछ भी learn नहीं करना pharma में समझो हर चीज. You have to understand. Say classification you have to learn. I cannot assist there, but you have to learn the classification. Okay जी हाँ. Okay. So before starting the four chapters, I want to end the I portion here only. I portion. Which of them causes meiosis? Which of them causes mitriasis? Cholinergic causes what? Anticholinergic causes what? Adrenergic causes what? And anti-adrenergic causes what? You have two option: meiosis, mitriasis. You frequently get questions here. You frequently get questions here. So can I start? So let me complete the I portion here, and then I will start the four chapters in detail. So I portion is done once for all. I will not repeat it at four places. I am repeating at one place only. ठीक है? Yes, absolutely right, Abhilash. But uh, let me explain it in detail. so in the eye eye is a eyeball it's like a ball ha na in the eyeball we have this iris the center of the iris has a hole which is known as pupil ha na the pupil is small it is meiosis when it is dilated it is mitriasis so contracted meiosis and mitriasis we have meiosis and mitriasis if i cut it from here eye and see the iris is like a curtain can you see this is complete iris the iris is like a curtain with a hole at the center it's like a circular curtain so this is iris I have drawn the iris in front of you. In the iris, there are two type of muscle. Let me highlight the two type of muscles in front of you. See the first diagram. Everyone sees it's difficult, and I am not going to repeat it. See, see the first type of muscles. These, this is the first type of muscles. This is known as, uh, um, this is known as sphincter pupillae. You can see, it is in between sphincter pupillae. These all are sphincter pupillae. Now you imagine the black color I have drawn. If they all are contracting, the pupil will shrink. It will cause meiosis. Ha na? So sphincter pupillae causes meiosis. See the black portion. Now see the dilator pupillae. The second muscle is known as dilator pupillae. Let me highlight. This is dilator pupillae. This is all dilator. Can you see? It is longitudinal. So sphincter pupillae is transverse, and dilator pupillae is longitudinal. Now imagine the red, red, red one. It is contracting. Imagine all the reds are contracting together. So pupil will dilate. Pupil will dilate. You can see here, है ना? Here the sphincter pupillae is contracting, so pupil is meiosis. And here dilator pupillae is contracting, so pupil is doing mitriasis. So sphincter pupillae causes meiosis, dilator pupillae causes mitriasis. How many of you got it? See, meiosis, mitriasis, meiosis, mitriasis, meiosis is sphincter pupillae. Dilatation, mitriasis is dilator pupillae. Now me here, dilator means dilate. That is mitriasis. Or sphincter means contract. Means it is meiosis. So learn the basic. Learn the basic. है ना? Now which which nerve is supplying which muscle? So sphincter pupillae is supplied by parasympathetic. Okay, and dilator pupil is some supplied by sympathetic one. That's why I told you whenever we are relaxed, our pupils are small. But whenever there is an emergency, lion, my pupil will dilate. आंखे फट जाएंगी क्या था ना? So that is you can learn. कि सामने शेर आएगा तो आंखे फट जाएंगी. I mean the midriasis will occur. So because dilator pupil is some supplied by sympathetic system. So you can see the now. You can see. Now you tell me whenever the sphincter pupil is contracting, what will happen? Say ma'am, meiosis. It is known as active meiosis. Sphincter pupil causes active meiosis. है ना when sphincter pupillae will relax what will happen है ना when it is contracting meiosis when it is relaxing it is known as passive mitriasis it is not actual mitriasis it is passive mitriasis है ना when dilator pupillae is contracting it causes active active mitriasis 
actual midriasis. And when dilatory pupillae is relaxing, it causes passive meiosis. Passive meiosis. How many of you got this active and passive word? How many of you didn't got it? Let me ask the vice versa. How many of you didn't got it? I hope you got it. Sphincter pupil is supplied by parasympathetic nerve. So whenever it will contract, it will cause the meiosis. And this one is supplied by sympathetic nerve. So whenever it will contract, it will cause the meiosis. I hope you got it. But whenever they are relaxing, they will do the opposite. Instead of meiosis, there is meiosis. Instead of meiosis, there is meiosis. But that is the passive one. Relaxation may passive one. Huh? Got it? Okay, got it. So that is the thing. So that is the same thing written in front of you. So you tell me what will happen. Cholinergic drugs, what they will do? Anticholinergic, adrenergic, what they will do? And anti-adrenergic, what they will do? Who will tell me? So let me write it here and explain you. Cholinergic, anticholinergic, adrenergic, and anti-adrenergic. You tell me what they will do? Anti-adrenergic. Cholinergic drugs are what? Cholinergic drugs is parasympathetic stimulation. They exaggerate the parasympathetic. So they cause contraction of what? Sphincter pupillae. Since they cause contraction of sphincter pupillae, they will cause active meiosis. They will cause active meiosis. What the anticholinergic drugs will do? Anticholinergic drugs. Hmm? Anticholinergic drugs will oppose the cholinergic. I know. They will oppose the contraction of sphincter pupillae. So they will cause the relaxation of sphincter pupillae. Once the sphincter pupillae is relaxed, of course it's midriasis, but it's not real midriasis. This midriasis is known as passive midriasis. I hope you are getting it. Anna, what does the adrenergic will do? It will cause contraction of dilator pupillae. So it will cause midriasis. But this is active, real midriasis. Active midriasis. It is due to contraction of muscle. And what does anti-adrenergic will do? It will cause relaxation of this uh, dilator pupillae. Once the dilator pupillae is relaxed, it's meiosis again. But it's not real meiosis, it's passive meiosis. It's passive uh, meiosis. So that's why I told you at the beginning only this is equivalent to this. This is equivalent to this. I tried my best. Okay. Got it. Now let me start the two chapters. Cholinergic, anticholinergic. And after that let me tell you two more chapters. Adrenergic and anti-adrenergic. Anti yes. I will upload the PDF after the session. Let me finish the session first. So let me start with cholinergic and anticholinergic drugs. Hannah, I want to tell you the drugs, mechanism of action, uses and contradiction. That's it. So first we will complete these two chapters and then after that we will complete next two chapters adrenergic and adrenergic so ANS is done. So I am starting the ANS now. Abhitak, till now I, will, I was telling you the general thing. If you don't understand the general thing, you can't understand the drugs. Now you can understand it very easily. Now before understanding cholinergic and anticholinergic drugs, you must understand the neurotransmitter here. I am teaching you this system. Parasympathetic system. I am teaching you cholinergic and anticholinergic. So you must understand this. Hannah, so since you can see here, acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter. First, you should understand the acetylcholine. If you understand the acetylcholine, things will be very simple for you. So let me explain you the acetylcholine. How does it get synthesized, stored, released? Then you can understand these drugs. So let me talk about this. Can you see here? Listen, here. Can you see this is acetylcholine? Can you see here? It is present here in the axon and it is released out here. And it is acting on the muscarinic and neuronicotinic receptor. So have you ever thought how does it get synthesized in the axon, in the axon of this neuron? So this is the axon of the neuron inside which the vesicles are present, inside which this acetylcholine is present. So whenever the action potential is coming, the acetylcholine is secreted out and acting on the muscarinic and nicotinic receptor. So how does it get synthesized? So this, this, can you see this? This is the axon. This is this, this portion. I'm zooming out this portion. I'm zooming out this axon, the terminal axon. So in this terminal axon, how does acetylcholine is synthesized? It is synthesized from an amino acid choline. So first choline go inside, choline get acetylated, it will form acetylcholine and stored in our cycle. It is stored in our cycle. It will remain there in our cycle. So first the choline will go, Hana, here you can see the choline is going. And it will get acetylated and it will remain inside the cycle. This is how. And whenever the action potential is coming, Hana, here the action potential is coming. At that time the cycle will fuse and the acetylcholine is released out. The uh, cycle will fuse with the axonal membrane. So whenever the action potential is coming, at that time the neuron will become depolarized. The acetylcholine vesicle will come, fuse here and it will release out. It will act on its receptor. It will act on its receptor. Got my point? And how does the destruction occur? Once acetylcholine is out, it will acting on muscarinic and nicotinic receptor present on the organ. It will act there only for a fraction of millisecond. It will act there only for a fraction of millisecond. After that, there is an enzyme. The name of that enzyme is, please understand, 
acetylcholine esterase enzyme that will cause the hydrolysis of acetylcholine so its action is terminated it is not forever it is not forever so this is how acetylcholine is synthesized released and the action is terminated i repeat the three things everyone please hear if you don't understand you can't understand the mechanism of action of the drugs please see so i'm talking about this portion see inside this portion the choline will go inside choline is an amino acid it will go from the blood it will go inside the choline will get acetylated and it will form acetylcholine it will go inside the vesicle and get stored there remain there only now when the action potential is coming at that time the vesicle will fuse with the axonal membrane the acetylcholine will secrete it out it will secrete out and it will act on the muscarinic and the nicotinic receptor and it will cause its action whatever is the action depending on the organ it will show its action and if it is heart it will reduce the heart rate if it is salivary gland it will increase the salivary secretion whatever is the organ if it is if it is eye it will cause the meiosis by jobi organ hai, it will show its action after that there is an enzyme the name of the enzyme is acetylcholine esterase after a fraction of millisecond once the action is over it will hydrolyze and gone it is hydrolyzed and gone say yes got it now huh so let me tell you muscarinic and nicotinic receptor please understand muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor Hana, how many type of muscarinic receptor are there three type m1 m2 m3 and nicotinic are two type nm and nn so total five receptors are there so you have to understand the organ on which organ which receptor is present if you understand thing understanding the two chapter i can complete the two chapter in just five minutes if you understand this master chart because in this master chart only i'm going to cover the two chapter at uh, cholinergic and anticholinergic drugs and i teach a very unique way the uh, ans and i told you I, I will not give you mnemonics here I will not ask you to learn even a single thing here. No use, no adverse effect of all four chapters. Cholinergic, anticholinergic, adrenergic, anti-adrenergic. I will tell you with the master charts. The only thing you have to learn is the receptors. So where does M1 present? Where does M2 present? Where does M3 present in human body? This is the human body. So M1 present in our brain. Hana? In the ganglion, TK and in the stomach. Hana? Brain and stomach. Brain and stomach. TK? M1. M2 present only in heart. Only in heart and M3 present in entire body and in entire visceral muscles. Visceral muscles is the smooth involuntary muscle in my entire GIT, in my lungs, in urinary bladder, in sphincters, all the involuntary muscles M3 is present. In the eye also M3 is present. In the glands also salivary gland, sweat gland, lacrimal gland M3 is present. In the blood vessels also and in male sex organ also M3 is present. So there is a mnemonic to learn. Where does M1, M2, M3 reside? M1. Do you understand Hindi? If you understand Hindi, you can understand. So the mnemonic is Pahle Khao. Hana? Pahle Khao. Thik hai? So it is present in stomach and in brain also. Thik hai? Pahle Khao. Fir dil lagao. Thik hai? That is it is present in heart. Aur baaki sab kaam baad mein. Baaki sab baad mein. So it is present in rest of the body. So with this you can learn Pahle Khao. It is present in the heart and brain. Brain learn karna padega. Fir dil lagao. So it is present in the heart. Aur baaki sab baad mein. So it is present in entire body. Thik hai? M1, M2, M3 learn the distribution. Now coming on NM and NN. Please see. The nicotinic are of two types. We have NM and we have NN. The NM is present on neuromuscular junction. NN not important. Hana? So please learn. So now coming on cholinergic drugs. Can I start the four chapters people? Now you are ready. Ab tum ho to study the two chapters. Cholinergic and anticholinergic. I will teach you only four things. Hana? Just in five minutes it will be done. Listen, listen, listen. The first thing you have to learn the classification. You have to learn. That's your homework. You have to learn the classification of all the drugs. Today only. I will provide you the PDF. Please learn the entire classification. Mechanism of action I will tell you. Uses and side effect of this also, this also, this also, this also. I will mark here in this master table. All four. The uses of cholinergic as well as anticholinergic. Adrenergic and as well as adrenergic. If you learn this, it will be super duper easy for you. We will revise M1, M2, M3. M1, M2. And M3. Tell me the organs where they are present. Say ma'am, M1 present in the CNS and in uh, stomach. Thik hai? Anna, M2 present in heart. M3 present at uh, five places. Anna, where does it present? It present in all visceral muscles. In the visceral muscles, important one are GIT, Anna, urinary bladder, Anna, lungs and sphincters also. Anna, GIT ke baat pehle lungs ka. Well, GIT, lungs, urinary bladder and sphincter. Apart from that, it is present in the glands also. It is present in the eye also. Salivary gland, eye. Anna? It is present in uh, blood vessels also and male genitals also. Anna? So tell me the function. In the brain, it causes learning. Short me bolte hai. It causes learning. Anna? Cognition or learning. In the stomach, it increases acid secretion. It increases acid secretion. In the heart, it decreases heart rate. It decreases the contractility. It decreases the velocity. Rate, contractility, velocity. Three things are in the heart. Inotropic, uh, uh, domotropic and chromotropic. 
Uh, so they are negative chromotropic, negative hynotropic, negative chromotropic. They all are less, less, less. They decrease rate, contraction, and velocity. They all reduce, reduce, reduce. It is parasympathetic. No, everything will be less. Hana, visra me, GIT me, it causes parastalysis. It causes the contraction. Contraction means parastalysis. So whenever I'm, I'm relaxed, currently I'm relaxed. So I can learn, I can do the cognition. I'm having the acid. My heart rate is low. My velocity is low. Contraction is low. My GIT is contracting. I'm having uh, the contraction. My lungs are also contracted, bronchoconstriction, because I don't require much oxygen right now because I'm relaxed. This is complete relaxed state we are imagining. And a urinary bladder, if we wish, we can micturate. So the detrusor will contract, but but the sphincter will relax. Yes, I'm right. The detrusor will contract, but the sphincter will relax. I told you, now how does the micturation takes place? The glands, my secretions are taking place. Salivary secretion is taking place. Lacrimation is taking place. Hana, um, uh, sweat is taking place. But in emergency, they all will reduce. So all secretions are there. In the eye, I'm having meiosis right now. In the eye, I'm having meiosis because it's relaxed state. Blood vessels, let me check. Hana, male sex organ here, erection is there, not ejaculation. Ejaculation is sympathetic. Hana, so please see this. Apart from that, we have NM and NN. So NM is present on the neuromuscular junction. Just learn. Neuromuscular junction, it causes contraction of the muscle. How many of you got it? Please learn this. Sirf itna hi learn karna hai. If you learn this, two chapters are done like this. Please learn this. M1, M2, M3, NN, NM, NN. Now let's come on the first chapter. I will teach you two chapters back to back, cholinergic, anticholinergic. Just five minutes here, five minutes here. You know the master table. See, okay? classification you learn by yourself. Classification you learn by yourself. Hana, cholinergic drugs. The prototype drug here is the acetylcholine, you can say. Hana, uh, we have choline estrays, we have cholinergic agonist, anticholine estrays. You learn the classification. There are many drugs, pisostigmin, neostigmin, paridostigmin. Hana. Um, so please learn the classification. I'm not reading it. Let me tell you the mechanism of action. What does these drugs do? Listen, 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 listen. These drugs inhibit the enzyme anticholine estrays. I hope you can get this right now. Hmm? What is this enzyme was doing? Say, ma'am, when the action potential was coming, at that time, the acetylcholine vesicle was fusing with the axonal membrane and acetylcholine was releasing out. After releasing out, it was acting on the muscarinic and nicotinic receptor of the organ. After a fraction of millisecond, when the action is over, this enzyme was causing the degradation, hydrolysis of acetylcholine, so its action is over. Now I am saying this drug is inhibiting the enzyme which degrade acetylcholine. So this enzyme is gone. So there is no one now to degrade the acetylcholine. So acetylcholine once released, it will remain there for a longer duration. It will remain there for a longer duration and it shows its action with more intensity. So that is cholinergic action. How many of you got it? Kitno ko samaj mein aaya? So it is anticholine ester race because it is inhibiting the enzyme choline esterase. So these drugs are known as anticholine esterase. Anticholine esterase. It is not anticholinergic people. Anticholinergic will be the next chapter. I am telling you, one of the cholinergic drug is anticholine esterase, not anticholinergic. Anticholine esterase means it is inhibiting the enzyme choline esterase. So it is, it is, it is exaggerating the function of the endogenous acetylcholine because this enzyme used to degrade acetylcholine. Now there is no one to degrade acetylcholine. Acetylcholine will remain as acetylcholine only, Hana. and there is no one to degrade it. It will remain there at the receptor for a longer duration. Initially, it was there for one millisecond. Now it is there for ten millisecond. Likewise, Hana. so it will show its exaggerated action. And this is cholinergic drugs. So this is the mechanism of action. Say people say. Now let me tell you the uses. There are nine uses. You don't learn them. Mark them here. If you know M1, M2, M3, NM, NN, I will tell you nine. Nine circles are there. I will explain each and every, each and every use. So nine good things are there. Hannah and four, four bad things are there. I will explain. The four yellow, you can see the four yellow, the four. So ultimately nine good and four bad. You have to learn that. So this is the uses, nine uses and four contraindication or adverse effect. Can I start the uses? Huh? What it is doing on the GIT? Say ma'am, it is causing the contraction of the GIT. Have I taught you? GIT may contraction. So the one who is having constipation, can I give it to that patient? Imagine a patient coming to me, doctor, I'm having constipation. I cannot pass the motions very frequently and I'm having difficulty in passing the motion. So I will give cholinergic drug. What does the cholinergic drug do? It will do the contraction of the GIT. It will pass the motions easily. It will exaggerate the acetylcholine action on the GIT. Ano? By inhibiting the enzyme anticholine, uh, uh, by inhibiting the enzyme choline stress. Ano? So GIT pay, it is given in constipation. Please understand, whatever uses I'm telling you, na, these are the name of the diseases. The drug is doing opposite to treat that disease. Patient is having constipation. So drug is doing the parastolysis to relieve the constipation. Hana. So my drug, cholinergic drugs, they increase the parastolysis and relieve the constipation. So the disease is constipation, but the drug is causing the parastolysis to re release the constipation. I guess you got it. Urinary retention. Imagine a patient is coming to me, doctor. Hana. 
uh, elderly patient i cannot pass the urine urinary retention is there ha na so urinary retention is there so what i want i want the detrusor to get contract and i want the sphincter to get relaxed i want detrusor to get contract ha na detrusor contract and the sphincter get relaxed if the detrusor contract and the sphincter relax the urine will pass ha na so if urinary retention is there this is not happening now so i will give the cholinergic drugs cholinergic drugs do so cholinergic drugs contract the detrusor and it will relax the sphincter by doing so by doing so it is useful in urinary retention so it is useful in urinary retention my second use my second use is urinary retention first use is constipation by doing git git contraction it will relieve the constipation second use is urinary retention by contracting the detrusor and relaxing the sphincter it will pass the urine and it will be useful in urinary retention also my third use is eye in the eye whenever we want to do the meiosis or decrease intraocular tension that is in glaucoma we can give this in the eye by causing iris contraction ha na i mean uh, sphincter pupillary contraction it causes meiosis so whenever we want meiosis we can use it and in glaucoma also uh, it is it is given because it decreases intraocular tension also so it is given in glaucoma so third uses glaucoma ha na glaucoma decreases iot it causes meiosis so third uses glaucoma so first uses constipation second uses is urinary retention third uses meiosis and glaucoma meiosis and glaucoma together you can say the third use i will tell you nine all nine will be explained here the fourth is a xerostomia xerostomia means dry dry uh, i forgot to put the image dry tongue dry mouth ha na so salivation is less so it increases salivation by increasing salivation it is useful in xerophthalmia also so xero xerostomia xerostomia or xerophthalmia ha na the dry eye the dry mouth it is given alzheimer in alzheimer it will cause the cognition alzheimer is a disease whenever there is dementia and this is causing the learning so we can give it in alzheimers also ha na in myasthenia gravis in myasthenia gravis we can give in myasthenia gravis there are antibodies against the nicotinic receptor again the anem receptor so we can give the drug so that the receptors are less but whatever receptors are less the action of acetylcholine will be augmented on that so we can give it in myasthenia gravis in myasthenia gravis this section is there it is it is acting on the skeletal muscle and contracting there ha na post op decurarization in the surgery we give curare na in the surgery we give tub tubocurarium hai na uh, to to do the muscle relaxation it is a neuromuscular blocker so once the surgery is done one, one patient is out of ot and patient is involved now patient is telling me doctor i am still paralyzed i cannot move my hands and limbs can you decurarize me so for that i can use this hai na because decurarization means what it will do again it will in curarization i have blocked the acetylcholine receptor muscarinic receptors uh, nicotinic receptors and here i will again um uh, increase the concentration of acetylcholine there so it will decurarization cobra bite you know cobra bite let me explain you cobra is a snake whenever the cobra bite it will block the nm receptor and patient cannot run so as soon as the cobra bite patient cannot run the muscles get paralyzed as the patient is having neuromuscular blocker so here we are giving this drug that will inhibit the acetylcholine acety acetylcholine esterase that will increase the concentration of acetylcholine if the acetylcholine will be more and uh, the cobra venom will get displaced and again the muscles will get i mean they they can contract ha na so cobra bite mate will be useful theek hai and dhatura poisoning dhatura poisoning belladonna poisoning atropin poisoning because it is a physiological antidote for that so please learn the uses how many of you got it can you tell me the uses here ha huh? rather than learning see the red circles and tell me the uses i am telling you the uses of cholinergic drugs how many of you got it tell me the uses of cholinergic drug Can you please tell me the uses of cholinergic drug, people? Say, ma'am, because it causes GIT contraction, we can give it in constipation. Ma'am, because it causes contraction of detrusor and relaxation of sphincter, we can use it in urinary retention. ठीक है? Number three, we can give give it in glaucoma or causing the meiosis. Whenever we cause want meiosis or glaucoma, because it reduces IOT. Number three. Number four, we can give in xerophthalmia because it increases it increases saliva. Anna. Number five, we can give in Alzheimer's because it increases cognition. Number five, number six, and seven and eight. Three uses here sir. We can give in myasthenia gravis, cobra bite, and uh, what was the third one? Cobra bite and decurarization after surgery. In all of them, the use is that uh, at neuromuscular junction, it increases the concentration of acetylcholine for a longer time. So myasthenia gravis, cobra bite, and decurarization. How many of you got it? Give me a thumbs up. This is a unique way you can learn the. Uh, and last one ninth one is a, it is a physiological antidote for dhatura poisoning so 8 plus 1 total 9 uses are there ha na you can mark the nine uses in front of you can you enumerate the nine uses of cholinergic drugs say ma'am constipation urinary retention glaucoma plus meiosis ha na alzheimer 
ठीक है जराफथेलमिया ठीक है एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट माइसिमिया ग्रेविस कॉन्स्टिपेशन कोबरा बाइट डीकोराइजेशन एंड इट इज अ फिजियोलॉजिकल एंटीडोट फॉर द धतुरा पॉइजन एवरी वन प्लीज रिस्पॉन्ड नाउ से यस से यस से नो से समथिंग ओके सो दिस इज द यूजर्स वी हैव सीन यूजर्स की बात कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन और साइड इफेक्ट देर आर फोर कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन नाउ सी दी येलो मार्क्स वॉट इज इट कॉजेज इन द लंग्स से मैम इन द लंग्स इट कॉजेज ब्रोंको कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन सो कैन बी गिव्ड इन अस्थमा नो 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 अस्थमा विल गेट एक्सागरेटेड नेवर गिव इट इन अस्थमा पेशेंट बिकॉज इट कॉजेज ब्रोंको कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन इन अस्थमा देर इज ऑलरेडी ब्रोंको कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन इट विल गेट एक्सागरेटेड द अटैक ऑफ द अस्थमा विल बी प्रेसिपिटेटेड वी कैन नॉट गिव इट इन अस्थमा वॉट डज इट कॉजेज ऑन द स्टमक से मैम इट इंक्रीज एसिडिटी सो कैन आई गिव इट इन पेशन विद पैप्टिकल सर no peptic ulcer will rupture acidity will exaggerate because peptic ulcer mein there is already hyper acidity and it will further exaggerate that so we cannot give it in peptic ulcer third in coronary vasodilatation in the blood vessels it causes vasodilatation in the coronary uh, uh, insufficiency we cannot give it it will further exaggerate the vasodilatation in coronary insufficiency we cannot give it and the fourth one in obstructive urinary retention obstructive urinary retention means what i told you listen listen now the patient is having urinary retention if it is functional i mean the detrusor is not contracting we can give this drug but imagine if there is a malignancy or stone here malignancy and stone here and that's why the patient is not passing the urine please understand the patient is not passing because there is a stone here malignancy here there is some obstruction here and you give this drug what does this drug do it will contract the detrusor and relax the sphincter it will do such a contraction but urine still cannot come out because there is a there is a obstruction and the rupture will occur so you can give it in urinary retention whenever the urinary retention is non obstructive ha na so i have marked the urinary retention in both as a use also as a side effect also so non obstructive one is a use but obstructive one is a contraindication i don't know whether you got it or not but i tried my best from the depth of my heart to explain you now this is i call this a master chart so this is how i'm this is the first one i'm going to provide three more i'm going to provide this is cholinergic the same i'm having for adrenergic uh, anticholinergic adrenergic anti adrenergic in the anti anti adrenergic i'm having two alpha blocker beta blocker so total five master charts are there in five pages i complete ems in five master charts i call them one is cholinergic one is anti cholinergic one is adrenergic and in anti adrenergic i'm having alpha blocker and beta blocker separately ha na now in each of them i'm having red and blue my red are uses ha na and my blue one okay are my side effects so i don't learn them i don't have any mnemonic but one thing when i see them you know so i can whenever the question is in front of me i can imagine i know this chart very well the receptors if you know the receptors it's very easy for you to judge the uses and side effects so can you enumerate the uses and the side effects we are done with cholinergic drugs can i come on the next chapter anti cholinergic drug can you please enumerate it once first enumerate the uses with the red color tell me the uses say ma'am it is given in constipation it is given in urinary retention that is non obstructive urinary retention that is non obstructive obstructive one will be a side effect uh, it will be contraindication in case of glaucoma ha na in case of xerophthalmia in case of alzheimer ha na in case of decolorization after surgery cobra bite and myasthenia gravis these are the uses now let me enumerate the side effect with the blue color c c c so it uh, this first side effect is peptic ulcer we cannot give it because it increases acidity the second side effect is asthma we cannot give it because it causes bronchoconstriction ha na the third side effect is coronary vasodilatation we cannot give it because it further increases the vasodilatation and exaggerate the disease and the fourth is obstructive urinary retention in which it will cause the perfor people respond now respond so please respond so you can learn 9 plus 4 i call the table as 9 plus 4 table learn the nine uses and four side effect they all are visible here very well and you can understand it no need to learn no rectification learn m1 m2 m3 their distribution and learn nm and nn their distribution in that mark the nine uses and four side effect once you have done by yourself now you will never forget in your life no mnemonic is required if you learn any mnemonic you will forget but you have understood the concept now you will never forget theek hai the table achhi achhi cheeze is uses buri buri cheeze is side effect table is same table is same this is the actions of cholinergic and uh, the good one are the users and the bad one are adverse effect as simple as that people respond a unique way of ens you will never forget in your life can i proceed let's come so we are done with cholinergic drugs you know the drugs learn the classification by yourself mechanism of action i will say one word it inhibits an enzyme the name of the enzyme is col uh, acetylcholine esterase the name of the enzyme is choline esterase enzyme it inhibit so that enzyme degrade acetylcholine now this enzyme is inhibited so there is no one to degrade acetylcholine so acetylcholine concentration will increase and it will act on its receptor for a longer duration so cholinergic action is exaggerated users you know the nine users i have marked 
and you know the contraindication for i have marked now you can enumerate them if you wish if you wish if you don't want this type of vision you can enumerate them once you have understood you will never forget now take care got it you can learn the mnemonic also sort of good one so coming on the anticholinergic drug anticholinergic drugs the same way we will study so learn the classification first here the prototype drug is atropin atropin also known as dhatura also known as belladonna whether you called atropin dhatura belladonna one and the same thing it is obtained from the dhatura anticholinergic there are many but read by yourself listen mechanism of action what does it do it block only muscarinic receptor it don't block nicotinic no 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 it block muscarinic you will say ma'am if it block this atropin the red color is atropin it block muscarinic receptor so if it block muscarinic what will happen acetylcholine cannot act on it so what does acetylcholine do acetylcholine do all this at muscarinic receptor if it is m1 receptor now it can be m1 it can be m2 it can be m3 so if it is m1 this is the action if it is m2 this is the action if it is m3 this is the action so this is not done because acetylcholine cannot bind it if acetylcholine was binding here it shows all this now this receptor is blocked can you see the red drug the red drug is atropin atropin is a blocker it is just blocking the muscarinic m1 also m2 also m3 also so that acetylcholine cannot bind here so if acetylcholine was binding it was showing this action now acetylcholine is not binding so it will opposite will happen now if it is heart for example this this organ is heart so if acetylcholine coming and binding at the heart it reduces the heart rate it reduces the contraction it reduces the velocity but now acetylcholine is not binding because it is blocked so it will increase the heart rate it will increase the velocity it will increase the contraction you got my point if this organ is gland if this organ is any gland so if acetylcholine is coming and binding with the gland it increases the secretion of that gland but if it is not binding now because it is blocked now so it will reduce the secretion my point is that reverse the table reverse complete table jo bhi hai uska ulta maro pura table ko ulta kar dalo that is anticholinergic hai na because this is now i cannot make that table just imagine you have to imagine in your you know thoughts like this is the action of acetylcholine hai na now acetylcholine cannot show its action because it is blocked so reverse will happen so it at heart whatever is written reverse will happen at visceral organ whatever is written reverse, reverse will happen so everything will reverse people give me a thumbs up i need a i need applause i need you know i need for my efforts at least uh, appreciate i need the appreciation you got my point so everything will be reversed now tell me the uses and side effect so you can see the uses are 7 6 plus 1 1 is antidote i mean six uses are there and two side effect are there so let me tell you the six uses and the two side effect in one master table now think reverse you have to think everything opposite you know so whenever bradycardia is there you can give this drug because this drug is increasing the heart rate ha na atropin increases the heart rate normally acetylcholine reduces the heart rate atropin block acetylcholine so it increases the heart rate it will do the reverse ha na jo likha hai usko ulta ho raha hai ulti table banana nahi hai man mein sochna hai ha na jo jo likha hai usko ulta socho ha na so if the patient is having bradycardia you can give atropin atropin will increase the heart rate ha na so first uses heart rate ha na second diarrhea if the patient is having diarrhea what does it do ha na it decreases the contraction it decreases contraction it relieve the diarrhea so in the git the uses diarrhea ha na urinary retention nahi aneurysis what is aneurysis passing urine in the bad especially children do that ha na bachcho mein raat mein urine aa jana bad mein ha na so especially during sleep children passes urine or sometimes some adults can also have this problem that is aneurysis so urinary retention ka opposite and this causes urinary retention so aneurysis mein we can give aneurysis everything is opposite ma constipation tha ya diarrhea hai ha na so my first use is bradycardia second use is diarrhea my third use is aneurysis it causes urinary retention ha na fourth use is midriasis in the eye it causes midriasis in the eye ha na fifth use in the gland in the gland in the gland if the person is having coryza coryza is excess of secretion wahan pe xerophthalmia tha xerostemia tha ya coryza hai excessive nasal secretion we can use it excessive nasal secretion excessive any secretion coryza coryza ha na got my point coryza may we can use pre anesthetic medication we can use in the cns it is used in motion sickness and parkinsonism motion sickness because it depresses basal ganglion that's why used in parkinsonism and it depresses the uh, uh, this the vestibular center that's why given in motion center that's why given in motion sickness motion sickness is whenever we are traveling uh, the person have vomiting ha na so that is used in motion sickness that's it so can you enumerate the uses people ek bar uses ko enumerate karo the circles are in front of you i am teaching you anticholinergic this is a master table of anticholinergic whatever is written imagine opposite whatever is written imagine opposite and repeat my words can you tell me the uses same ma'am yes start from the beginning in the cns two uses are there motion sickness because of 
blocking or inhibiting vestibular vestibular apparatus and uh, um, parkinsonism because of inhibiting basal ganglia so please learn the two in the heart it is given in bradycardia it increases the heart rate and relieve bradycardia and uh, it is given in the diarrhea because it causes the it uh, decreases the contraction and relieve diarrhea it is given in aneurysis and uh, it is given for doing midriasis okay it is given in coriza coriza or pre anesthetic medication to reduce the uh, secretions so the six uses are given in uh, front of you and it is a physiological antidote for organophosphates or anticholinesterase or physiological antidote so the six uses are in front of you can you tell me the two side effects the two con contraindication what does it causes huh it relaxes uh, ciliary muscle it increases in iot so it never given in glaucoma in glaucoma it will exaggerate the glaucoma ha na wahan pe glaucoma use tha yahan pe side effect hai and never given bph benign prostatic hypertension ha na uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy never give it in bph if there is bph na it is what is bph in the males there is a gland can you see this is prostate gland the gland is enlarged so urine cannot pass because the urethra get compressed it is a disease the name of the disease is bph now urine already nahi aa raha urine is not coming there is a male in which the male is having bph so urine is not coming the male already have a trouble in passing the urine upar se sone pe sohaga you have given anticholinergic what does anticholinergic do it will relax the detrusor bhai pehle hi nahi aa raha tumne aur relax kar dala to bilkul hi nahi aayega so the bph will get exaggerated urinary retention uh, will be exaggerated never give it in bph so never give it in bph and glaucoma i am done people i am done i am done so 6 plus 2 6 plus 2 can we revise we are done with anticholinergic salt so can we revise it together ha huh? tell me the users first say ma'am yahan pe hai motion sickness and parkinsonism yahan pe hai bradycardia bradycardia in the heart here diarrhea ha na here aneurysis here for doing midriasis we want midriasis theek hai and here coriza ha na coriza and pre anesthetic medication to reduce the secretions ha na so this is the users now coming on the side effect tell me two side effects number 1 glaucoma as a contraindication never give it in glaucoma and number 2 uh, bph is a contraindication never give it so this is how i learn i never forget i never i know this m1 m2 m3 and i never forget so here basically in the cholinergic and anticholinergic i taught you two chapters right now cholinergic we are done anticholinergic we are done the only thing i didn't taught you is the drugs learn the drugs by yourself learn the classification by yourself mechanism of action i taught you both and now learn the master table uses and adverse effect i have marked here so here i have marked 9 and 4 here i have marked 6 plus 2 so don't learn the numbers i mean numbers are not important but i guess you have understood each and every why we are using you should have a reason behind that and you will never forget if you know this table now you can apply on the spot it's like mathematics i don't learn ki bhai ye user ye user no i know this table i know m1 m2 m3 that's a, that's more than sufficient now whatever question comes in my exam i will use that table like in mathematics we don't learn the solution 2 plus 2 we do it on the spot so here i apply this table on the spot when the question comes in my exam and i i think what is the use what is the side effect because i am having the concepts in me so that is a conceptual pharmacology now i wish i can give you the mnemonic here i can give you mnemonic for 9 plus 4 here i can give you mnemonic for 6 plus 2 it's very easy to create the four mnemonics here i can create it something 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 and i give it to you but blah 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 you will forget ana you can create the mnemonics also wo bhi bura nahi hai for for the last time revision but once you have concept ana even if you forget the mnemonic you can solve it ha huh? do you find this way useful have you have you ever uh, uh, studied ans with this way ha huh? see this is the master table i have shown you one master table and this is another master table i am showing you this is my another master table this one just a second this one so learn this master table this is 9 plus 4 and learn this master table 6 plus 2 that's it nothing else ha huh? na rather than learning understand each of them how many of you got it so many people are responding what about others <laughs> you are sleeping ha huh? so we are done we are done so you want me to tell you the adrenergic and anti adrenergic also with the same way or can i skip and provide you the notes adrenergic also i want you to learn the classification hana in anti adrenergic i am having alpha blocker and beta blocker hana and again i am having the master table one master table here one here one here the red and the blue the red are the users the blue are the uh, adverse effect so in the same way you can learn it here so i guess i can provide you the notes you got the orientation how to learn that give me a minute to drink the water You want me to tell? It will take another fifteen minutes to complete the three more chapters. Actually, I am having three more chapters. Adrenergic is one chapter. 
but in anti adrenergic i am having alpha blocker and beta blocker two different chapters you want me okay i will do if you are ready i don't have any problem my energy will always touching the sky if you people respond so as i taught you the first two chapters cholinergic and anti cholinergic i taught you these two chapters la listen 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 so here the neurotransmitter was acetylcholine so before starting the two chapters we have seen how does acetylcholine gets synthesized how does it get stored how does it get released how does it gets degraded now i'm teaching you the next two chapters i'm teaching you adrenergic and anti adrenergic so i cannot start it directly first i have to tell you everything about the noradrenaline because here the neurotransmitter is noradrenaline first see how does it get synthesized how does it get stored how does it get released and how does it get degraded then only you can understand the mechanism of action of these and these drugs and here we have two type of drugs alpha and beta blockers here we will take together alpha plus beta agonist but here there are two different chapters so first let's study about the catecholamine by catecholamine i mean noradrenaline people chalo iska bhi ek master table learn kar lo just learn the master table on that master table we are going to mark the red and blue <laughs> the red are the uses the blue are the side effects i will give you three master tables one for alpha beta agonist it will be common agonist one that is adrenergic drugs anti adrenergic me i will give you alpha blocker separate and beta blocker separate so three master tables are awaiting ha na for you waiting for you so let's start first ha na let me first tell you uh, noradrenaline so now i am teaching you sympathetic system i am teaching you this system sympathetic ha na we have already completed parasympathetic now let's study sympathetic in the sympathetic system you can see the neurotransmitter is noradrenaline in the sympathetic system the neurotransmitter is noradrenaline so how does it get synthesized here and released here huh how does it get synthesized so let me zoom this portion for you so let me zoom this portion for you this portion to show you how does it get synthesized ha na so this is the neuron you can see this is the neuron in this neuron this is the end of this neuron ha na now this picture is not very clear i will i will read it for you in this neuron how does it get synthesized so first tyrosine go inside tyrosine is an amino acid it will go inside ha na so tyrosine will convert into dopa dopa will convert into dopamine dopamine will go inside the vesicle and it will stored inside the vesicle inside the vesicle it will convert from dopamine to noradrenaline so first there is tyrosine then there is dopa from the dopa there is dopamine dopamine will go inside the vesicle and it will convert into noradrenaline and it will remain there in the vesicle only whenever the action potential is coming it will come it will fuse it will come out and it will act on its receptor here receptor are not muscarinic and nicotinic here receptors are alpha and beta so you have to learn the distribution of alpha and beta ha na so whenever action potential is coming at that time this vesicle is fusing and noradrenaline is coming out and it is acting on alpha and beta it will act on alpha and beta for a fraction of second but see the difference acetylcholine was also coming here acetylcholine was also coming there and it was acting on muscarinic and nicotinic receptor but noradrenaline is not acting on muscarinic and nicotinic it is acting on alpha and beta receptor ha na acetylcholine was degraded by an enzyme the name of enzyme was cholinesterase here we don't have any enzyme no 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 so how does the action get terminated it has shown its action for a fraction of millisecond whatever is the organ is it has already shown its action now what now what people ab kya karne i want to terminate its, its action so there is no enzyme available in this space there we have an enzyme here we don't have any enzyme so here there is reuptake it is reuptake so first there is axonal reuptake ha na it will go inside the axon and then vesicular reuptake it will go inside the vesicle ha na so first axonal reuptake and then vesicular and in the next cycle it will come again so it is known as reuptake mechanism reuptake so axonal reuptake is blocked by cocaine cocaine can block it and the vesicular reuptake can be blocked by resorbent you can get the questions on that ha na now please learn this distribution alpha beta this is my master table once i will explain you i will not read the master table i will give you ha na you can read it by your own so please in this only i am going to mark the uses and adverse effect of the next three chapters alpha beta agonist alpha blocker and beta blocker first learn what is the distribution of alpha receptors in human body and what is the distribution of beta receptors in human body we will take the 14 organs one by one maybe 13 to 14 organs are there blood vessels may both are present alpha causes vasoconstriction beta causes vasodilatation please learn blood vessels may both are present ha na heart may both are present ha na heart may alpha don't have much action but beta 1 uh, it increases the force contractility and velocity alpha don't present in the heart ha na in the lungs alpha are not present beta causes bronchoconstriction in the lungs beta causes bronchoconstriction in the eyes you know alpha and beta both are present and you know meiosis midriasis i have already explained you ha na in the git this both causes relaxation both of them causes relaxation in the bladder both of them causes um uh, this thing uh, both of them causes relaxation detrusor relaxation 
ठीक है यूटरस बोथ ऑफ देम कॉजेस कॉन्ट्रेक्शन आई एम सॉरी अल्फा कॉजेस कॉन्ट्रेक्शन एंड बीटा कॉजेस रिलैक्सेशन ठीक है स्प्लीन नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट पैंट्रिया नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट लीवर में बीटा कॉजेस ग्लूकोज सिंथेसिस इन द लीवर है ना मसल में इट कॉजेस ग्लूकोज सिंथेसिस ठीक है एंड इन द किडनी रैन इन सिक्रीशन बाय बीटा ठीक है दैट्स इट दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ इफ यू हैव सीन इट लेट मी स्टार्ट द फर्स्ट चैप्टर एड्रेनर्जिक लर्न द क्लासिफिकेशन बाय योर सेल्फ लर्न द क्लासिफिकेशन लेट मी शो यू द मास्टर टेबल दिस इज द मास्टर टेबल यू कैन सी द यूजर्स साइड इफेक्ट एंड यू कैन कोरिलेट है ना यू कैन कोरिलेट नाउ आई एम नॉट रीडिंग बिकॉज़ टाइम इज लेस बट यू अंडरस्टूड द वे एंड द सेम आई एम हैविंग द सेम आई एम हैविंग फॉर अल्फा ब्लॉकर एंड द सेम आई एम हैविंग बीटा ब्लॉकर लेट मी शो यू द अल्फा एंड बीटा ब्लॉकर जस्ट अ सेकंड दिस इज ऑल बीटा ब्लॉकर्स कैन यू सी ऑल बीटा ब्लॉकर्स है ना यू हैव टू इमेजिन द रिवर्स एंड दिस इज ऑल अल्फा ब्लॉकर्स लेट मी शो यू अल्फा दिस इज ऑल अल्फा ब्लॉकर्स यू हैव टू इमेजिन द रिवर्स सो थ्री मोर मास्टर टेबल्स आई हैव प्रोवाइडेड यू इट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड टू यू इन द नोट्स आई होप यू गॉट द ओरिएंटेशन वंस द मास्टर टेबल इज विथ यू इट्स वेरी इजी द सेम मास्टर टेबल अप्लाई हियर अप्लाई हियर अप्लाई हियर द यूजर्स साइड इफेक्ट यू कैन लर्न द नंबर नाइन प्लस टू लाइक दैट है ना यू सी द यूजर्स एंड एडवर्स इफेक्ट द गुड थिंग्स आर द यूजर्स दैट हार्मफुल थिंग्स आर द एडवर्स इफेक्ट इन दिस वे यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द मास्टर टेबल्स ओके सो लेट मी कम ऑन द नेक्स्ट सिस्टम रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम क्विक थ्री मोर सिस्टम्स वी हैव टू गो सो लेट्स कम ऑन द नेक्स्ट सिस्टम द नेक्स्ट सिस्टम इज रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम कैन आई स्टार्ट द रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम आई वॉन्ट टू टीच यू द ड्रग्स फॉर अस्थमा यू मे अम्स अप you people are still alive alive can i start the next system respiratory system people so let's start the next system respiratory system the drugs for asthma you cannot understand the drugs of asthma if you don't know what is asthma so as usual before starting the drugs for asthma i will show you all drugs in one page hai na i will show you in one master table before that you have to understand how does asthma occur so every time whenever i start any chapter first i tell you the pathology then i come on the pharmacology i always say without pathology you cannot understand pharmacology so let me tell you asthma in just one minute what is asthma so first tell me what is asthma in the you know complete respiratory tract we have trachea we have bronchi that divides in bronchioles 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 so trachea and bronchi are hypersensitive in the asthma the trachea and bronchi are hypersensitive see this is a normal trachea and this is the trachea of a person who is having asthma compare the trachea trachea and the bronchi trachea and the bronchi ha na now here if some allergen is going ha na i don't have asthma so if any dust uh, pollen grain or any perfume or any chemical is going in my trachea my trachea don't contract i don't have bronchoconstriction it will go inside it's okay i'm having kupffer cells i'm having cilia they will take care of that that foreign particles but the person who have the asthma they are very hypersensitive they are very hypersensitive as soon as the particular stimulus different people have different stimulus ha na for some the stimulus is the dust for some the stimulus is pollen grain for some the stimulus is some chemical so whenever that particular stimulus is going in the trachea the trachea and bronchi undergo spas undergo spas so it is a protective mechanism body do not want the dust to go inside no just, just okay, imagine in the lumen of my trachea there is a dust particle but my trachea is allowing it to go inside because i am not hypersensitive i don't have asthma i am having kupffer cells macrophages not kupffer cells i'm sorry i'm having alveolar macrophages and i'm having ciliary action i'm having other defense mechanism that will take care of that foreign particle dust particle but if i am having asthma and in the lumen of my trachea there is a dust particle my trachea will not allow the dust particle to go inside and trachea will undergo spas bronchi will undergo spasm so it is a protective mechanism the body is trying to prevent the foreign particle to go inside wo to theek hai the dust will not go inside like a person can't breathe person have a attack of asthma during which the person have dyspnea person can't breathe because trachea undergo spasm air cannot go inside outside person cannot do the breathing dyspnea so person try to relieve that person do the cough person do the cough and person have wheezing because the lumen is narrowed you know it's a narrow pipe now air when passing from a wide lumen no sound is there but when the same air passes from a narrow lumen there is a particular sound that is known as wheeze so asthma is a disease in which three things is there dyspnea wheeze and cough this is asthma huh this is asthma how many of you got it so this is the spasm ha na so there is spasmodic narrowing of the bronchi and the trachea i mean now after the session i will have the dinner maybe another one hour i will complete three more systems and complete pharma is done theek hai for me it's one day but if i give you compact pharma in one session it will be highly useful for the students who are attending live and maybe for many students who will watch the recording later on for years 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 so that will create a history ha na so one day dinner doesn't matter i mean i will take it delayed a late but uh, it will be useful for the students right so if i give a break in between the continuity will be lost from my side also from your side also i do not want that i want that to be covered in one shot 
one shot means one shot that is a commitment anyways so that is the asthma i told you that is asthma that the, the definition you have seen now tell me the mechanism how does it occur imagine i am having the asthma and my for me the allergen this is the allergen i'm drawing it can be dust pollen grain or anything so this is allergen so as soon as the allergen enters the five cells will come one by one you have to learn the sequence then only you can understand the drug. Dekho, the allergen is going inside me. The first cell which comes in contact here is the antigen presenting cell, APC. The antigen presenting cell will engulf the antigen. The angle antigen is engulfed by antigen presenting cell. It is degraded into multiple pieces. After degrading into multiple pieces, it is presented on the surface like this. It is presented on the surface. It will present it to the next cell. Sajaki wo agli cell ko de dega. Who's the next cell here? Huh? Who's the next cell? The next cell here is helper TH1 cell. Helper TH1 cell. Helper TH... Uh, uh, helper TH1 cell. Nahi. Helper TH2 cell. I'm sorry. It will get stimulated. The helper TH2 cell will get stimulated. It will secrete interleukin-4 from inside. Interleukin-4 will go to the next cell. The next cell is B, beta lymphocyte. B lymphocyte. The B lymphocyte will convert into plasma cell. Anna, plasma cell will form antibodies. Which antibodies? There are five types of antibodies. IgG, IgA, MDE. It will form E. Only E, IgE. Anna, this IgE will go to the last cell. Who's the last cell? It will go in the blood. It will go on the mast cell. And this IgE will get deposited on the surface of the mast cell like this. It will remain there forever, ever, ever. And this is known as sensitization. It will be there forever. The first time allergen is entering, nothing will happen. Allergy will not happen. Asthma will not happen. Nothing will happen. Now imagine the same allergen enters the second time onwards. Second, third, fourth, any time. Second time onwards. And now, so as soon as it will enter, the same allergen. This complete thing is done in my body. Now the same allergen is entering again. APC will recognize that you are the same. It was the first time. The body has an immunity memory. A very strong immunity memory. If the same allergen is entering even after many years, the body can recognize it. APC will recognize that you, you are the one for which they really come jump karke rakhai. for which we have done the entire process we will not repeat the process no you directly go to your antibody so second time onwards it is diverted directly to its antibody so this will come to its antibody and bind here the antibody is not free the antibody is present on the surface of the mast cell so as soon as the antigen bind on the surface of the antibody it will give a signal to the mast cell on receiving the signal to the mast cell the mast cell will rupture and the granules will come out mast cell will rupture and granules will come out and uh, the granules contain many things the most important in the asthma is leukotrin it contains prostaglandin also it contains plated activating factor histamine serotonin but the most important is leukotrin b4 and c4 leukotrin now this is the trachea this is the trachea of the person who have the asthma inside which this all is happening and uh, on the surface of the trachea and the bronchi leukotrin receptors are present leukotrin receptors are present so this leukotrin will come bind with its receptor and causes the bronchoconstriction and this is how asthma occurs say yes Everyone say yes. Now in this diagram, I will show you five drugs. I will show you five drugs of asthma. Everyone first give me a thumbs up. Got it? This is how asthma takes place. So can I tell you? Huh? Now there are two patients in front of me. Anna, patient A, patient B, Ram, Sham or any two patients. Anna. Patient A is already having an attack of asthma. Now he wants prophylaxis and he wants that next attack do not come. Currently attack is not there. So he wants prophylaxis. Patient B currently is dyspnea, can't breathe. The patient is coughing. The patient is having wheezing. He is an attack of uh, asthma. He wants treatment. So A wants prophylaxis, B wants treatment. So let me tell you the drugs for prophylaxis. Let me tell you the drugs for treatment. Would you understand this? Did you understand this? If you understand this, you can understand it clearly. So let me tell you the drugs for prophylaxis for asthma. Huh? Can I give a drug which is known as antibody against antibody? Antibody against Ig antibody. It is known as omalizumab. Huh? If the antibody, Ig antibody get neutralized, imagine. If Ig antibody get neutralized, huh? so Ig antibody will not come on the mast cell and if this antigen is entering the second time, Ig antibody are already neutralized. The attack will not come. So we can give antibody against antibody that is omalizumab. Number one. Number one. If we are not giving antibody against antibody that is omalizumab. Number two, we can give a drug which is known as mast cell stabilizer. So even, even the, the, the antigen is coming second time, it is coming and binding here, the mast cell will not rupture because it is stabilized. It will not rupture. So this drug is known as mast cell stabilizer mast cell stabilizer so first drug is antibody against antibody antibody against ige antibody the first drug the second drug is mast cell stabilizer Hana, either you neutralize the antibody if you are not neutralizing it's okay let it bind with the mast cell stabilize the mast cell Hana, if you are not stabilizing the mast cell okay let it rupture let it rupture when the antigen is coming the second time so it will go here it will bind and the and the, it will rupture so leukotrin will come out now leukotrin will come out give leukotrin antagonist 
गिव ल्यूकोट्रिन का एंटागोनिस्ट दैट इज जैल्यूटोन जैल्यूटोन ल्यूकोट्रिन को एंटागोनाइज कर दो सो नो ल्यूकोट्रिन इट विल नॉट गो एंड बाइंड विद इट रिसेप्टर सो आइदर गिव एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट आईजी एंटीबॉडी सो न रहेगा बांस न बजेगी बांसुरी आपने आईजी एंटीबॉडी को न्यूट्रलाइज कर दिया है ना सो दैट इज ओमालिजुमैब है ना इफ यू आर नॉट न्यूट्रलाइजिंग इट्स ओके स्टेबलाइज द मसल सो इवन इफ द एंटीजन इज कमिंग इट इज नॉट रॉप्चरिंग द ग्रैन्यूल्स आर नॉट कमिंग आउट है ना सो यू कैन गिव कीटोटिफिन दैट इज मसल स्टेबलाइजर इफ यू आर नॉट स्टेबलाइजिंग इट्स ओके लेट इट रॉप्चर सो द ग्रैन्यूल्स विल कम आउट है ना द ग्रैन्यूल्स आर कमिंग आउट सो द ग्रैन्यूल्स कंटेन ल्यूकोट्रिन सो गिव ल्यूकोट्रिन एंटागोनिस्ट दैट इज द ल्यूटोन इफ यू आर नॉट गिविंग ल्यूकोट्रिन एंटागोनिस्ट इट्स ओके लेट देम गो दे विल गो वाया ब्लड एंड बाइंड वेयर दे विल बाइंड ऑन इट्स रिसेप्टर ऑन द ट्रेकिया सो ब्लॉक दैट रिसेप्टर सो ब्लॉक द रिसेप्टर of the leukotriene you are not antagonizing leukotriene no so block its receptor so at least they cannot bind with their receptor so leukotriene receptor blocker are there ha na so there the, the leukotriene receptor blockers are montelukast and zafirlukast are there ha na so these are the four drugs we use in prophylaxis can you name the four drugs can you please name the four drugs people i tried my best ha na this is the limits these are the heights ha i told you the four drugs for prophylaxis of asthma can you please tell me people respond na anyone ha huh? say ma'am antibody against ig antibody number 1 number 2 mast cell stabilizer okay number 3 leukotriene antagonist and number 4 leukotriene receptor blocker these are the four drugs i taught you ha na four drugs i taught you ha na along with the leukotriene here when the mast cell are rupturing leukotriene are synthesized inside the mast cell na listen listen one more drug i can give you here Uh, this leukotriene is present in the mast cell now once the mast cell is ruptured then leukotriene is coming out so leukotriene is synthesized from the uh, from the, uh, uh, the phospholipid so you can give steroids also steroids inhibit the synthesis of leukotriene you can give steroid so synthesis mat do either inhibit the synthesis or antagonize it or block its receptor so we can give steroids also so i taught you five drugs for profile access of asthma so first is antibody against antibody second is mast cell stabilizer third is steroid that inhibit the synthesis of leukotriene fourth is antagonist of leukotriene and fifth is blocker receptor blocker of leukotriene i tried my best you people are not responding but now imagine the person is already have the attack person b these are the five drugs i can give to a ha na for profile access for the next attack so if the antigen is entering the second time attack will not occur either antibodies are already neutralized or the mast cell is stabilized or inside the mast cell leukotriene is not synthesized or leukotriene is antagonist or the receptors are blocked so this is the profile access but if the patient already have the attack nothing will work you have to do the bronchodilator ha na patient is an attack patient b it is an attack so bronchoconstriction already occurred now you have to give only one drug bronchodilator so bronchodilator for treatment and remaining for remaining all for prophylaxis we are done with asthma drugs how many of you got it i told you the mechanism of action people respond please i request got it ha huh? adarsh uh, sapura brijesh kezia anyone give me a thumbs up got it can we go ahead hanji yes so this is the mechanism of action so bronchodilators are for treatment of asthma and remaining all the drugs are for prophylaxis for the next attack ha na i am having two patient a b a require prophylaxis the attack is already over now patient do not want the next attack and b is in attack so to b i will give bronchodilator but to a i can give the various combination from this ha na Say yes, say yes, na na. So I already told you the mechanism of action of all prophylaxis drugs. Antibody against antibody is O Mali Zumab. O Mali Zumab. Steroids are the drugs which inhibit the synthesis of leukotriene. Ha na? Steroids are there. Mast cell stabilizers are there. Ketotifen, ha na? Chromoglyc sodium chromoglycolate or ketotifen is there. Ma leukotriene antagonist are there. That is montelukast and zafirlukast. And uh, leukotriene uh, receptor blocker is not given here. This is leukotriene receptor blocker actually. The uh, leukotriene antagonist is not given here. The zaluton. You can write that also. Ha na? So these are the five drugs. I hope you all got it. I hope you all got it. You can see it here. See, see, see. Everyone see. Can you see? This is the mast cell. Okay. है ना दिस इज द एंटीबॉडी दिस इज द आईजीई एंटीबॉडी बाइंडिंग टू द मास है ना नाउ द एंटीजन इज एंटरिंग सेकंड टाइम दिस इज द एंटीजन एंटरिंग सेकंड टाइम ऑनवर्ड्स सो दिस एंटीजन इज डायरेक्टली कमिंग टू इट्स एंटीबॉडी एंड बाइंडिंग हियर सो इट इज गिविंग सिग्नल टू द मास सेल द मास सेल विल रप्चर एंड द ग्रैन्यूल्स विल कम आउट द ग्रैन्यूल्स कंटेन ल्यूकोट्रिन ल्यूकोट्रिन इज गोइंग टू इट्स रिसेप्टर प्रेजेंट ऑन द ट्रीक एंड द ब्रोंका एंड कॉजिंग ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रक्शन हियर वी वांट टू प्रिवेंट इट एट वेरियस लेवल्स सो द फर्स्ट लेवल वी कैन प्रिवेंट इज एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडी ओमालिजुमैब द फर्स्ट लेवल सो एंटीबॉडी नहीं बचेगी न रहेगा बांस न बांस सॉरी यू गॉट इट नंबर 1 नंबर 2 स्टेबलाइज द मास सेल यू कैन गिव मास सेल स्टेबलाइजर्स 
यू कैन रीड द नेम्स है ना नंबर थ्री है ना यू इनहिबिट द सिंथेसिस ऑफ ल्यूकोट्रेन इन साइड द मास सेल सो यू कैन गिव द स्टेरॉइड है ना और यू एंटागोनाइज आफ्टर इट्स रिलीज सो यू कैन गिव दिलेटोन और यू कैन ब्लॉक द रिसेप्टर्स सो यू कैन गिव ल्यूकोट्रेन रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकर दैट इज जेफिर ल्यूकास्ट और मॉन्टे ल्यूकास्ट or this is all for prophylaxis the five drugs for prophylaxis but if you want the treatment you have to give the bronchodilator you have to give the bronchodilator finally bronchodilator ha na so i will teach you only bronchodilators there are three type of bronchodilators people which are very important you get many questions on that beta 2 sympathomimetic drugs methyl xanthins the most important is theophylline methyl xanthin matlab theophylline the prototype drug and anticholinergics they all cause bronchodilator but the mechanism is different This is also causing bronchodilatation. This is also causing bronchodilatation. Also bronchodilatation. So these all are the three drugs which are given in the treatment. Prophylaxis. I am not treating te teaching you. I have given you the mechanism of action of all. You can understand the mechanism of action and the classification all here. Now the use of all of them is prophylaxis and adverse effect. You can learn by yourself. I will give you the master table. Now I want to teach you the three drugs which are bronchodilators. Which three drugs are bronchodilators which are given to patient A, uh, patient uh, B, whatever is the patient? I mean the patient is in the attack of the asthma. I'm having two patient A required prophylaxis. I can give this all. B is an attack, so I can give only one drug, bronchodilator. I'm having three options. Ha na? Beta two sympathomimetic, methyl xanthin, and anticholinergics. Let me tell you these three. So beta two sympathomimetics, methyl xanthin, that is theophylline, and anticholinergics. So you first tell me the name of the drugs inside each. mechanism of action of these which is ultra important and you get many mcqs on that and adverse effect you say man why not use use of all of them is asthma come on i am teaching you drugs for asthma so asthma 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 use to ek hai ha na so let me tell you this okay so let's start one by one theek hai only three three things on each so three things on this three on this three on this so three minute three minute three minute in the next 10 minute we will finish asthma and we will move on the next chapter ha na you got it say yes people samajh mein aa raha hai hmm? enjoying learning so let's start beta 2 sympathomimetic drugs theek hai acha can i tell you the mechanism of all three together at one place why not why not can you see this is this is trachea trachea and bronchi theek hai in this diagram you can see it is constricted this is bronchoconstriction the trachea and the bronchi they are constricted and in this diagram they are dilated this is bronchodilatation ha na so in the muscle of the trachea can you see in the muscle in the muscle ठीक है देर आर सर्टन रिसेप्टर्स देर आर सर्टन रिसेप्टर्स सर्टन केमिकल्स बाइंड विद द रिसेप्टर्स सम कॉजेस ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रक्शन सम कॉजेस ब्रोंको डायलेटेशन सो फर्स्ट लर्न नॉर्मल सो इन माय ट्रैकिया एंड ब्रोंकाई हु कॉजेस कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड इन माय ट्रैकिया एंड ब्रोंकाई हु कॉजेस डायलेटेशन इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ दीस थ्री ड्रग्स प्लीज सी प्लीज सी सो दिस इज नॉर्मल ट्रैकिया नाइदर कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड नॉर रिलैक्स्ड सो सी दिस इज नॉर्मल ट्रैकिया ठीक है नो दिस इज कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड है ना एंड दिस इज डायलेटेड ठीक है सो यू हैव दिस इज नॉर्मल you can see this is normal theek hai now you want contraction or you want relaxation see 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 for for relaxation for relaxation one thing is required that is cyclic amp cyclic amp causes relaxation cyclic amp causes relaxation see i'm very good cyclic amp badha do it will cause relaxation so who synthesize cyclic amp there is an enzyme the name of the enzyme is adenyl cyclase adenyl cyclase synthesizes cyclic amp it synthesizes cyclic amp from atp so we want to increase or stimulate adenyl cyclase more adenyl cyclase more cyclic amp more relaxation ha na and cyclic amp is destroyed by phospho uh, this uh, pde ha na uh, phosphodiesterase phosphodiesterase enzyme it is inhibited uh, it is degraded by phosphodiesterase so i want a drug which inhibit phosphodiesterase ha na so that cyclic amp is not degraded it will remain there so i want a drug which stimulate acetylcholine and i want a drug which inhibit phosphodiesterase how many of you got it how many of you got it so relaxation is caused by only one thing that is cyclic amp cyclic amp contraction contraction is done by two things what two things number one on on the on the muscle on the muscle can you see the muscle muscarinic receptors are present so acetylcholine causes the contraction muscarinic receptors are present ha na and adenosine receptors are present adenosine causes the contraction ha na so i want a drug that inhibit acetylcholine that inhibit adenosine Hana, how many of you got it? Say yes if you all getting it. Can I tell you? Hmm? So this is normal tone. This is contraction, and this is relaxation. Okay. So contraction is done by two things. Number one, acetylcholine, and number two, adenosine. It causes contraction, and relaxation is done by only one thing: cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP causes relaxation. The simple funda. Hana. Now cyclic AMP is synthesized. by adenyl cyclase and it is degraded 
it is degraded by an another enzyme phosphodiesterase theek hai now in asthma what i want you tell me asthma me i want what you you use your brain and tell me i want contraction or i want relaxation i want to treat a patient with asthma you say obviously ma'am you want relaxation there is already bronchospasm there is already bronchoconstriction you do not want more contraction no 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 patient will die you want relaxation so i want relaxation so i want more acetylcholine if i want relaxation i want more acetylcholine please understand i want more and more acetylcholine so i want a drug that stimulate adrenal cyclase ha na so that more synthesis is there or i want a drug that inhibit phosphodiesterase ha na that inhibit phosphodiesterase so degradation is not there if synthesis is more and degradation is not there acetylcholine will increase acetylcholine concentration will increase so beta beta agonist or beta sympathetic mimetic drugs stimulate adrenal cyclase this is the mechanism and theophylline थियोफाइलिन है ना थियोफाइलिन इज द ड्रग दैट इनिबिट फॉस्फोटाइस्ट्रेस ठीक है ठीक है नाउ हियर आल्सो आई एम हैविंग टू है ना एसिटाइलकोलिन एंड एडिनोसिन दे कॉजेस कॉन्ट्रैक्शन आई डू नॉट वांट कॉन्ट्रैक्शन सो आई वांट टू इनिबिट एसिटाइलकोलिन सो आई वांट एंटीकोलिनर्जिक ड्रग्स एंटीकोलिनर्जिक ड्रग्स है ना और एंटी मस्करनिक ड्रग्स ठीक है एंड आई डू नॉट वांट एडिनोसिन आल्सो आई वांट टू ब्लॉक दैट आल्सो सो थियोफाइलिन हैव डबल एक्शन थियोफाइलिन इनिबिट फॉस्फोटाइस्ट्रेस एंजाइम and it it blocks the adenosin receptor so theophylin ka mechanism yahan bhi aayega so this is the mechanism of action of the three drugs i taught you in one place and i tried my best to explain you hmm say now shall i say it again or you got it brijesh you got it ha huh? where is tamil ha huh? you all got it or shall i say it again ha huh? shall i say it again the mechanism of action of the three drugs theophylin have double action so can you tell me here can i write down in one one line if you tell me the mechanism of action of all three drugs what is the mechanism of action of sympathetic mimetics say ma'am it stimulate an enzyme known as adenyl cyclase if adenyl cyclase is more cyclic amp will be more and if cyclic amp will be more relaxation will be more so this is the mechanism of action of beta 2 sympathetic mimetics what is the mechanism of uh, 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 theophylline or methylxanthine it is having two mechanism double mechanism number one it inhibit an enzyme phosphodiesterase so there is no degradation of acetylcholine and right? acetylcholine is not degraded so again acetyl uh, cyclic amp is not degraded so cyclic amp will increase and it will cause a relaxation ha right? no number one and number two it blocks the adenosine receptor adenosine is blocked and by this also it causes relaxation what is the mechanism of action of anticholinergic it blocks the muscarinic receptors the m3 receptors present on the lung if you remember on the lung we have m3 receptors okay shall i tell it once again so here we have double action okay so i will write it once more plus but please concentrate so this is normal tone ha na this is normal trachea i want to contract the trachea or i want to relax ha na this is trachea ha na contract or relax for contraction two things are required for contraction two things are required acetylcholine causes the contraction adenosine causes the contraction and for relaxation only one thing is required cyclic amp causes relaxation so in uh, in my trachea currently currently you know there is a balance not contracted not relaxed but whenever there is a contraction these two causes the contraction and whenever there is a relaxation this causes the relaxation please learn this is general this is physiology people <laughs> i don't know whether i am teaching you physiology or pathology or pharmacology please this is physiology i guess everyone knows that no so contraction is done by two two transmitters and relaxation is done by only one so in asthma what do you want you tell me first asthma me tumko kya chahiye you want contraction say ma'am no bhai no we don't want contraction i want to treat the patient i do not want to kill my patient ha na in asthma i want relaxation you want relaxation means you want you do not want acetylcholine you do not want adenosine you want more and more as a cyclic amp Hana, this is the funda. This is the funda. So by the drugs, I want to such, I want to give such drug which increase cyclic AMP, which block acetylcholine and which block adenosine. I want such drugs. Hana, now you tell me how does cyclic AMP synthesize, and how does cyclic AMP get degraded? So cyclic AMP का synthesis कौन करता है? Who does? And cyclic AMP का degradation कौन करता है? Who does? So there is an enzyme. For both one one enzyme is required. Name the enzyme. So for synthesis, the name of the enzyme is adenyl cyclase. and for degradation the name of the enzyme is phosphodiesterase pde ha na so if you want you know you want to treat your patient asthma you want more and more relaxation you do not want contraction you want to relax ha na bronco relaxation theek hai bronco dilatation so you want to increase cyclic amp so you want more synthesis and you want less degradation you want more synthesis cyclic amp should be synthesis more and you want it should be degraded less so if you want more synthesis give a drug that stimulate adenyl cyclase and give a drug that inhibit phosphodiesterase Say yes. 
say yes you got it so name the drug so the name the drug which which stimulate adenyl cyclase it is beta 2 sympathomimetic drug that is the mechanism of action and name the drug which inhibit phosphodiesterase it's theophylline methylxanthine or theophylline that inhibit phosphodiesterase so that is the mechanism of action of these two drugs Hana? now coming on you do not want contraction you want relaxation but you do not want contraction so you have to block these two you have to block acetylcholine for acetylcholine blockage you give m3 blockers I mean, you give anticholine esterase. Anticholine esterase will block the M receptors, M3 block, M3 receptors on the muscle. And you want to block the adenosine receptors also. Adenosine receptor blockers are again theophylline. Theophylline have a double rule. So I taught you the three drugs. I taught you the three drugs. Let me tell you the mechanism of action of all three. What is the mechanism of action of beta 2 sympathomimetic drugs? Say, ma'am, it stimulates acetylcholine. Now, now, what is the mechanism of action of theophylline? Say, ma'am, it's having double action. It inhibits phosphodiesterase also and it block adenosine also. Hana. And what is the mechanism of action of anticholine stress? They block M3 receptors on the lung. I cannot simplify more than this. These are the heights. I have touched the skies, I guess. Third time I have repeated it. Ab kis ko samaj mein hai? Hmm? So, Abhinav and Priyanka Reddy. You, you asked me to repeat. So, did you got it now? Abhinav and Priyanka and others also. No? Everyone got it. British, you got it. Everyone. Can we go ahead? So this is the mechanism of action we are done. Now what? Okay, you know the drugs. You know mechanism of action. Now adverse effect. Coming on the next unit, people. It's already 10.30. Chalo. So let me tell you one by one all three categories. Beta 2 agonists, learn the drugs by yourself. Short acting, long acting. Learn the drugs. Classification. Mechanism of action, I already told you. It activate adenyl cyclase. More adenyl cyclase, more synthesis of cyclic MP. More synthesis of cyclic MP, more relaxation. More relaxation, bronchodilation, asthma will be treated. So it stimulate adenyl cyclase. More adenyl cyclase stimulation, more cyclic MP, more relaxation. I hope you all got it. Anna, Tike, Chalo. Adverse effect, I guess everyone know. Beta agonist, ke adverse effect. I told you in ANS also. It's tachycardia, palpitation. You can see that master table. Usme se ho jayega. Tremor, spasm, hypokalemia. So, beta 2 sympathomimetics coming on methylxanthines. You know the drugs methylxanthine. The most important is theophylline. Aminophylline is also there. By the way, caffeine also. Caffeine is also a methylxanthine. And now, caffeine is present in coffee. And I drink too much of coffee. Hana. So, caffeine, so methylxanthines. So, they are bronchodilators although. That's why after drinking coffee, we feel refreshed. I feel refreshed at least. So, there is bronchodilation in the lungs. More oxygen is going in the lungs. So, the organs are getting more oxygen and I get, you know, a little bit of refreshment after having a cup of coffee. That may be one of the reasons. I know it is a bronchodilator. Anyways, so methylxanthines. We, we don't give caffeine as a treatment. I'm just telling you it's a beverage. I know it is also one belonging to the category methylxanthine, which is present in the coffee, caffeine. Anyways, currently we give theophylline here. What does it do? It is having double action. I know first action and second action. Number one, it blocks the enzyme phosphodiesterase because phosphodiesterase causes the degradation of cyclic AMP. So this enzyme is blocked. Now there is no one which is causing the degradation of cyclic AMP. So it inhibits the enzyme phosphodiesterase. Phosphodiesterase is gone. So the degradation of cyclic AMP is not done now. Cyclic AMP will concentrate now. It will accumulate and it will cause a relaxation, bronchodilation. Number two, it blocks the adenosine receptor. Adenosine receptor that causes contraction. Now the receptors are blocked and there is a relaxation. I hope you got it. Adverse effect, it is having very thero, uh, thero, uh, no, narrow therapeutic index, the theophylline. Hana, optimum concentration is 5 to 20 microgram. More than 20, 20 to 40, it causes arrhythmia. More than 40, it causes convulsion and death. So it's having very narrow. 5 to 20 is the optimal concentration. You get a question on that. We are done with this, done this. Coming on the last one, anticholinergic. You already know the mechanism. Learn the drugs. Ipratropium and teotropium. Only two drugs are there. They are less efficacious. That's why used for prophylaxis, not for emergency use. Okay, they block the M3 receptors. They block the M3 receptors. And that's why they cause a the bronchodilatation. Got it. Okay, we are done. So we are done. Read the question. Theophylline used in asthma because it is a bronchodilator or mucolytic or anti secretory or anti inflammatory. I guess simple question. Very simple question. What is the correct answer, people? What is the correct answer? Chalo jaldi. Jaldi. Fast. What is the correct answer? Theophylline is what? Of course, it's bronchodilator. You people are taking too much time. Yes, of course. Of course, Andy, the correct answer is A. Yes. Yes, Safura, correct answer is A. Okay. So, which of the following is not a bronchodilator? There are three types of bronchodilator I taught you. Beta, beta 2 agonist, methylxanthine, steroids or anticholinergic, which is not a bronchodilator. I told you three now, which is an exception here. Hmm? Which is an exception here. So, yes. So, here steroid is not a bronchodilator. It is used for prophylaxis. It inhibits the synthesis of leukotriene, but it is not causing the bronchodilatation. 
एब्सोल्युटली राइट ओके ओमालीजुमैब इज व्हाट इट इज एन एंटी आईजीएम एंटी आईजीजी एंटी आईजी और एंटी आईजीडी ओमालीजुमैब इज एन एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडी ओमालीजुमैब एब इट इज एन एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडी सो एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट व्हिच एंटीबॉडी इज इट आईजीएम आईजीजी आईजी और आईजीडी यस इट इज एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडी आईजीई सो करेक्ट आंसर इज सी एंड यू ऑल आर राइट वेरी गुड सो कैन आई कम ऑन द नेक्स्ट सिस्टम ब्लड ब्लड फॉलोड बाय एंडोक्राइन वी वांट टू पैक इट आफ्टर दैट कैन वी स्टार्ट शो मी सम एनर्जी चलो लेट्स स्टार्ट ब्लड लेट्स स्टार्ट ब्लड इन द ब्लड आई वांट टू टीच यू एंटीकोएगुलेंट्स ओनली वन चैप्टर द अल्ट्रा इंपॉर्टेंट एंटीकोएगुलेंट्स है ना एंटीकोएगुलेंट्स देयर आर टू टाइप ऑफ एंटीकोएगुलेंट्स पैरेंट्रल है ना द प्रोटोटाइप ड्रग इज हिपारिन ठीक है एंड ओरल द प्रोटोटाइप ड्रग द प्रोटोटाइप ड्रग हियर इज वारफेरिन ओरल मींस वारफेरिन टैबलेट्स आर अवेलेबल है ना पैरेंट्रल मींस हिपारिन डोंट कम इन द टैबलेट फॉर्म इट इज कम इन इंजेक्टेबल फॉर्म सो इट इज कम इन सबक्यूटेनियस फॉर्म सबक्यूटेनियस इंजेक्शंस आर देयर है ना सो हिपारिन के इंजेक्शंस आते हैं वी हैव हिपारिन इंजेक्शंस ठीक है इट इज पैरेंट्रल एंड दिस वन इज ओरल सो वी हैव टू टाइप ऑफ एंटीकोएगुलेंट नो यू कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड एंटीकोएगुलेंट इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड कोएगुलेंट so first understand coagulation then we will understand what is anticoagulation so imagine i got a cut over here what will happen so of course ma'am you will bleed ha no so if anyone have any cut over here any any part of the body we have injury we will bleed what happens next how long i will bleed of course i will have injury anywhere on the body imagine i am having a cut here so i will bleed but how long you will say ma'am you will bleed for the next few seconds or next few minutes after that bleeding stop automatically have you ever thought how does the bleeding stop automatically how does because again i say the god is great god has given a mechanism inside us a inbuilt mechanism that is known as hemostasis the inbuilt mechanism is known as hemostasis what is hemostasis hemo means bleeding and stasis means stoppage so it is stoppage of the bleeding automatically that's why i don't bother if we have a minute injury here and there we don't bother we all have 5 liters of blood ha no we all have 5 liters of blood that is the fluid we all have the adult body now imagine if i have cut and hemostasis god has not given hemostasis to us so that blood will leak 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 from the you know injured blood vessel and we will go in shock and we will die thankfully this doesn't happen because god has given a inbuilt mechanism that is hemostasis so if there is the blood vessel this is a blood vessel and this is the endothelial lining of the blood vessel i know and you can see here the blood vessel is interrupted i mean this is the site of the injury and here bleeding is taking place so automatically here the clot will form here the clot first the platelet will come it will seal the area so that the bleeding will stop but this is a temporary clot it is known as primary clot it will re rupture we have to stabilize it so stabilization ke liye avao mudde pe stabilization ke liye we require a thread dhaga chahiye bandhne ke liye dhage se bandho we require a thread for stabilization so first platelet will seal the area so that just suppose i have a cut here so the blood vessel is injured ha no bleeding 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 i want to seal it ha no so platelet will seal that area but it is temporary it is known as primary clot i want to convert the primary clot into a you know secondary clot the stable clot so i need a thread the thread is fibrin what is fibrin in my blood 12 coagulation factors are present factor number 1 two factor number 12 the 12 coagulation factors are present factor number 1 is fibrin ha na so but they are all are all are inactive so how does it get active so there is a cascade it is not directly we can activate one and one will come as a thread and tie it no there is a particular cascade intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway common pathway so this is the cascade now please learn this cascade understand this cascade then only you can understand the anticoagulants otherwise you can't understand and anticoagulant will be a fun for you if you understood this cascade do minute mein main padha dungi just in 5 minutes i will i will uh, just complete the anticoagulant if you understand this cascade and how does i want to activate one why i want to activate one fibrin i want to make the thread imagine the thread over the platelet clot the platelet clot is already there i want to tie it with a thread this is my thread this is my thread i want to stabilize the primary clot and convert it into secondary clot i need thread but it cannot activate directly i need a cascade to activate it and finally once it is getting activated it will stabilize the clot so how does fibrin get activated so there are two pathways intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway in intrinsic pathway as soon as we have the injury ha na factor 12 get activated 12 leads to activation of 11 ha na 12 leads to activation of first 12 is there then 12 leads to activation of 11 11 leads to activation of 9 ha na 9 in presence of 8 leads to activation of 10 10 in presence of 2 leads to activation of 1 finally this is intrinsic plus common here we have 7 let me write you have to write ha na you have to learn without this there is no escape learn to karna padega so 12 leads to activation of 11 9 8 10 5 2 1 this is intrinsic plus common extrinsic may we have only 7 7 directly activate 10 so i mean to say this is intrinsic pathway 
this is extrinsic pathway this is common pathway please learn it please learn it please i know then i will tell you the mechanism of action of warfare in here and mechanism of action of heparin here but ye ye basic hai if you don't understand this you can't understand warfare in heparin say people say respond hai na this is intrinsic pathway this is extrinsic pathway and this is common because this is coming in both so if i say intrinsic if i say intrinsic you have to say ma'am 12 11 9 8 10 5 2 1 you have to say them in a sequence hai na and if i say extrinsic you have to say ma'am 7 
uh, without injury to the blood vessel, sometimes the clot form, without injury. This is not hemostasis. I call this mechanism as hemostasis and it is useful for us. Hemostasis, it is for stoppage of the bleeding. If don't occur, we will bleed, bleed, bleed and we will die. I, this is useful. It's not a disease, it's physiology. But without injury, if the same clot is formed, the same platelet plus fibrin, mechanism is exactly same. I don't call it hemostasis, I call it thrombus. It's a disease. It's a disease because it is interrupting the blood flow to an organ. The organ can have ischemia. Now, now if, depending if it is an artery, if it is a vein, there can be edema in that organ. It can be arterial thrombus, it can be venous thrombus. Got my point? So the disease is thrombus. Hana, there is a patient in my clinic having thrombus. Hana, the person is having DVT, deep vein thrombosis. Hana, deep veins, the lag veins, it is the most common site. Sometimes it can lead to pulmonary thromboembolism. Got my point? Hana, the patient is having thrombus. So I do not want the clot to make here. So I will give the drug anticoagulant. So anticoagulants are the drugs that inhibit the th synthesis of the thread. Hana, so platelet clot will be there, but the thread will not be there. Thread will not be there. I will interrupt the synthesis of the fibrin. So I will interrupt it multiple places. I will interrupt it multiple places. So I will teach you two drugs here. Warfarin and heparin. So let's start warfarin. So I want to teach you two drugs. Warfarin, that is the prototype drug among the oral anticoagulants. And I want to teach you heparin. That is the prototype drug among the parenteral anticoagulants. How many of you got it? Oh, no. So first enumerate the drugs, then mechanism of action, then tell me in vivo, in vitro action, use, monitoring, adverse effect and contraindication. You get many questions on that. So oral anticoagulants, these all are the drugs. Read, read by yourself. I'm teaching you only one warfarin. I'm teaching you only one here, warfarin. Listen, I told you out of the 12 factors, four of them, 2, 7, 9, 10, learn it. 2, 7, 9, 10 require vitamin K for the activation. I know. So this is the liver. In the liver, all are synthesized. But four of them, 2, 7, 9, 10, they become active. They all become active with the help of vitamin K. I know, with the help of vitamin K. But there is an enzyme which is required here. The name of the enzyme is known as vitamin K. K epoxide reductase. With this enzyme only, they get activated. In uh, they get activated by vitamin K. Warfarin inhibit this enzyme. Now imagine if I'm giving a tablet of warfarin to a patient. Hana, just suppose I am the patient. I'm having thrombus in my body. Hana, for that I'm taking warfarin. Hana, so what does the, I will take the tablet? It will go. It will get absorbed. It will go in my blood. From the blood, it will go in my liver. Warfarin will go in the liver. In the liver, two, seven, nine, ten. They cannot get activated. Because warfarin will inhibit the enzyme vitamin K epoxide reductase. This enzyme is inhibited. These four factors will not get activated. Hana. So I'm having all 12. But among the 12, these four are non-functional. Which four? Can you mark? Can you mark where are these four? Say ma'am 2. It is here. 2, 7, 9 and 10. So extrinsic and intrinsic pathway both are affected. Both are affected. Got my point? Extrinsic, intrinsic, don't know effect. Okay. So this is taking place inside the liver. Inside the liver, these four activation do not take place because activation of these four require vitamin K and vitamin K activation requires this enzyme. Warfarin inhibit the enzyme. Name the enzyme. So vitamin K epoxide reductase. This enzyme is inhibited by warfarin. This enzyme is required for vitamin K activation and vitamin K is required for 2, 7, 9, 10 activation. So no activation. This enzyme is inhibited. Vitamin K is not activated. 2, 7, 9, 10 not activated. So clot not formed. Clot will not form. Fibrin will not form. Clot will not form. Thrombus will resolve. Say yes, people respond. Say yes. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Say, Hana, so that is the thing. Now, can I test warfarin in vivo or in vitro? You know what is in vivo? Vivo means a living person. In vitro, matlab in test tube. So, let's take a clot. There is a clot in a patient and there is a clot in the test tube. If I put warfarin here, if I put warfarin here, where does it will show its action? In the person, it will it will resolve the thrombus. It will dissolve the clot. Because in the in the person, liver is present. It will go in the liver. It will block the action of 2, 7, 9, 10. No 2, 7, 9, 10. The clot will dissolve. Got my point. But in the test tube, we don't have liver. We don't have liver in the test tube. So here, function is only in vivo, not in vitro. We can demonstrate the function in vivo, not in vitro. Hana. On the contrary, heparin will have both function in vivo also in vitro also. Hana, what is the use? Here, this drug, just suppose I am having the thrombus. So I am taking the drug. It will go. It will absorb. Warfarin is a tablet. It will go. I will I will take it with water. So it will go inside my esophagus, stomach, intestine. It will get absorbed. It will go in my blood. From my blood, it will go in my liver. In my liver, it will block. The activation of 2, 7, 9, 10. But in my blood, already active form is present. 2, 7, 9, 10, thoda bo, the blood mein already hai na? So that will show the action. So action is not immediate. There is always a delay between the administration of the drug and the effect. So it is used for maintenance, not for emergency, not for initiation. Initiation, we use heparin because it takes action. Whatever it is showing the action in the liver, in the blood, we already have some active form. Hana, no, no new 2, 7, 9, 10 will be formed. I got it. New 2, 7, 9, 10 will not form because warfarin will inhibit the enzyme. 
है ना बट टू सेवन नाइन टेन ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंट इन द ब्लड अ लिटिल बिट न्यू विल नॉट कम बट दिस विल शो द एक्शन सो वारफर एक्शन इज नेवर इमीजिएट इट इज यूज फॉर मेंटेनेंस नॉट फॉर इनिशिएशन है ना नो यू टेल मी इट इज इनिबिटिंग टू सेवन नाइन टेन वेर इज टू सेवन नाइन टेन मार्केट मार्केट वन सो मैम हियर इज टू वेर इज टू टू सेवन नाइन एंड टेन सो टेल मी द हाफ लाइफ विच वन विल बी गॉन इन द ब्लड फर्स्ट सो अर्लीस्ट इज सेवन सेवन सबसे पहले गायब होगा बिकॉज हाफ लाइफ वाइज सेवन इज द अर्लीस्ट टू गेट एक्सटेंट सो ऑल विल ऑल विल एक्सटेंट फ्रॉम द ब्लड इन द ब्लड ऑल आर प्रेजेंट टू सेवन नाइन टेन ऑल विल एक्सटेंट वन बाय वन बट द अर्लीस्ट इज सेवन सो पीटी इज अफेक्टेड फर्स्ट फॉलोड बाय एपीटी एपीटी विल बी प्रोलॉन्ग बट लेटर ऑन बट फर्स्ट पीटी इज अफेक्टेड दैट्स बाई मॉनिटरिंग इज डन विद पीटी नॉट विद एपीटी How many have you got it? Ah, uh, these are the conceptual things, people. You have to learn. So, because of the sequence, because of the half life factor, number seven is the earliest, which will, uh, um, which will lower in the blood, and that's why a PT will be affected first. So, monitoring is done by PT. You know the ratio of PT in a patient upon PT in control. PT in patient upon PT in control is known as INR. So, rather than saying PT, better to say INR. So, monitoring is done by INR. What is INR? Ah, uh, INR is the ratio. Ratio of PT of the patient upon PT of the control. That is INR. So rather than saying PT, the better to say INR. You may ask him, ma'am, two, seven, nine, ten. They all are inhibited. Seven is on the extrinsic pathway, but two, seven, and nine is on the intrinsic. So ideally, PT, APT, both should raise. Why you are testing only PT, not APT? Because earliest to rise is PT. PT will be affected first because of the half life. Half life, shortest half life is of factor seven. And for warfarin, antidote is present, vitamin K. Because the side effect is bleeding. Now, sometime in emergency, you can give the antidote, vitamin K. Vitamin K is the antidote because it is blocking <laughs> blocking the uh, activation of vitamin K. No, you already give the activated form of vitamin K, so it is the antidote. Adverse effect. Sometimes you give too much bleeding can happen. Alopecia, the loss of hair, the patient can become baldness is there. Hana alopecia and dermatitis. These are the three side effects. Contraindication you can learn. One of the contraindication is pregnancy. Hana never give warfarin in pregnancy. Never, never. It is teratogenic. Never give. Okay, so we are done with warfarin. One more to go. Heparin. One more to go. Read the question. Tell me the answer. With what is the mode of action of uh, warfarin? Factor 10A inhibitor, vitamin K antagonist, activate antithrombin 3 or activate factor 4, uh, factor uh, 9. What is the mechanism of action? I guess you all know. It inhibits an enzyme which is known as vitamin K epoxide reductase that is required for the activation of vitamin K. So it is a vitamin K antagonist, and you all are right. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So the correct answer is B. So you get simple, simple question on that. We are done with warfarin. Let's come on heparin. So let's come on the parenteral anticoagulants. Learn all of them. The most important is heparin. What is the mechanism of heparin? Ah oh, no. So what is the mechanism of heparin? Heparin activate antithrombin three, which is present in the blood. So in the blood we have two things. Ah oh, no. This is a blood vessel of a normal healthy individual. We have coagulatory factors and we have anticoagulatory factors, and there is a balance between the two. There is a balance between the two. Coagulatory factors, factor number one to twelve, they all are present, but they are inactive. Whenever we have injury, they get activated. Anticoagulatory, me, we have antithrombin three. We have antithrombin three. And now in my blood, both are equal and opposite. They are balancing. But if I have the injury due to any cause, I have a cut over here. They will increase. They will decrease. So imbalance will occur. So coagulation will occur. Anticoagulation will not occur. But in a normal blood vessel, ha na, they are they are equal. During injury, coagulation. Coagulating factors increases, anticoagulating will fall. And during thrombosis, what is thrombus? I told you, no, thrombus is uninjured blood vessel. During thrombosis, without injury, this will increase and this will fall. Ha na? So this is this you have to understand. Antithrombin three is an anticoagulant. Heparin activate that. So heparin go in the blood and heparin activate the antithrombin three. What does antithrombin three will do? Antithrombin three will. Antithrombin three will inactivate the coagulation factor. Out of the twelve, it inactivate ten and two. Most importantly, factor number ten, factor number two. But it inactivate nine, eleven, and twelve also. So factor ten and two. Where is ten? Where is two? Most two important factors. So two is gone and ten is gone. Ah no. So two, ten. So first it inhibit two and ten. Followed by nine, ten, eleven. Where it is there? It is nine, eleven, and twelve. So nine, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so here all the factors are from either common or intrinsic pathway. So here we do the monitoring by APTT. Here we do the monitoring by APTT. So this is the mechanism of action. How many of you got it? Here we can test it in vivo also and vitro also because it don't require liver activation. Hana, it inhibits the already uh, synthesized and uh, synthesized factors. So factor number two, factor number ten, factor number nine, ten, and eleven. Eleven, nine, eleven, and twelve. Two and ten are the earliest. 
okay and after that 9 11 and 12 so it will show in action in vivo also in vitro also and here these are the ready-made uh, you know coagulation factors so action is immediate so it is given for initiation not for maintenance for maintenance we give warfarin okay for monitoring we use aptt for monitoring because these all factors are gone now so for monitoring we use aptt so aptt is first affected because the common factors are also affected later on pt is affected but first aptt is affected adverse effect bleeding is also here also alopecia here also but thrombocytopenia and osteoporosis are something unique we don't have antidote and a contraindication may all contraindications are same except pregnancy heparin can be given in pregnancy and a warfarin cannot be given but heparin can be given can we compare and contrast can we compare contrast we are done we are done tell me the drugs now I, I, I please learn the complete drugs i am not saying it but most important here is warfarin most important here is heparin this is oral anticoagulant this is parenteral i know this is given orally with the help of tablets and heparin is given injections okay mechanism of action tell me that the most important thing mechanism of action so it uh, it uh, inhibit the enzyme the name of the enzyme is vitamin k epoxide reductase no vitamin k epoxide reductase no vitamin k activation no vitamin k activation so factor 2 7 9 10 will not function 2 7 9 10 will not function and since these will not function they are coming on extrinsic also intrinsic also but the first thing 7 is gone since 7 is earliest to gone so it is pt which we monitor 7 is on the extrinsic pathway okay and here it is used only in vivo not in vitro we can demonstrate its action okay use may it requires time because it is already there in the uh, blood activated versions of 2, 7, 9, 10 that will show its action and the new will not synthesize. So it is used for maintenance, not for initiation. Adverse effect may, bleeding is there, alopecia is there and, uh, and skin necrosis is there. Contraindications may, pregnancy is the contraindication. Pregnancy is a contraindication, others are also there. Okay, antidote we have, the vitamin K is an antidote. Coming on the heparin. In the heparin, the mechanism of action, it activates antithrombin 3. That will inhibit factor number 2 and 10 earliest. Followed by 9, 11 and 12. Okay. So here 2, 10, 9, 11, 12, they all will first affect APTT. So monitoring is done by APTT, not with PT. Here the action is immediate. That's why used for initiation, not for maintenance. Here action do not require liver. So we can test in vivo also in vitro also. Take care. Coming on the adverse effect. So bleeding is a common thing. Alopecia is a common thing. Hana. But instead of skin necrosis, we have osteoporosis and thrombocytopenia here. Pregnancy may it's a drug of choice. Pregnancy may we give it. Pregnancy is not a contraindication. I am done. Thank you so much for your compliments. Thank you. So I am done. So the same difference ka table is given and you can understand each and everything and you get many questions on that. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? Say people say, bolo, jaldi bolo. How many of you got it? So this is the thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I think I would like to stop. Anna, most of the chapters we have covered. If you have not watched my part one, please I request you to watch the part one. Part one of uh, this pharma. And in part two, I have covered most of them. Endocrine I will provide in the notes. You can read. I guess it's very easy. Insulin I have given in the notes and some oral hypoglycemic drugs. But currently I would like to end the session. So this is part one. Part two, we have finished here in this session. And many systems, many drugs, important renal, cardiovascular, CNS, ANS, respiratory blood we have covered today. So it was the most productive session. I hope you all enjoyed. You all learned. Uh, wait a second. Anna. So... I guess the FMG students are having the exam in the next few days. I would like to wish best of luck to them. And uh, my heartiest wishes are always with you. Once you get selected, never forget to inform the team. At least drop a message Anna, to anyone in the team. Got it. So it's very uh, happy moment for an educator when the student texts that ma'am I got selected and I cleared my exam or give a call. We are just a call away. Thank you so much. Wishing you all the best. I hope the session was high yielding for you. And this is the way you should study pharma. At least you got an orientation ki pharma padna kaise. The best way to study the pharma is the comparative tables. Make the comparative tables of all the drugs of pharma at one place. Learn all classification at one place. After that, learn the mechanism of action of all, uses of all, adverse effect of all, and a contraindication, adverse effect ki mein hi niklenge, and pharmacokinetics if and when required. I mean, not for all drugs. And learn the prototype, 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 prototype drug. 
got it thank you so much i really enjoyed teaching you hopefully same from your side if you like the session don't forget to click on the like button share the link with all your friends colleagues batchmates anyone on the entire globe who want to study pharma in the super duper easy manner in a unique way so please help me in spreading this innovative way of teaching pharmacology with everyone on this globe okay so please help me in sharing please okay and please write down whatever is your experience in the comment box please thank you so much bye bye notes you will get after the session uh, there will be a link in the chat box that will be pinned maybe after a few minutes it will be pinned you can click on that and it will be diverted towards the telegram group and you will get the notes here whatever i taught you the exact replica i will provide you thank you so much bye bye wishing you all the best okay there is no part three currently scheduled but let's see if the students will request we will schedule part three also but most of the important topics are already covered priyanka but still if many students are requesting the same we can schedule it but currently there is no particular schedule for that and wishing you all the best all the fmg experience i don't think you don't you have much time now to study in the next few days you have the exam wishing you all the best hannah and uh, i believe that you are going to i'm going to do that okay you are going to rock this time only give your best shot that is the only advice i can give it to you bye bye wishing you all the best i'm ending the session bye bye